Good morning, Twitch chat. Good morning, Twitch chat. Good fucking morning. Guess who actually feels good this morning? Oh my god, my cookie runs open. I gotta close that shit before I fucking get addicted. Oh, I didn't do my cookie run dailies this morning. Fuck. Fuck. Dude. 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 Actual, actual nuclear drama. Actual nuclear drama today, boys. Uh, some dude made a one hour and four minute video on me. We got to react to the whole thing. One hour and four minute video. One hour and four minute. We're reacting to the whole thing. Okay. We're going to react to the whole thing. Golden Kappa? No, there's not. There's no sh And then we get called out by an AI little bitch on the platform calling me out for my meta takes. So we got a, we got a lot. We got a lot. We got a lot to go off of right now, man. Damn, the viewer count's crazy right now. What is, what is going on with everybody's fascination in my viewer count, bro? Like, why is every single fucking comment on people's YouTubes, people, oh, man, 18 viewers in three minutes, man, bro, fell off. You know what's crazy, boys? I could fall off today, and I still wouldn't want to have to work a day in my fucking life. All I got to do is just stop playing gotcha games. I have infinite money. Golden Kappa? No, we don't. No, we don't. No, we don't. No, we don't. Do we? No, we don't. Yo! Hold up. Hold up. Boys! <laughs> 2,000 viewers. Anybody want to talk about it? <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> hey, shit. 2,000 viewers the moment I hit go live. Come on, baby. Ain't nobody gonna talk about that. Yo, boys. Golden Kappa. Golden Kappa, boys. It's all bots? Oh. No, never mind that, guys. Yo. Golden Kappa, baby. If you press subscribe, if you press subscribe, you will get an exclusive fucking emote. All you gotta do is sub, Twitch Prime, dump them here, and here's the best thing. If you get the sub, not only will you get it, but you'll also increase the odds of someone else getting it. Yeah, I gotta go to Kappa. Oh. Bro. Bro. I swear to God. Oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. That was the most Sesame Street shit we've ever done. Wait, can you lower the AC to like 70? Got us come. What the fuck? Is this gamer come? I'm assuming this is titty milk. Assuming this is titty milk. That's Pina Colada. That's Pina Colada. That's Pina Colada. Okay, yo, boys. If you got a sub, if you got a gifted sub and you want to dump it here, now's the fucking time, baby. Now's the time. And here's the best thing. I sure would appreciate it. I sure would appreciate it. That's about it. I would really appreciate it. You know what? I don't want to farm. If you want to sub, you can sub. I don't want to push it. You know, I, I'm here. I'm here for some nuclear content. I'm not here to farm money. But if you want the golden capo, all you got to do is sub. You unlock it for 24 hours and you can go flex in other people's chats. Okay? But if you don't need it, you don't need it. Save your money. You're all good. But it is a very fun emote to have. But I don't, I don't want to farm your guys' money. Okay? Bro, we got a lot of shit to get through today. We got a lot of shit to get through today. I'm actually going to have to boot up Honkai Star Rail. 
Because there's this one person who's been claimed as a based theory crafter that called me out for being garbage. <laughs> for being garbage at the fucking game. All right? Straight up. Straight up. They said, they said that Zila is good and I'm just bad. Mr. Pokey wanted you to see this. Let me see here real quick. Here's a hot take. You can clip it and send it to Tech Tone. Paimon is infinitely cuter. Shit, fucking kill yourself. <clears throat> I'm not even gonna, no. I'm not, I'm gonna, no, nah, he's gotta, he's gotta be farming. There's no way. There's no way. Bro, bro's farming. Nah, bro's farming. Bro's farming. Bro's on God, he's farming, guys. I, 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 don't, don't, don't hold him. Don't hold him, don't hold him against you. It's dangerous to take this with you. What is this? Oh, I would squash it in my fucking hands. And then I would take her innards and spread it on my toast. Pokey died? Oh. Uh, <clears throat> what am I just gonna say? 90? Was it always 90? Damn, bro. Bro, I feel like I haven't been on this shit in a minute. Yo, boys, you ever seen me play Honkai Star Rail before? What do we got? Are we all done with everything? Hides of War? What the fuck is this? Yo, what is the Tides of War event? When did it come out? When did it come out? Why did they say this about you? Let's find out. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, man. Yesterday? Okay, we'll do that shit tomorrow on stream. We got, we got so much shit to go over. We got so much shit to go over. Da 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 all right, because we got we got so much. We got so much to go over today. It's actually fucking nuts. I'm telling you, boys. I'm telling you, boys. You need to buckle up because we got so much homework to do. It's insane. Okay, uh, so we need to watch Adventuring Drill Pull Value. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another video. We need to watch History of Honkai Star Rails. EOT better. Most satisfying play style. We need to watch Tectones. This is the drama the video. Tectones Zero Cycle MOC 12. We need to watch... Tectone drama, a retrospective. Uh, we need to watch uh, ranking eight With upcoming so massive gacha games. We got so much homework to do, it's fucking nuts. We need to watch the story of why Two Man killed himself. Uh, already watched this. Holyverse can buff blood. One of the worst feelings. Yep, this is good. Uh, why video games think you're stupid? So I'm pretty dumb. This is good. Uh, gamers reject modern yes, games for old games. Yep, need to watch that shit. Uh, yep, new end game leak, mint picker song, never take damage, don't care. They're destroying your games, need to watch that shit. Uh, and then we need to make a tier list. We need to... I kind of want to watch why B-Mau is uh, worried about Wuthering Waves. Uh, let's see, the entire history of the Honkai universe. Um, Akron Power Grip, Stellar Blade is causing outrage. Up the top 100 anime fights. Generally, each guy how to enjoy games again. That'd be great to watch. I don't get okay. how. I gen dude. I'm I'm so bored with yeah, games lately. It's fucking the same. Uh, and then I think, I think this is everything that I need to watch. Came home from work just for content. Thank you, taking. Oh yeah, absolutely, bro. All that just to not watch it. Nah, I mean we're gonna watch it, guys. We're gonna watch it. We're gonna watch it. Okay, we're gonna watch everything. We just got to get into it. Okay, we got we got live. All right, we're going to try. We're going to try. We're going to try. Act man, are video game characters too sexy? Do you like? Oh, my fucking God. <laughs> Cut men? Yes, yes, yes. Do you like attractive women with big hands? What's up, everybody? This is the sexy man. Do you? Just remember, guys, in video games, we're allowed to sexualize men, but we're not allowed to sexualize women. Okay? Just like on the internet, we're allowed to shit talk and joke about white people, but we're not allowed to joke about any other race. Okay? And these are just things that you're going to have to accept in life. Okay? Not everything is fair. Okay? But here's the best thing. You can just ignore it and do whatever the fuck you want. 
Straight up. You can ignore it and do whatever the fuck you want. Okay, here's the other thing. You're allowed to tell a, a man that his dick is small, but you're not allowed to tell a woman that her breasts are small. You're not allowed to do that, guys. I mean, bro, we even have people, we even have people, we even have people saying um, medium is premium and flat is justice. But how many times have you heard a woman say, yeah, I love small dick. Yeah, I actually prefer small dick. Cry about it. That's what I'm doing right now on my stream. And I'll be doing so for the next four or five hours. Okay, so I'm telling you, if you're out here, man, like there are things in this world that you can wake up to and realize the bullshit nature of it. But unfortunately, who's going to talk about it? Not anybody made this fucking day and age because everybody's a fucking pussy these days. We white dudes have it rough. I hope one day we are able to throw off the shackles of oppression and breathe free. So here's the thing. White dudes have had it easy. Okay? White dudes have had it easy as fuck. All right? Straight up. Straight up. White dudes have had it easy in real life. On the internet? Nope. Nope. Hey, 100, 200 years from now, we're going to look back at the people who shit on white people on the internet, and we're going to call them. There's going to be like a new slur. There's going to be a new slur to call those people, right? We're going to have some like crazy ass like term, like oh, whiteism or like, uh, or like uh, internet orion. You know what I'm saying? Like there's going to be a slur that those people are going to be called. Because like this, to be honest, you know, I mean, the, the, the repercussion of it is being a white straight man on the internet is brutal. It is. It is. It's true. About time. Need some new ones. Yeah, I know. Cinna's already used them all. We need some new ones. Mint picker's starting to sound like a slur now. <laughs> Don't let them fool you. Don't let them fool you. They're going to try to tell you that mint picker's a slur. That way, little slime can walk away. No, no. It is a normal word, and everybody's allowed to slay it. Say it, okay, you fucking mint picker? All right? You're allowed to say whatever the fuck you want, whenever the fuck you want. Okay? Erm, just don't go to the net. True. <laughs> You can say it, whatever you want. Girls need he not a chest. Wait, ship it in or not ship it in? Which one are you talking about, bro? What is this? This turns to shit. <laughs> everything that he's done turned out, everything he touches turns to shit. True. <laughs> I mean, it's true. It, I mean, you know, Tectone's already a slur in multiple chats. But here's the thing, guys, and I'm going to just keep it a buck. Okay, you're not going to like it. People are going to be upset. Donald Trump will be your next president. And you can sit there and you can cry and you can moan or you can accept the reality that out of all the candidates, Trump is the best one. It's over, guys. It's over. That will be your president. Donald Trump will save us. That save us, Donald Trump. Save us once again. Okay, now, now I'm really excited for your grandparents to get hold of that take. They'll freak the fuck out, man. They will freak the fuck out. Straight up. Dude, the amount of relatives. Dude, 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 dude. I even know people who have relatives who will cut someone off if they don't, like, if they support Donald Trump, they will cut that family member off. Like, bro causes such a visceral reaction, it's actually insane. Right, but here, bro, you're in Texas. Yeah, I know, man. But but here's the as a tax paying American, I'm fine with that. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Everybody needs to understand this. Okay, here's everything needs to everybody needs to understand this. The president, I'm gonna blow your mind. I'm gonna blow your mind, boys, boys. President doesn't matter. Okay. President can't do nothing. President can't say nothing. It's essentially America's celebrity. It's all it is. Okay, he's a Figure, figure, figurehead for Congress. And that's it. And that way, what it does is, is that Congress, I mean, how often does Congress change, guys? Is there a new vote for who's in Congress every four years? No, there's not. Okay? So Trump is just the guy who's going to absorb the heat for all of Congress's shit decision. And that's essentially just it. It's not really a big deal. It doesn't really fucking matter. And when you realize that, eh, your life gets a lot easier. Now, I will say this, <clears throat> and my dad told me this. Doesn't matter who you vote for, as long as you vote, because people died for that right. So, boys, I'm going to say it: for the first time in my life, I'm going to be voting this year. Who am I voting for? I'll never say, but I will be voting this year, man. For the first time, 
It's going to be a whole ordeal. I can't wait, man. Now, you know what would be nice if we were allowed to just vote over the internet? You know? I understand that might cause rigging, but I'll be real. Like, the shit's rigged regardless. You know? Can you vote for me? Yeah, I'm, yeah we'll, go, we'll go Mickey Mouse. I'm too lazy to vote. People died for me to not vote. I'm literally dead. Yeah, I know. What's this? Because our criminals, I think, are much nicer than their criminals. But, you know, people think, oh, is it wonderful? The migrants are flowing in. These migrants are coming from mental institutions, insane asylums. This is They're really terrorists. something special. They're coming from prisons yeah. and jails. There's a little difference. They're coming from prisons yeah. and jails. The U.S. has the, the best millions. criminals. Are we crazy to... I mean, I'll be real, man. I'll say it. Our criminals are the best. Uh, our criminals are really the best criminals. I tell, I say it all the time because it's so true. What the fuck is that? NMP Milena Miz. Who the fuck is that? Is that E-Rob? Cinna. I don't even want to assume who that is because that's got to be racist. And then that's me. I can tell that for sure. But who is that? Fucking T1's girl? Yeah, I got no idea, bro. I vote for Nelson Headlock videos. Emmy? Uh, I'm not going to assume. You know? I mean, you know? I mean, that could be any of them. That could be Emily or extra Emily. It could be either one. You know, I, I fucking cannot tell. I think Purple's Emmy. Yeah, I don't want to assume. Wait, why do you keep doing the thousand yard stare? Oh, because I'm retarded. Yeah, you know how it goes. Yeah, what do you mean by that? Well, I'm just saying it could be Emily or extra Emily. Like, what do you mean? What do you think I mean by that? What do you, what do you, what do you think I mean by that? These dumbass Genshin stands, what happened? Honkai Star Rail is better than Genshin Impact. First of all, shut the fuck up. But we get a free five star character while you Genshin bozos didn't. All right. Honkai is turn-based and Genshin is open world. While getting a free 5 star is cool and all, we don't really need a free 5 star in Genshin. Honkai is getting a free 5 star because they need type coverage. While in Genshin we have elemental reactions. Also, the females in Honkai are all mid and no one can beat my wife's beauty. Actually, I was just coping. I know Star Rail treats their community better than Genshin, but I'm fine since I play both games. I also get no bitches by doing this. He saved himself in the end there, man. He really did. All right. Boys, for the third time in my career, I have, in fact, been called out by a fucking robot. Okay? These fucking robots, they're taking over our YouTube, and they're trying to take my jobs. And you'll never guess why they have a problem with me this time. So let's just go ahead and play the video. This is crazy. This is crazy. This is a short one. This is a short one, but uh, this this represents a, a larger issue at present uh, at hand in our community. I, I, you know, I, you know, I, I, you know, I like reacting to everything. So we're gonna go over this because uh, the comments are a little bit too in support of this video's message. So I'm gonna have to cut your ass down to size. So let's let's get into this real quick. I have been under the idiotic assumption that. Okay, now hold up. A lot of people have been under the idiotic assumption that Zila needs good relic for some reason to function. That is why I'm gonna prove why it's garbage can. Okay. Okay, hold up. And not garbage cans by zero cycling Sam with Tectone's relic, which is okay. So you are saying that you need good relics to function, guys. I'm gonna keep it a buck. Zila does need good relics to function, and I'm going to break it down for you. Now, I want to make one thing perfectly clear. I'm not a theory crafter, not a, not a metagamer. I'm not a guide maker. All I am is a guy with common fucking sense, okay? Do you want me to tell you why Zila needs good relics? It's very hard not to, it's very hard to try and misunderstand this. Zila needs good relics because Zila functions when she already beats the content, 
not tries to beat the content. And what do I mean by that? The whole purpose of Resurgence is that Re Zila is very good if you one-shot things, because if you one-shot things, then it's easier to get Resurgence, which is where the majority of your damage comes from, or at least a large chunk of it. So Zila needs very good relics to ensure that she's hitting that one shot, because if she doesn't hit that one shot, she's losing 40 to 50% of her damage. It's not hard to understand. You have to try to be this ignorant, and it's really not that hot of a take. Now, once again, I don't feel like getting back into the guide making theory craft metagaming scene. Don't care for it, and I'll be real. Even when I did it for Ark Knights and Genshin, I just did it for comfy players who just wanted to relax because I'll be real. I've never been a try hard gamer. Okay, I go as far as I can get with my natural ability because I'm not some guy who's going to be like, oh, dude, I'll grind zero cycle Sam for eight hours until I get a zero cycle because it doesn't do anything. You know what I like doing? Hey, guys, here's the easiest way to get here. You have 10 cycles to do it. I'll show you how to do it in nine comfortably without even breaking a fucking sweat. I don't give a fuck about sweating. I really fucking don't. So let's continue. So this person saying that Zila doesn't need good relics to function. Is one of the worst builds Zila in the world. Okay, so real quick, you just said my Zeal is one of the build. worst built Zealas in the world. So I'm going to blow your mind here real quick. This is my Zeal build, okay? That's my Zeal build, <laughs> okay? I got her ass at 5998 with a missing trace right up here. You want to know why? Because I'm not going to fucking use her. I'm just not. When, do you, when are you ever going to go into Honkai Star and think, ah, oh, fuck. Ah, fuck. I really need a Zeela right here. Or at least if you're on my account. Because here's the thing, man. I don't make guides. I'm just a player. I just enjoy the fucking game. And with my account, when I have an Acheron and I have a fucking Jing Liu, when the fuck am I going to ever think, man, I sure need a fucking Zeela? Because the thing is, Jing Liu is so fucking broken. I just bring her ass with a fucking Pela. I give it Ice Res down and Defense down. And I blow him the fuck up. I'm mean, like, what the fuck? I'm never gonna use her. Okay, but let's let's continue on. Let's let's let her cook. Zila in the world. Tectone, if you're okay, okay, okay. So they're they're making this because they want me to react. Like, which is one of the worst. Okay, so I want to make things. I want to make one thing perfectly clear. So they screenshotted my stats to say that they're using the same Zila as me. This is simply not true. Is and here's why. Your Zila's traces are maxed. My Zealous Traces are not, because by the time it took a free-to-play to grind all of these Traces, I was already working on other units that could outperform her. So your Zeela is not the same Zeela as mine. Now, I'm going to make a guess. You're going to use your Zeela with overpowered supports and then claim that you're better. Let's continue watching the video. Worst build. Zila in the world. We're going to have to pause because you're going pretty quick. Now, I will say this. Your Bronya is E1 minus E2. So kudos to you, but you do have a full win set. I don't believe I have that. My Bronya is broken set. So already your Bronya is infinitely better than mine on a reliability factor because you do have the full four set and you're also running a S5 dance, dance, dance. Okay, so you're running 151 speed. 202 crit damage. I'm at 135 speed, 147% crit damage, which means you have 53% more crit damage and you have 16 more speed. Watching this. You're running a Hanabi with 175 speed and 185% crit damage. What the fuck? My Hanabi is 167 at 180. So you have 5% more crit damage. You also have 8 more speed. And here's the best part. Love your con S5, dance, dance, dance. S5, dance, dance, dance. Okay. Hold up. It gets better. It gets better. Let's see her. Let's see her sparkles. Let's see her sparkles Eidolons. 10. 10 everything, maxed out everything. Relics with another full four set. Perfect relic set with perfect stats. And fucking E2! Bro, do you know what that does?
That means you get an extra turn on your ult with 40% more attack, and then you get an additional 8% defense ignore. Okay, and then you run a Pela at E6 with a perfect Von Wack. <laughs> with a perfect Von Wack and a perfect four set of the wind element when my <laughs> fucking Pela. Okay, when my Pela is being run on broken set on broken keel, let's see their speed. Remember to look with resolution signs as pearls of sweat at S5. I'm running it at S3. You're also running double dance, dance, dance. Let's see your Pela. Let's see the Pela. Here we go. You can subscribe. At 179 speed! My shit is 147! Uh, in the first 30 seconds of the video, you say, Oh, guys, it's the same photo. It's the same photo, guys. It's the same Zela. It's the same Zela. Bro, bro. You are using the world's most broken support. Any dumb fuck on planet Earth could crush this shit with 180 speed Pela, 175 speed Sparkle, E2, E2, maxed out Trace Zilla, double dance, 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 S5, resolution signs is pearls is what, S5. Like, yeah, dude, you kill it. It's actually like it's 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 sickening. It is it is a f sickening how dog shit that unit is. Because she is fucking bad. And look, I don't know if you're the world's dumbest motherfucker. Let me rephrase that. You are the world's biggest dumbest motherfucker, but if you can't grasp how having a E2 sparkle. 180 speed Pela, 170 spot, 175 speed Sparkle, 151 speed Bronya with 200% crit damage can make it a little bit easier. I don't know what you a want me to say. I mean this genuinely. I mean this genuinely. If you get your feelings hurt by me saying this shit out loud or the way that I said it, shut the fuck up, you dumb motherfucker. Okay, you know how weird that shit is? Do you know how weird it is? Th this is like LeBron James going up to a kindergartner's basketball game and saying, let me show you why it's garbage can and not garbage can't. Shut the fuck up, you AI robot bitch. Okay, and here's the other thing. Hey, let's say you are human. I don't give a fuck anyways. I'll shit talk a dude. I'll shit talk a woman. You're all the same to me. I don't give a fuck. Okay? I do not care. This shit is mad weird. And let me ask you, okay, let me make me one thing very clear. I'm not angry. I'm flabbergasted. <laughs> okay? Because if you fucking think, I I'm hoping this is a desperate attempt to clout, to clout chase. And to be honest, I'm pretty sure that it is. Just a desperate attempt to clout chase. I also made a really funny comment about this on here that they pinned. And then on here, uh, I put, you have three more attack on your Zilla video unrelatable. Uh, but this is the moment. This is the moment, right? Where once again, they're not, they're not claiming. They're not claiming um, that I'm lying. Like they actually think they're legit. They said support your OP, but this is zero cycle, not 10 cycle. Standard's going to be slightly higher. By slightly higher, do you mean... Two more Eidolons on a five-star unit with 40 more speed on two of your units with 20 more speed on a unit with 70% more crit damage. Yes, dude. You can clear harder with better stats. I promise you that's not because you're good. You got lucky with your relics or you spent money. Put me on your account. I will do the exact same thing. It is not hard. It's the same thing with any other player who thinks they're good at this game. Put me on your account. I will do what you did much easier, much quicker, or the same. It's not hard. This is a casual game meant for casual players, and I promise you, nothing you see in this game for showcases is impressive besides, man, look at all this money.
I don't care. Straight up, you will never convince me that this shit is high skill cap because it's just legit not. It's legit not. It's the same thing when these goofy motherfuckers thought they were good for being Spiral Abyss on free-to-play, bro. That shit is cap as fuck. Now, this is the moment where I knew you were clout chasing. Sad you didn't watch it live. Now, I want to make one thing perfectly clear. Zolze, I don't hate you. I don't give a fuck about you. But I want to make this very clear. Good video. You baited me. You got me to react. Hey, hope you get some subs. Hope you get some likes, you piece of shit. Leave my ass alone. Let me play Honkai Star around peace, you dickhead. I'm just having fun here. What, you're going you're gonna to tell me I'm having fun wrong? You're going to tell me I'm having fun wrong? Man, get the fuck out of here, bro. Get the fuck out of here. You want me to tell you why I say Zeal is bad? Because she fucking is. It's the truth. It's always been the fucking truth. And I don't want free-to-play players wasting their money on a character they think is good because your ass going to come in here and say garbage can, not garbage can't. I'm not trying to have these people waste their money. This shit costs real money. This shit has real-world repercussions when you fuck with people like that. So shut the fuck up. Get the shit out of here. Zeal is mid. You know she's mid when compared to other characters. Jackass. Leave my ass alone. Anyways, see you on the next one. Fun video. That's some fun drama. That's some good shit. Anyways, had to go ahead and put this theory crafter in their place. Hey, you know how it goes. Like, comment, subscribe. See you on the next one. Peace, boys. <laughs> Dumbass. Fucking jackass. All right, you let me know. Am I am I crazy here? Am am I am I crazy here? Or like what the fuck was blood yapping about? Yango made a video on her? Yellow trailblazers. Is it a is it a good one or is it a bad one? Just get 180 speed? Oh yeah, I know. Hold on. Let me uh let me send this to you real quick. Hold on, I need, I need to call Mr. Pokey. Yo, Mr. Pokey, can I call you real quick? Designed than I thought. Can I call you real Insane quick? Content. Oh my god, I swear. 30 seconds. It's easy enough. Nuclear content. We simply need to do this. Look. Say yes. Now I'm never gonna. We'll call? Will he pick up? Yeah, sure. <clears throat> okay. Yo. Dude, 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 dude. I got nuclear content for you, bro. People have been nuclear yeah. content yeah okay dude, 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 dude so this fucking ai robot oh dude i was just looking at it like my chest let me just know yeah 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 i saw it you saw the video yeah yeah i saw the video i did i did i did yeah dude bro says that's the same zila then uses her with a e2 sparkle yep. at 175 yep. speed <laughs> Yeah. at 180 like oh my god did you you yeah. you watch the video did you react or no yeah yeah i reacted to it just now okay. i don't know if it was long enough to be a uh, youtube content but i read it it was so funny because he had like he literally had better speed gears than me he had like a 179 <laughs> speed pedal everybody's on like four piece ego the S10 dance, 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 and E2 saw it. Was, it was insane. It was yeah. insane, bro. Like, these people were coping so hard. Anyway, okay, anyways, sorry, get back to your Genshin. Just wanted to see if you saw that shit. It was so funny. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you, are you, are you live? Uh, I'm not going to say because I'm on your stream, but I could be. Okay, I'll wrap it up and I'll join boys off at your site. Real All quick. right, yeah. dude, when you do, I have a uh -huh. one hour and five minute drama react video we're doing today. Oh, my God. Dude, why do you always have drama every single Dude, time? you know what happened? Well, first <laughs> no, of all, first what, of all so the reason why I always have drama is because people know I'm going to respond. And that gives me infinite content because they think that's a negative. They're like, he'll always respond, so I'll get views. Here's the thing. I want other people to get views. It makes the category more alive, and they do my job for me. Some guy went back six years and did a retrospective on every single drama I've ever been in. And the damage it caused to me and all these other creators. It's an hour and five minutes. Okay, I'll look forward to it, yeah. Nuclear content. You can pull him up on your t boy. you go to bed. But yeah, dude, enjoy Genshin. I'll see you soon. Yeah, yeah, see you soon. Bye-bye. I love that guy. I love that guy. Yango Vin on her. Uh, is it a video praising her or is it a video dunking on her? Because <laughs> I feel like, guys, I feel like I'm going to unload my whole load on that person's face, man. It, drama. Like, like drama. Like drama, like my my drop. <clears throat> it's satire. Who knows? It is Yango. 
The best Honkai Star Rail Theory Crafter. Oh, dude, should we get into it? Should we get into it? Should we do should we do some nuclear reacting? Do we do we get into it? Also, yo, boys, appreciate the follows, appreciate the subs. Uh, I'm gonna be real, guys. Uh, the viewer count's been really great lately. And I just want to say that I appreciate the fuck out of that shit. Um, I'm gonna turn on my fan. Let me know if you guys can hear it. It's really hot in here. Can you hear that? No? Okay, I'm going to pump it up. Can you hear that? Good. Good, 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 good. Uh, also, before we get to the next video, have you guys joined the Discord yet? Discord.gg forward slash tech down. Uh, I'll be real. I actually chill in there every fucking day. It. I know for other content creators, it's very difficult to have a conversation with them or to talk to them or to meet them. I'm being dead ass. If you ever just want to say, yo, I am in there every fucking day. Legit every fucking day. You ditched us yesterday? Yeah, but the thing is, I was there, wasn't I? So what's what's the problem? As a person working 15 hours a day, super appreciate your positive energy in the morning. Highly me kicking off the word day. Okay, I wouldn't say it's positive energy, but I would say there's energy. Because if there's one thing I don't lack, it's passion. Okay, and I will never feel bad or feel cringe because I'm passionate about the things that I say or do. That's why I don't give a fuck when people call me loud or bald. Because it's a product of passion. But yeah, there's also uh, eight people in there right now chilling in the Guna Garage. If you guys want to go chill and talk to somebody, leave me on in the background. Anyways, love you guys. Uh, do you watch only Rogue Killer EXA? Yes. Yes. I think other EXE creators are great. I think they make fine content. But it's not content for me. Right? Like, I'm sure pistachio ice cream tastes amazing, but I don't enjoy it. Right? Uh, and Rogue Killer makes my favorite flavor, which is mint chocolate chip. Because uh, I love mint pickers. Uh, right? But uh, yeah, I'm not really, I'm not really a big guy on like, what am I gonna do? You know what I mean? Like, I like when I see people's reactions to the content. Although I do like the what am I gonna do? But like, I, I like, I like rogues because it's like a community event every single time he does it. Okay, yeah, rafflers are right. more about memes though. Yeah, I'm not really a fan. I don't think memes are funny. I think people's reactions are funny. That's why I do a reaction because like, I make the content that I enjoy. That's why I'll, I'll be real because I watch my own videos. Okay, you might call me cringe. I don't care. Uh, I do watch all of my own videos. I'm going to keep it a buck. Okay. Uh, I also want to watch another video real quick. So one of my homies, Chaotic, made this video on the ranking eight massive upcoming gotcha games, The Big Three. And uh, I fucking love this dude. I heard he's blacklisted in the PGR community, which I think is funny as fuck. <laughs> so I got to support my blacklisted homies. I was going to do it. Amazing gacha games coming out, it often becomes hard for some people to find the major players in the gacha sphere. Yeah. Something is at least announced every two or three months. And True. And I'll be real. As God damn! Look at that titty flap. I'll be real. Like, Cookie Run's good. Right? I love Cookie Run. But it's not one of those major hitters. Like, not all gacha games are not, not all gacha games are made the same. There's a big difference between Cookie Run and Zen the Zone Zero. Biggest difference, Cookie Run's way better. Even if the game is Holy bad, tits. these development teams... Why did they nerf that shit, man? Why did they Why did they nerf that shit? ...usually know how to make the game look appealing so that the launch gains your attention. Yep. These games are often free, so many oh, people dude. are willing Skybreakers to look so good. try them. In this video, I'm going to be giving you a list of titles that I believe will be releasing within the, the next year, that? while only selecting three of these games and explaining why what these the games fuck should be was that? the big three. Let's what game is that? You and I will be... Hey, free copyright strike, baby. See, biggest worry about Project Mugen is made by Netties. Um, actually, wait, no. So I was thinking of Net Marble. Actually, has Netties done anything shady? I actually don't think so. Splatoon! Netties is ass? Yeah, but all gotcha game companies are ass. Wait, Netties did Diablo Immortal? Okay, but hear me out. Hear me out. Maybe Netties just did Diablo Immortal so they could use the funding to make Project Mugen. Ah, you see what I'm saying? You see what I'm saying? Maybe.
Inside. Holy ass. Yeah. The only reason this title isn't ranked higher on this list is because all we've seen so far for the game is its initial trailer, yep. some small updates, and some True. leaked gameplay. We can read some descriptions on the official website, but we have no idea when a beta would take place, what platforms it will be available for, what the actual gameplay will look like, and if the gameplay loop well, will be fun enough like to the maintain trailers. the attention it originally attracted. I'm actually really excited for this game, but without any knowledge on what this game is, I can't confidently place it any higher on this list. It looks, dude, knows, and the giant knows, titty girl, bro, insane. And that will change. Finally, Grand Saga has been confirmed. Okay, first of all, I got no idea what the fuck Grand Saga is, but yeah, Project Mugen is probably one of my most anticipated. I'm hoping to God it's as good as it looks. Because, like, dude, spider Manning around the overworld, man, all the characters got big fucking titties. The combat looks so fluid. I think the combat looks a little bit worse than Genshin's, but not by much. And it depends how, like, the tag-in system, the intro system, the outro system. Maybe there's elemental reactions. Who knows? But right now, it's because uh, every new release is, like, opti uh, optimism, right? Like, this game could have everything we've ever wanted, but we also don't really know anything. But, uh, God, the, 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 the bones of that game look so fucking good. For a global release, and with the Korean and Japanese versions of the game being available for years now, I can't really say if this game will do well or not. Grand Saga is an MMORPG developed by Mpixel for Android, iOS, and PC. Pass. No, I'm good. Every mobile MMO is just bad. Straight up. It's always so fucking bad. The gameplay is very different from gacha games that we've played in the past, and the developers have paid extra attention to the story in hopes to deliver a narrative that people will enjoy with actual dungeons and raids. Just because the, the, the servers don't work, and when I load into a raid, and I realize, oh, okay, any of these dudes could disconnect from their Wi-Fi or phone signal at any time. It doesn't necessarily really make me want to play. Now, I do think MMO gotchas can work if it's like it has a PC client. And then when you play on mobile, you can do like your grinding. That's fine. But like, dude, going into a raid and being reliant on Wi-Fi or phone signal, fuck that shit, bro. The only thing that we have at the moment is the Grand Saga website changing from the Korean version to a... I mean, maybe you all have played it and you know, I don't. ...website stating that the global version is coming MMOs soon. MMOs just suck. No, I like, like MMOs. They're fun. an announcement fun. with more information will come very, very shortly. You gotta find shortly. the right one, though. But the question is, is it too late? I think, yeah. I feel like every game that doesn't launch globally at the same time uh, will severely hinder the amount of success they could have had if they did that. I've heard really good things about this and really bad things about this. After I honestly can't tell my how the community hands feels. On the technical test for DNA, I feel like it looks I can say kind that this of game will be a banger, but yeah, it looks like the question is, how will they improve upon the feedback given? Yeah. During my time with DNA, it had a lot of bugs and there were a lot of things that I felt need to be worked on, but it did have a I will solid say though, foundation to work. A, a big benefit that Duet Night Abyss has is the acronym being DNA. Like that sounds really fucking clean. It's the same thing for WoW. It's the same thing for LOL, right? Like, everybody knows what LOL and WoW are without even saying what the fuck they are. DNA is so clean. From Duet Night Abyss is a 3D RPG that focuses on fast-paced combat, but during the technical test, it felt a bit slower than expected. That's a shame. The game will be launching on Android, iOS, and PC. But I will say, if it's slow during the technical test, perhaps it wasn't because you unlocked the late-game builds, because Warframe also feels pretty slow until you unlock some of the better frames. So maybe that's the same thing. I'm giving it benefit of the doubt. But uh, yeah, it, it looks like it's going to be bad Warframe, but I really hope that I'm wrong. Uh, yeah, I really hope that I'm wrong. But I wouldn't expect this one to release until late 2025. So it's going to be a while. Oh, I'm lucky. It's a sin that this game didn't launch globally alongside I know. the Chinese version, as yep. it's one of the few SRPGs that people are actually excited about. Yep. Girls Frontline 2 is an XCOM-style SRPG that follows the I story play this from the original so bad. Girls Frontline IP that's been running for a few years. The original game has a decently sized fan base who are just waiting for the developers to push the series to the next level. But can Girls Frontline 2 accomplish this? I will say I don't actually really enjoy when the smaller gacha games have these rabidly loyal fan bases because the problem is a lot of them are just people who 
are having money sunk fallacy, time sunk fallacy, and anybody who shit talks their game, they become very uh, ferocious because when you tell someone that their game is bad in the gotcha game, you're calling them stupid for spending money on it, and nobody wants to be called stupid. Uh, so I actually kind of consider that a downside, to be honest, but uh, I mean, it is what it is. This after releasing the game in China first with no date for the global version, we'll have to see. But regardless, this game is incredibly fun and highly recommended to those who are willing to give it a try. Yep. Triple Z is the next game coming from Hoyoverse. And while I originally planned on putting this in the top three. So ZZZ is a title that's really going to work against it. Because the problem is, is that it's an acronym for a game being boring as fuck. Right. And like, it's so easy to shit on. It's like being bald on the internet. It is such a net negative, right? It is such a net negative because now anybody can shit on you and there's not really anything you can do back about it. I can confidently say that many people who were originally excited for this game are no longer as excited due to Hoyo versus decision to double down on features that players either do not want or are incredibly boring. Yep. This game was originally pitched as a fast paced action RPG through its trailers by consistently showing combat with highly appealing characters in every single one of their trailers. But Triple Z is now viewed as a TV simulator yep. with not enough combat. Yep. However, Hoyo has recently stated in a press release for the upcoming beta that Zenless has made various improvements to the gameplay loop as well as hinted at more combat game modes, Good. thanks to various forms of feedback that players submitted in CPT2. Zenless Zone Zero is slated to be releasing in late 2024, with a final closed beta taking place on April 18th to yep. accepted players. The game will be launching on Android, iOS, PC, and I mean, the worst thing they did was is they nerfed Nicole's fucking titties, bro. I have no idea why they did that, because the and, and let me tell you why... That presents a problem is because this is the first Hoyo game that instead of being rated PG, it's been rated T. And so everybody thought because they went T, they can do more like sexy fucking characters. And then the first thing they do is censor the titties. So then it's like, well, what the fuck is the point of the T? Like, it's so stupid. The success depends on the changes made in the upcoming beta test. We'll find out very soon. Now let's finally start talking about the big three. From the developers behind Punisher yep. Grey Raven, we have Kuro Games stepping into the open world action RPG yes, genre where there's only one other game that's worth noting, and that's Genshin Impact. Yep. Weathering Wave seeks to develop a beautifully dark world with a story of loss and destruction. Yep. This game has a high emphasis on good combat where many other games lack this focus. With Weathering Waves releasing on May 22nd of 2024, many players have been excited for this title and have been for a very long time. Yes, sir. This upcoming title will be available for Android, Next month, iOS, boys. and PC. And while Weathering Waves is deserving of the number three spot on this list, will it be able to deliver on long-term content? We'll find out much sooner than later. You know what's crazy? I think Weathering Waves' launch is going to be fucking terrible. I think it's going to get its steps with the planned updates. I feel like Wuthering Wave is going to dominate when it comes to listening to player feedback and giving players what they want, man. Genuinely, I believe that. All they got to do is work on marketing, man. That's it. I'll be real. We're a month out, and I'm not seeing any Wuthering Waves ads. So where the fuck are those at? That's why you're stuck at 16 million pre-regs. This game needs to fucking market, bro. As a fan of Ark Knights, I've always wanted to emerge. This game's going to be ass chaotic, and you know it's going to be ass. Get this shit off your fucking list. This game shouldn't even be in the top eight. Bro, this shit looks so bad, it's fucking ridiculous. Bro, I picked up the game. In less than 30 minutes, I dropped it because it was so shit. Straight up, this game, they might as well change this shit to Ark Knights Deadfield. This shit is dead on fucking arrival. And you know what the worst thing is? The worst thing is all these people will see... It did really well for the first month or two. Then it's going to drop off a fucking cliff. This shit looks so fucking bad. Immerse myself in the world and story of Ark Knights at a much larger scale. Oh, Unfortunately, no. that's not possible in the current game, but the developers Hypergriff are currently at work on their next extension of the Ark Knights no. universe. No. A game that takes place well into the future with an explorable world, amazing characters, voice acting, and combat you, that resembles... When, you, when you play this game, please be careful with your money. Please. Please be careful with your money. Because, I, dude, the, the, the bones of this game, oh my god, I cannot express to you how bad it feels. It's fun for like 10 minutes, and then it's like, oh my god, bro. 
they they fucking flopped this shit. So I, once again, I hope I'm wrong. I hope I'm wrong. It is always better when there's more gotcha games in the gotcha sphere. But this shit ain't it, man. This shit, this shit ain't it. Blade Chronicles, which is one of my favorite game series. Infield contains base building mechanics that rely on you to build your base in an efficient Bro, manner does in that order not to gather proper obnoxious? materials for progression of characters, weapons, and other items needed for both your base and out in the world. It's not a fully open world game, but I think this will help it set itself apart and allow them to focus on aspects of the game that matter instead of looking for ways to fill up that world. Jesus. Currently, Ark Knight's Infield has no release date, but I'm expecting to see another beta in late 2024 with a possible release in 2025. Jesus. Here we go. This is also my number one. I'm not gonna lie, I'm stoked as fuck for Wuthering Waves. But Azure Premelia looks like the premier open world casual gacha game. I actually cannot wait. And knowing it's made by Azure Lane, and this game is going to be Coomer friendly, bro, I can't wait. This game is porn addiction on a stick. <laughs> This game seemingly came out of nowhere as it was created in secret by a very well-known gacha development team by the name of Manju, who is famously known for creating Azure Lane alongside of Yongshi. Claiming the number one spot on this list is Azure Permilia, a game that seems to have brought together various aspects of many popular games and put them all into one package. In this title, you have an open world so with action-based combat, the ability to hatch and evolve to new creatures and have them either gather materials for you or assist you in battle, yeah. a brand new farm-like system, and exploration that allows you to fly on the creatures you tame. Insane. Azure Permilia is slated to be releasing on Android, iOS, PC, and PlayStation 5 sometime this year or early next year. God but oddly damn. enough, the developers haven't officially announced the global version of the game despite having a global website, an English translated trailer, so and pretty, various bro. forms of social media for the global version of the game. No word of a beta has been announced either. So far, the promotion is looking strange, but the game itself looks incredible. With the mini games coming in 2024 God, and 2025, good. let me know what games you're excited for in the comment section below, and let me know why you're excited for the games listed. Dude, what a great fucking video, man. Chaotic makes such great videos. If you guys want to go support his channel, here's the link to his channel. Good fucking vid. Good fucking video. Uh, me, personally, I'm most excited for Project Mugen. Uh, I'm, I'm still excited for Zone the Zone Zero. I'm, I'm really hoping they can fix that game because it had such promising structure. You know, I really feel like the game could be good if they just pulled their head out of their ass. Now we just wait for them to do it. But, uh, yeah, I, I hope to God it's fucking good. Genuinely. Cause I don't want any game to be bad besides Ark Knight's Unfield because God damn that shit, that shit disappointed the fuck out of me. Uh, but regardless, yeah, games look good. Stoke for Azure Familia, Wuthering Waves, Project Mugen, it's looking good. Now we just need release dates. But Wuthering Waves is next motherfucking month, baby. Cannot fucking wait. Man, that video made me so happy just watching, man. There's so much good shit coming out, bro. There is, there is so much good shit coming out. It's actually fucking nuts. Actually fucking nuts. A new Azure Pamelia trailer showing a few more gameplay footage. Are you sure? Are you doing Weathering Waves free to play? I will be free to play Weathering Waves. Yep. It's going to be good. It's going to be good. Why? Because I feel like Weathering Waves for me will get boring when the content becomes too easy. And I feel like if I spend less money, the content will be harder. So I'll challenge myself more. And I'll be real. When I do summon sessions on video games where I just spend money to get whatever, it really fucking pisses me off. Especially when there's a guaranteed pity. Like cookie run summons are still fun for me because there's no pity. Right? So I'm fucked no matter what. But like when I know if I just spend this, I'll get that on a gacha game for me. I'm like, eh. Nobody in chat's going to give a fuck. You know what I'm saying? Or maybe I'll do something where it's like I limit myself to like $20 a banner. Like, who knows?
do you think the story of Wuwa is going to be good? Honkai Star Rail story is objectively good for me. Uh, subjectively good for me. Um, Genshin story is pretty fucking bad, majorly, but it has some good moments. Wuthering Waves, I think this story will be okay. As far as stories told in the gacha games go, it'll probably be pretty good, but I don't expect it to be like on the same level as Honkai Star Rail. Me, me personally, I, I don't believe it'll do that. I love Age of Star Story. Oh, yeah, it's so good. I skip all the stories. Yeah, that's great. By the way, did Asmund get around to doing Honkai Star Rail last night or no? Zach Rar. Zach Rar. <laughs> Why is Parasocial playing? Past broadcast. Let's call you the. I I think that. Oh, he's actually doing it. Perhaps we have. Oh, wait, his but chat's actually liking it. An old friend. In the haze of my recollection. Hey, go, pom pom. Please. Oh, he's grinding it. Name only after you have ensured. Who did it? Okay, so he got to meeting Himiko and oh, Well. Okay, Misha, I'm so sorry. Oh, he's still doing 2.0. Oh, he's not even at 2.1 yet. Oh, he's doing Firefly. Job markets. And we named it Soul Glad. Man, I was just thinking, there's pick up something I left in. Oh, dude, look cool at him go. Game. Sounds cool. Ooh. Nice. I doubt again. And uh, usual time or wait. Uh, he, he's in for a rude awakening when he continues. Uh, hopefully earlier. Yeah, that's what my plan is. What do you say? It's been a long time since I played this game. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, it's good to play it again. Try it out again. And yeah. uh, usual time or wait. Uh, hopefully earlier. Yeah, that's what my plan is. Don't miss Akron. Oh, no, I won't. It's not a big deal. There's no maintenance for a halfway point. Yeah, I'm not sure. Is he playing but again? Either way, guys, thank you all very much for watching. I had a good time today. We today, the plan is Undertale. If Asmund plays Undertale, I'm going to be going live and reacting to the whole thing. Let me see here real quick. Okay. So when he did, so when he did just chatting... He peaked at 36K. This is above average viewership for Zach, because generally he averages around 20 to 24K. Uh, he swapped to Honkai, and he only dropped down to 16 for doing the story of Old Story. I still think this is good enough analytics for where he will continue it, but the, the viewership was definitely inflated due to like the current politics and election. So I do think he'll still give it another shot. He was watching Trump at peak. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, but you can only watch so much Trump, right? There's only so much. Peak was 33K. Oh, yeah, no, I'm very aware of, of everything. Don't worry. I'm very, very, very aware. Yeah, yeah, That's going to happen when you watch Trump. So I, I think I think he will give another shot. I hope he does. It's not elections. It's war. Oh, dude. I, dude, I want to be watching Trump, to be honest. Compared to normal. Yeah, so when's the next po uh, politic thing? When's the next Trump speech? I need, I need to go live and react to Trump. I got to throw, throw my hat in that. I want to see how analytics do. I want to see our hero, Donald Trump. Pokey got nuked by bots earlier. Oh, yeah, I know, man. Oh, I know. I know. It's a speech for war. Good. Trump is like a train wreck I can't look away from. Oh, I know. Dude, he's so fucking funny. He's actually so... We ain't watching that. I guarantee you we would love to do a Donald Trump react. Donald Trump react would be so sick. Why would Asman care about views? You can't even sub to him. Uh, it's a mental thing. Every Dude, every streamer, regardless of their size, cares about views in somewhat, some, or some shape or form. Doesn't matter how many times a streamer says, oh, I don't give a fuck about viewership. If I'm sitting here at 5,000 viewers and I go to swap to play another game and that's going to drop me down to 10 viewers, you're goddamn right I'm not playing that fucking game. And you want to know why? Because I'm not going to make my chat sit there through a completely unbearable experience. I'm just not going to do that. Absolutely right. Yep. Uh, yeah, because men, you know, they just yep. Genuinely, men just yep. If you really want something done, just, just, just ask a woman. For example, like a sandwich. <laughs> oh, he doesn't start drama, huh? He doesn't start drama, huh? Man, 
Look at that, man. Look at that. Drama incarnate. New Mr. Beast. A few months. New Mr. Beast. To go at the very top of a 9,000 foot mountain in a remote part of Nepal, this hospital looked like this. Damn. Because of its isolation, this community has no electricity, meaning that local doctors- Why don't they just take the hospital and move it somewhere else? Doctors have no access to proper medical equipment and often had to perform surgeries and complex procedures in the dark using only a flashlight and very basic you tools. Stop, if more complex stole. care was needed, it would take hours to walk to a camera. better medical facility. These limitations have resulted in many fatalities and miscarriages. So our long-term partners give power, who we have worked with in three previous Beast Philanthropy videos, asked Dan and Darren to join them on a trek to the village of Kalaguin bug, to help them solve this problem, ass. where they were given an incredible incredibly warm welcome in undoubtedly one of the most beautiful places on earth. On the first morning, Darren met up with a local Give Power engineer named Sanjay, who told him a tragic story about Nira, a woman from the village who had previously lost her baby due to the freezing temperatures and lack of appropriate medical facilities and equipment. She had to travel in the monsoon roads. To so question, why don't they just move to America? You know? Like, why don't they, where would you just move them? That's what we should do, man. We should move all the good people to America, and then we should put all of the, the uh, we should put all of the, put all of the criminals in uh, fourth world countries, right? And those become the jail cells. We have entire continents of just prisoners. Can you imagine that? It'd be like a fucking war zone. And then like every three months, they would have to, like, fight to the death to reform, and then they would get brought back to the holy land of America. You'd empty America? <laughs> yeah, it's called Australia. Oh, wait, that's how Australia was made, by the way? No, you're kidding. No shot. Was Australia a prison? That's so fucking cool! It was a fucking prison continent? <laughs> Bro! Dude, history is badass! Dude! They stole my idea, man. How did you not know that? Hey, guys, I'm from America, guys. All right, that's insane. That is so fucking cool. Yeah, pull out your dick for me. Yeah, keep stroking. Yeah, you're gonna come. The nearest boarding center, and then since the boarding center was far away, she couldn't reach the boarding center and had to lose the baby. And due to a lack of government funding, this hospital would not get electricity until at least 2030. If the hospital was up... and running with the burning facility. The case with her would have been completely different. Darren knew we had to act fast to prevent this from happening again. Yeah. So he also met Melissa, the founder of the Green Program, who brought a bunch of incredible students and volunteers to help finish this massive- Yo, boys, boys, boys. Pinky went viral on TikTok again. Darren, peep this shit. I'm so proud of her, man. Look at this shit. This shit is so fucking cool. Oh, let me uh, let me try to find it. Oh, hey, hey, guys, 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 mods, kill them if they shit talker. Kill them if they shit talker. Okay, mods, have your guns out. We're entering. We're entering pog only mode, dude. So pink cosplayed. Uh, mods, be ready to kill them. So Pink cosplayed uh, loot from Hasman Hotel. Dude, dude, I came home yesterday and this shit was sitting in my living room. I didn't even know who the fuck that was. Dude, I didn't even know who the fuck that was. I thought there was a demon in my house. Dude, dude, that shit looks crazy. Because I watched her stream and I only got to the part where she just white-faced. 
which I guess is fine in 2024, but if, you know what, we don't need to call out the hypocrisy here, guys. Okay, regardless, really cool. Very good job, Minky. Very good job. If you want to go follow her stream, she has lots of cosplays. Twitch.tv forward slash Pikachu. You can give her a shout out. Go give her a follow. Great streamer. Great friend. The project. When I was younger, I was... Did you see the Trump speech today? This time we stand and say... And I'll proudly stand up next to you and defend her still today. Cause there ain't no doubt I love this land. God bless the USA. Yeah, how many Europeans just watched that and got really angry because you're thinking, why the fuck is he proud of his country? Yo, how many EU motherfuckers in here who hate NA? Just keep it a buck. Yo, boys, what's better, Asia, EU, or NA? Cast your vote. Cast your vote, guys. Country wars. You can't just raise your hand. I don't, I don't know where you're from, man. I don't understand the hype, TBH. No, America's good as fuck, man. You want to know why? Free running water. Internet. Best thing is, scene girls. Alt girls. Go to Austin, Texas, man. Go to Austin, Texas on 6th Street. There'll just be chicks walking with their tits out. It's insane. Visiting my family in Malaysia. It was the first time I saw the ocean. It was the first time I saw the reef. And then it was really the first time where I realized that if we had the opportunity to show people the beauty of nature and the world, it really unlocks something that makes us want to protect it too. So we've essentially taken students from all over the world who care so deeply about making an impact and being able to expose our future generations to different perspectives is a way that we believe can really make the world a better place. Yep. After meeting Sanjay and Melissa, Darren was more inspired than ever before to get to work by installing a solar array and batteries to power the new hospital, as well as provide all the equipment to outfit a safe and modern birthing center to serve this vulnerable community. Okay, we're ready for day one. So the team was beyond excited to get to work. It's the piece By the end of the first day, the team managed to finish all the digging and wiring. I can't really put my finger on it, but there is something about the people in this village. Their authenticity, their friendliness, and their openness has made me feel part of their families in just a few days. As so we cool. walked up to this house, somebody ran inside and he lit a fire and there's smoke coming out and we didn't know what was going on, but he went to go brew some tea. This is Himalayan and black tea with ginger, and it is really the best tea I've ever had in my entire life. This wow. is the culture over here. These people are incredibly kind and welcoming, and everywhere you go, they want to take care of us. They have so literally cool. opened up their houses and given us a bedroom in their house so that Dan and I have a comfortable place to stay. But not long after the construction wow. began, Dan started to feel ill. Comfortable place. Where the fuck did they get Mountain Dew in this country, bro? Where? Huh? Where the fuck did they get Mountain Dew? To stay. But not long after the construction began, Dan started to feel ill. I feel like super sick, so I've got to go over to the oh local no. post to get checked out. Which means he can experience firsthand <laughs> just how difficult it is to get treated in such a remote location. As you can see, everything's locked up here. And that's the harsh reality what is the if you're fuck? severely ill in a village nearby, you'd have to make a seven hour trick to get to the closest big facility. Seven you know. hours? Fortunately, there was a nurse on site that was able to see him. Why don't they just this give him a helicopter? A nurse in the local town of Kalaguan. She's come to help me. But because there is no electricity, she can only do a very basic checkup. She came to the conclusion that Dan had... Gati. Gati. Yeah. I've got Gati, right? It's a rare Nepalese disease. Actually, it's just a minor oh, cold. <laughs> But for a community this size, there are often far more serious. I swear to God, bro. A dude could be walking around with eight broken bones and he'd be fine. If he's if he's 99.6 on a thermometer, 
Bro would be in bed, swear to God he's dying. Serious situations that required an immediate and comprehensive treatment that just are not available. With so much riding on this project, the team were already feeling the intense pressure. So while Dan got some rest, they continued with the construction. Insane. Insane. Now that the supporting structure was built, we could begin installing the solar panels. Because of the team's hard work, we were now ahead of schedule. So Darren took the it's time so to find cool. out more about Sanjay. When I was working Why would you do the one gust of wind in your day? We find out uh, this village with no electricity at all. And then when you get here, I saw a baby was there in a wooden box, you know, and then there was a light bulb on, you know, hitting it. And suddenly it popped my mind. And I think this kind of equipment can be, you know, built by ourselves. And after that, I... So the baby the built his own box and, and made warmth? make a baby warmer. And we call it... Bro, you play Minecraft. Nepali, that means a warm um, child. Nano Nani became such a success that it won a People's Choice Award in the USA. I think it's a dream come true for me because cool. the reason is well, like to, you know, to build this kind of warm baby crafty. To aware the people about the significance in remote settings and the remote hospital like this in the background. Realizing the life-saving importance of simple medical equipment, Darren decided to surprise Sanjay by buying 10 more baby warmers that he could give to other communities and similar needs. Sanjay, um, I want to buy another 10 of those baby warmers from you and wow. let you just go give it to whatever hospitals or communities need them. Thank, thank you very much, Darren. It means a lot. You know what I would have said? <laughs> Bitch, only 10? Okay, Brokey. For me and the team, yeah, it, it just feels unreal. Okay, Brokey. That's it? Damn, bro. With only one day remaining, we were so close to finishing the construction. And the whole broke, team boy, gathered to sign so. the final solar panel. Guys, I don't want to blow anybody's mind, but tomorrow, Pokemane will be in my town. I, I can't believe it, bro. I'm going to be in the presence of a queen. And I'm not going to hang out with her a single time, but she'll also be in Austin, Texas. Oh, my God. Yeah. And Darren had the honor of tightening oh the final my God. Together, we turned a broken building with no electricity into a fully operational hospital that will service over 16,000 people in this community. Damn. I have so much gratitude for the fact that we are able to come in here and give them a gift that will make a meaningful difference to these people for generations to come. It's getting close to nightfall now, and it's yeah, nearly time to there? surprise the community, and I can't wait. The whole village came to the hospital to witness the lights turn on for the first time. Are you ready? Yeah, but how do you get there? Seeing the lights come on for the first time in a community it never gets old, and it's been absolutely incredible sharing it with this community. The next morning, Sanjay invited Nira. I wonder how these people like communicate with these tribes that don't have electron electronics or internet. <clears throat> like, do they drive up and be like, "Hey, man, I'm gonna make a Mr. Beast video. What the fuck is that? Yeah, we're gonna post it on YouTube. What the fuck is that?" Like, like how how unadvanced are these like towns? I'm wondering. Back to the hospital, so he could show her all of the new equipment, including his baby warmers. Now she's very much optimistic that no one has to go through what she went through. She is very happy and grateful for the birthing facility over here. Namaste. Before the final surprise, I want to say a huge thanks to a sponsor of this video, the best food on the planet, not Feastables, Kellogg's for just this time being, because they're helping us help people. <laughs> From today until June 31st, 2024, Kellogg's is teaming up with Minecraft to give you free exclusive character creator items. Like Minecraft this, a hat, an axolotl hat, and a cherry blossom dress. To use in-game when you buy any participating specially marked boxes of Kellogg's cereal. Like these, Kellogg's Fruit Loops, Frosted Flakes, Apple Jacks, and Corn Pops. The aim is to collect all three character creator items. And on top of all of this, Minecraft and Kellogg's have partnered with the Arbor Day Foundation. Arbor Days is the same foundation that helped us do team trees. And they're planting 250,000 wow. trees in forests of great need in the USA. That's pretty epic. Click the link in the description to that find out more as well as check out all the terms and conditions. 
Okay, Feastables, I'm sorry for cheating on you, but I gotta do what I gotta do to help people. Thank you, Kellogg's, for sponsoring this video. And let's get back into it. I can't believe Kellogg's accepted that sponsorship where he said, yeah, I just sold out for money, bro. I hate Kellogg. Sorry, Feastables. When speaking to Sanjay, we found out that although he is Nepalese, he has never been to Everest, and it has always been a dream of his to see the massive mountain. So on the last morning, we decided to surprise him with a once-in-a-lifetime trip. We're so close to Everest, it just made sense that we go visit it. We took Sanjay to the highest point on Everest that a helicopter can reach. The air was so thin, Darren, Dan, and Sanjay were only allowed to spend two minutes up there, or they could get hypoxia from lack of oxygen. Darren and I are at the highest points we've ever been together. I can't believe this happening. Seeing Everest literally brought Sanjay to his knees with emotion. It's so overwhelming. It's a dream for me to come here and see the Everest. Why don't people just fly to the top of Everest and then just stand there? Like, why even bother climbing that shit, to be honest? Like, don't, like, tons of people just die there? Again, I just want to thank our partners at Give Power and the Green Program for making this project. You can't? Nah, it's cap, bro. Possible. Obviously, a lot goes into making these projects, and so if you want to learn more about it, Dan actually made a behind-the-scenes video that you can click the link in the description to go watch. Where are you going to land? Okay, go to the top and build a helicopter landing zone. And then that's it. The fuck? Just fly up. Air pressure is so low. Well, then fix it. This is what happens behind the scenes on a beast philanthropy shoot. Enjoy. Clap your thing. We got it. <laughs> <laughs> I've noticed you guys click off at the end of the video, so this time when I talk, there'll be a cat video playing. So you actually keep watching while I say 100% of all the ad revenue and all just the revenue in general we make off this video goes to Beast Philanthropy. to be. So as always, by watching this I video, that you're allowing us to help people. Please go watch more videos and subscribe right now, or you just hate helping people. I'm not gonna lie, bro. I was gonna click off, and then I saw that cat. I'm gonna be 100%. American what, bro? What? Just fix it, guys. Change how planet works. Yeah, I mean, it's really not that hard, bro. It really ain't that difficult. All right, what's this? Oh, my God. Look at all that wheat. Uh, wheat. I can't wait, bro. It's going to be so fucking good. So fucking good. Oh my god. Oh, it's so pretty, bro. Better Genshin, better power, old man. Oh my god. I don't know the character. He's sexy as fuck. Good God. Yeah, but they got but they're hot though. Yeah, but they're hot though. You know what I'm saying? Besides that one. I'm the dog. I'm about to fight that bitch's head off. Bruh. I can't wait. No males. Wait, no males equals flop? Hell no. Bro, no males equals pog. 
Okay, straight the fuck up. No dudes equals fucking pog. Does he know? What do you mean? Have you ever seen this new game? Slippery little bastard! I don't have time for this. Let's go! <laughs> Nano machine, son! Hurt me, Billy. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I am okay. I am okay, bro. I am all right. I am okay. I am curious because I'm 30 now, right? I'm 30. I say that shit a lot because it's the truth. But games, sometimes they just don't hit the same anymore, man. And I, I actually don't think it's an age thing. Genuinely. I think games are becoming worse. There's so many more games being released. So many of them are fucking trash. And they just don't hit like they used to. Maybe it's because I've grown numb and my standards are too high. But I am curious how to enjoy games again. In a scenario, you're chilling in your Cheeto Dust Stand gaming chair at 11 p.m. on a Friday night, bored out of your goddamn mind. Yep. Looking on the Steam store page, desperate to find anything that might entertain you. Yo, Mr. Pokey! Name of the raid. We just started the new React video. Uh, called How to Enjoy Games Again because shit's just not fun anymore. Bro, I hope your game, or I hope your stream was good. I'll see you tomorrow morning. Uh, thank you for the raid, brother. And I hope you're chilling, man. Yo, hey, hey, hope you had fun in Genshin today. Hope you had fun on Genshin. Yo, congratulations on all the follow bots. That was fucking insane. Actually fucking nuts. But yeah, boys, go follow Mr. Pokey. Great streamer, great dude. Uh, let's keep watching this shit. You see a game with overwhelmingly positive reviews on yep. sale. So you know you gotta snatch it. You yep. buy it, then you boot it up and start playing. Your boredom quickly subsides, but only for five minutes. Then it comes back at you at full force, stronger than it ever was. You quickly alt F4 out of the game, then you say to yourself, eh, I'm not really feeling it today. True. Maybe tomorrow. Constantly. With that, you proceed to never play the game again. Just and then you know what sucks? Then I pick up League of Legends, and I play League again. I play TFT. I, I, I play, like, fucking Fall Guys. Like, I don't know what it is, man. Like, games from current genre just do not hit for me. They just don't hit. Like, older games were so much fucking better. Like, I mean, every now and there's a gem. Like, Elden Ring, right? But, like, we all know not every game is Elden Ring. Like, I'm just like, yeah, I'll just fucking play League, I guess. Just letting it sit in your library to collect dust for an indefinite period of yep. time. We've all been there. Let's be real. But the question is, how did we get there? A decade ago, we enjoyed all our games, even though they had worse graphics and sometimes super wacky controls. But regardless, we still had the time of our lives. How do we go from being able to play our older consoles for hours and hours without even a hint of boredom yep. to today where we barely have the drive to play a new game for more than a couple of minutes? Are games getting worse or are we just getting too old for video games? I mean, obviously there's some exceptions. You know what I mean? Like, I'll pick up a Soulsborne and I will crush that shit for days. But like, dude, I went back and played the new Ratchet and Clank and there's just no way it's a me problem. Like, the new Ratchet and Clanks are just so much worse than the old Ratchet and Clanks. Like, I don't know, man. Like, I really don't think it's a me thing. And how do we enjoy games again? 
Well, lucky for you, I have a couple answers to these questions. You see, I too have gone through a period of my life where playing video games was less entertaining than watching paint dry. Yep. I want to share the methods that helped me find fulfillment in even the least stimulating of games. So let's- Now imagine people who love video games so much, all they do is just watch other people play video games so much. And then that same thing happens to a platform where now nobody goes on Twitch to watch people play games. They watch people who watch videos about games that suck. Like, bro, it's, it's pain. Let's get into it. Yep. But first, why does this happen? Why is it the games were so much more fun when we were children, but now... You want to know why they were fun when we were children? Because we had no responsibilities, we didn't have to pay money, and our time was essentially meaningless until we had to go back into school. Now when you're adults, you have a choice. Go out and do... Because now we can do anything we fucking want. We don't have to listen to anybody. You can go do anything at any time. So if something is not the peak of your interest, you're just going to think, eh, I'd rather just go do something else. And I'll be real, and maybe I'm growing up a little bit too much. Guys, I'll just, I'll just keep it 100%. I would enjoy walking through the mountains more with my friends than I would staying home alone playing video games. I would enjoy going to the gym more with my homies more than playing video games. Just straight up. There's very rare exceptions, but dude, I love spending time with people in real life. Now, playing Baldur's Gate 3 with my friends, that's a good ass time. Because then we go for a hike, we go get some food, we all go home, we get on Discord, then we play Baldur's Gate 3. But like single player games, this game's got to be fucking revolutionary to get my fucking time. Not so much. Well, there could be any number of reasons that vary depending on the person. Could be because video games were novel when we were younger. Now that we've had these yeah. luxuries for so long, we take them for granted. Fair. Could also be that your friend group used to play video games together, and after years and years of adulting, your friends slowly drifted apart, causing you to be all alone with little desire to play games. Every MMO ever. World of Warcraft, new expansion drops, everybody's grinding for two months, everybody quits, I'm the last one there alone. And I'm just like, well, I guess I'll leave too because nobody's here. And now you're experiencing that with Genshin Impact. Everybody once loved this game. All of your friends have quit. It's time for you to grow up. It's time for you to quit Genshin Impact. Or it could just be that you're working too much and gaming doesn't really fit into your tight schedule of working and napping and working and napping and working and napping. It could be pretty much True. anything. But the most and that's the thing. Like any game that I have to play longer than 30 minutes in one session stresses me the fuck out. Right, like that's why I want to play Helldivers, but the missions can go on too long sometimes. That's why I enjoy League, and I play very aggressive. Either I win quick or I lose quick, and generally I would have an 86% win rate uh, over the past three months. But regardless, it's either win quick or lose quick. I, I don't like games where I have to lock in for long amounts of time, because that way if I need to leave, I can't, and it sucks. The most prevailing one that I hear is that video games are getting worse. This yeah. opinion is common with Millennials and Doomers, both of which usually don't even play video games. While it's true that the games of today are nothing they are objectively worse. Something like the games of the 1980s or 1990s or even the 2000s, for better or for worse, that doesn't mean that all the games after a certain time period are just garbage. Okay. However, I'm going to make a counterpoint. I would argue that the ratio of good games to bad games of current generation is much higher than previous generations. I would say from the 1990s through 2010s, there was a far higher ratio of good games to bad games. But now these days, there is so many fucking bad games and very little actually good games. And I believe that's because of ratios and the ease of access to developing tools and more independent games. Right? <laughs> Bro, the fact they fucked up Dark Alliance, like, bro, I waited like 15 years for the new Dark Alliance, and they threw that shit in the fucking blender. Dude, Dark Alliance 1 and Dark Alliance 2 were some of the best console games ever made for that uh, for that generation, and they threw it all away, bro. They it, And you know why? It's because of Joe Biden. Well... At least not all of them, okay? There are a lot of new games that happen to be garbage, but there are also a lot of old games that are just straight garbage, but people sure. praise and defend them with impunity. I thought Celebrity Deathmatch was funny as fuck. Everyone feels nostalgic about one thing or another. For some, it's shitty video games. 
For others, it's food we grew up eating. For me, it's gotta be the Razor Scooter. Even though it decimated my shins as an eight-year-old, there's still a special place in my heart for it. Yep. It's okay to be nostalgic towards something, whether that be something that sucks or Scooters something that's so awesome. High. Just try not to be so blinded by nostalgia that you don't give any new games a fair shot because you don't feel the same way that you did playing Ocarina of Time 20 years ago in your family room. Oh my god, do you remember that? Now that being said, I can look back and the way that I used to enjoy games back then, I, I wanted to think it was different, right? You know, because I would just sit and play Ocarina of Time and just run around and do nothing and be happy, right? And I would think, yeah, that was just because I was a kid. No, it wasn't because it was actually fun to figure that shit out because I got the same excitement of just walking around and doing nothing that I used to get from Genshin Impact because I would just walk around as Kazuha and I'd be having fun because every now and then I get to hold E and jump 30 feet into the air. You know, it was good. It was like when I got boots of Spring Hill Jack and Oblivion, you know, just jump up. I was excited just to press the jump button. It was fucking awesome. Because I'm sorry to break it to you, but you're just never going to relive that experience. Unless you were to play older games, because you should play older games now! I mean, all agree. I'm going to give you guys a recommendation of a game you've probably never heard of before, but I think is universally enjoyable by almost everybody. Uh, the game is called Overlord. Uh, it's a very old game that was playable on the Xbox and the Xbox 360. Game is fucking incredible. Um, it's essentially like Pikmin, but for coomers and demons. It is so much fun. You play as this giant demon boss and you control your army of minions and you like fuck up towns or you save towns. Whatever you do determines how your character is. If you're a good guy, you can do good guy things. If you're a bad guy, you can do bad guy things. Yeah, Overlord, Mass Effect, Fable. I think those are series that everybody can enjoy. Like, they are just so goddamn good. I recommend those to everybody who are looking for a good game to play. However, I do recommend starting at Fable 2 and also starting at Mass Effect 2 because they're a lot better standalone. If you're one of those people who constantly complain on the internet about how modern games suck and how they'll never live up to your personal nostalgia golden age, then I have a prescription for you. Just play old school games. Yep. I personally love replaying games that I played during my childhood, Same. like Ratchet and Clank, Ocarina of Time, Pokemon Red, everything, man. Yep. You can also play gems that you've never played before. Dude, just playing a straight-up playthrough of Pokemon Red sounds like a fucking blast. If you're zooming like me, you probably miss out on a lot of classics that you would have loved if you played it when you were younger. If you're finding no joy in modern games, then just boot up an emulator and play some classics. Legally, of course, because I've never encouraged you to ever pirate a game. Like, seriously, I hate those degenerates that just go on the pirate Reddit mega thread list, and they use one of these safe and detailed guides on how to download free emulators and ROMs. Like... It's just so messed up because it costs hardworking and in-touch companies like Nintendo to lose gajillions of dollars. So yeah, yeah I hate that. make sure you don't go on this mega thread and download thousands of ancient games for free. Yeah, that would be super me fucked off, up. Bro. So in essence, if you're disappointed in modern that games, you should so just play a large selection of older games. That should help reignite your love for video. If you find yourself still bored while playing old games, it's clear that the age of the game isn't the problem. The real problem is your habits and discipline. You might be thinking, discipline? I'm playing video games, it shouldn't require any discipline to do. Well, that might have been the case for you eight years ago. In the current era, there are so many things that are feeding for your attention. Yep. These things are usually a million times more stimulating than playing a little old story game. It really is, man. Just going like this and getting infinite entertainment on TikTok is really hard to pass up. And I'll be real, the reason why video games were so exciting was because I'd be sitting in my house, listening to my parents beat each other and scream at each other, lock myself in my room, and all of a sudden, I'm in Hyrule. I'm in Hyrule, and now the bad guy, I get to beat him, and I get to win. I get to collect Jiggies and Banjo-Kazooie. I, I, I get to, you know, shoot eggs at Gruntilda. I get to walk around with my best friend Pikachu, who will never be mean to me in a video game. And in a video game, everybody was nice to me. And those who weren't nice to me, I'd be able to overcome and triumph over. But in the real world, I was just a sad, scared little kid, and I couldn't do anything. My, I, I just had to deal with it. If someone was mean to me, okay, well, then now I just have a bad day. And that's pretty much it. That's why video games were the greatest thing to ever happen to me when I was a kid. Whether that be social media or short-form content like TikTok and YouTube shorts, or maybe even Twitch streamers whom you have Pikachu a routine never beat of watching me with a Switch. every single yeah, exactly. day. All of these things Pikachu require never much less the discipline chocolate. than playing a single-player game. But despite that, finishing a game is far more fulfilling than scrolling through TikTok for a couple of hours or mindlessly watching a Twitch streamer. Now, first off, I take offense to that. Second off, 
I will be 100%. I don't like beating games. I don't. I actually get horribly sad whenever I beat a game. You know what game I've never beaten, but I've played over 3,000 hours of? Skyrim. I have never beaten Alduin. I have never stopped the dragons. I have never completed that game a single time, yet I've done Dark Brotherhood. I've done Thieves Guild. I've done Mage Guild. I've done Warrior Guild. I've done them all. I've done every single side quest. I've never beaten Alduin because it makes me depressed when I finish a game. My preferred way to play games is to stop a boss or two before I beat it. Preferably like two bosses before I beat it, I usually just drop it. Because beating games makes me fucking sad. Straight up. I think the exceptions of that is probably Dark Souls 1. But uh, yeah, Dark Souls 1 is fucking so good. Same thing with Elden Ring. But I'll be real. I think I would have enjoyed Elden Ring more if I didn't beat it. Because the last boss fight fucking sucks. It was so bad. I after finishing a good game, you feel happy, satisfied, nah. euphoric even. And yeah. sometimes, sometimes you let out some tears if the story was sad enough. That or you're letting out some tears if you just finished Redfall and you're just now realizing that you can't refund can this piece this of garbage. Ever. Now, one of the best games to play is one of those Telltale games like Until Dawn, where you do like character decisions, and then at the very end, you get to see the consequences of your actions. Those games I love playing. Whatever the case, there's nothing like finishing a good game. But compare this to watching TikTok, where you get a huge boost of stimulation yep. in the beginning that slowly wanes over time. Yep. Anyways, the thing that worked best for me was slowly weaning off my bad habits for weeks until they were nothing. But before I teach you this method, I want to tell you that moderation is key. Okay. Even though short form content can corrode your attention span, at the end of the day, almost anything is fine with moderation. Damn, it's dude. up to you to determine what has Holy a negative fuck. impact on your life. For me personally, I see video games as a perfectly fine and healthy form of recreation. At least for most video games. But for some, they may think video is a complete creation. What did that say? At least for most video. Why, yes, I'm... <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Video games. But for some, they may think video is a complete waste of time. On the other hand, short-form content and social media serves as visual junk food for me. But for you, it might be the complete opposite. And also, not all these things are equally bad. Having a Twitch streamer on your second monitor while you play a repetitive game isn't awful. But doing the same thing with a story game that requires your full attention to enjoy might ruin the experience. You decide what recreational activity is worth your while. Now that that's yep. out of the way, this is how you can eliminate negative habits. First, you go through your day like normal, doing whatever you do oh, on a daily basis, made, by the way. regardless of how bad it is. Log down your daily routine on a piece of paper or in the notes on your phone. Write down the habits that you deem as distracting or draining of your attention span. Then anytime you participate in these habits, start a stopwatch. You can use your phone for this too. Once you're done with the habit, you write down the time of the session on the piece of paper and you add it up as you go. At the end of the day, you should have all your habits timed out and this will give you a really good baseline of all the habits you need to improve. Let's say your day looks like this. 8 hours of working, 4 hours of watching TikTok, 2 hours of social media, and 1 hour of crying in the shower thinking about her. Dude, if I were to write down how long I spent masturbating a day, I think I would hate myself. Straight up. I think if I were to write that shit down, I think I'd be like, man, I am fucked up. Because you know what's crazy? I guarantee at least 1% of people watching this shit right now are currently stroking their shit with me on, their, me on the second monitor. Three hours at least. I mean, it's insane, man. But the problem is it's just so much fun. You know? Something about it is just so much fun. For the next couple of weeks or months, slowly replace these things with gaming or... Or another recreational thing that you want to do more of, like hiking, hunting, whatever you do. The next day you might reduce all your habits by- I would do hiking, but everybody in this day and age is a bunch of pussies. Dude, all I want to do is kill animals and then eat every part of them. Like, I want to see, like back in the days, like, uh, the Indians, they would kill a buffalo and then they would eat or repurpose every part of its body. And I feel like that would be so cool. You know, like eat a whole buffalo and then turn its bones into necklaces and take its skin and like make a blanket. Or the natives, Native Americans, Native Americans, Native Americans, guys, Native Americans, Native Americans, guys. Yeah. We Native Americans, guys. Ah, that's not hiking. Okay. Uh, yeah. But I don't know, I think that'd be cool. Because I don't know if, I feel like the humanity just like dishonors the killed animals they do now. 
You know what I mean? Like they take these chickens, they slit their throat, they turn them into chicken nuggets, and they take half their, or like 60% of their body that's unwanted and just throw it away. I think it's something very cool about like respecting the animals that you consume in order to sustain your life. And I think the Native Americans did a very beautiful job of that for doing that for the buffaloes. Right? I think that's very, very, very cool. You know? By, let's say, five minutes or however long you feel comfortable with. And during the meantime, you make yourself play video games to fill the gap. Techie, if you want to go hiking, I'm down totally. Bro, you understand that I don't know your ass, right? I want to make that very clear. Yeah, I don't know your ass. Now, I will admit this. I will admit this. At TwitchCon, I'm taking me and all my viewers to the zoo. So, if you want to go to the zoo, we can go to the fucking zoo. But, uh, yeah, that's the plan. So, you guys, you guys should get tickets to TwitchCon, and we should go plan out a San Diego zoo trip. Be like, that would be fun as fuck. Bro, you are too afraid to hunt anything? Yeah, we kind of want to understand how that is. Yo, what up, Coral? Yeah, dude, I'm super down to go hiking, man. I love that shit. Okay, anyways, back to the react. This is a very slow but effective method of replacing your habits. It might be hard at first and annoying to constantly log your hours, but it'll most definitely pay off in the long run. Trust me, if you do this every day and keep logging your hours, in a couple of weeks or months, your habits will be where you want them to be. But yep. make sure you don't try to rush the process. You might be tempted to just say screw it and try to quit these addictive habits cold turkey. People often think that big change happens in a day. People watch these videos with a motivational speaker yelling in your ear about grinding and hustling. They tell you to just lose weight. They tell you to just quit. Well, a big burly guy in the background is chopping wood and you think, yeah, I can change. I can be different. That's right. And for one day, you go to the gym. You go for a run and you eat healthy. Then that day ends and you immediately fall right back into your bad habits. <laughs> and sometimes your habits get worse. Mm. Damn, bro. And making you binge on all the things you neglected God damn, the day. bro. Huge change doesn't happen in a day. Huge change takes many days of consistently doing slightly better. Until yeah, huge change happens in your mom's asshole when I put my unerect penis in there and then I let it grow as she screams and her eyes roll to the back of her head from the pure pleasure that I'm putting her in. So your habits compound to where you want them to be. Miscellaneous tips. If you have problems staying off certain websites, use a Jesus. website blocker. You can usually find these in the extension store of your browser. This one even has a setting where you can redirect the blocked link to a custom URL of your choice. So instead of wasting my time on Twitter, I get redirected to this motivational video instead. Another tip is to watch VODs instead of live streams. Streamers often have sporadic schedules that create a feeling of urgency when they go live, giving you the fear of missing out. If you just watch the VODs, it's easy to fit the streams into your own schedule. Does it? Do I? I feel like I don't do that. I feel like I go live at around the same time every day. And I stream for around the same length every day. Watch the VODs. Nah, fuck that shit, bro. I need y'all in my chat. And I also stream every motherfucking day. So, like, even if you miss a stream yesterday, hey, I'll still be there the next day. And I'll still be there the next time again. You know? Like, I feel like I'm always here, to be honest. And it gives you the power to watch it anytime you want. The last tip is to delete apps that are distracting. If you want to go on TikTok, for example, you'd have to re-download and sign into the app. This is a pain in the ass which can deter you from going on TikTok. So, when it comes to enjoying games again, sometimes it's as simple as playing games that you loved during your childhood. Most yep. often, though, it's your addiction to extremely stimulating content that forces you out of doing the things that you love. It's up to you to replace these habits and work harder to live a more fulfilling life. It may seem difficult at first, but it's definitely possible. Consistency and small changes are the most important elements in this. <clears throat> uh, so yeah, make sure to stay safe out there. I think this was a great video, and I think all that this did for me was... Um, also, here's the video, guys, if you want to go check it out for yourself. Uh, I think that I really just want to play a bunch of older fucking games. I think I want to go back to the golden age of gaming. I think I want to go back and play a lot of the classics. You know, dude, I think playing Banjo-Kazooie on stream would be so much fucking fun. But yeah, play the games that made me fall in love with game to begin with. And also try the ones that I haven't tried. Like, I've, I've never played Conker's Bad Fur Day. And I feel like I would fucking love it. You know, I feel like I would want to try Cyberpunk or maybe even Kingdom Hearts. You know, like, I, bro, I've never even played a Spyro. Well, I played one Spyro. It was the one with the Sergeant Penguin. But, you know, like, go back and play, like, the classics, bro. That would be good as shit.
Cyberpunk would be insane. Spyro, Monster Hunter. I've already played Monster Hunter. Sly Cooper. I love Sly Cooper, bro. Love Sly Cooper. But I feel like I miss it on a lot of the classics. We got to go try those out. Yo, great video, man. Appreciate you. See you in the next one, boys. Cyberpunk is a masterpiece of fucking must. Is it really that good? I thought it was terrible. Okay, so when you play Cyberpunk for the best playthrough, where should I start? Like, where should I choose my living situation being? If I want the most fun. Witcher 3 was fun, but it wasn't good on stream. Does it matter? Does it matter? Street Kid or Corpo? Okay. Yeah, when I played, I was out in the fucking boonies, man. Like, I was straight up in the fucking boonies. Way to fuck back there. It's it's the game that I can never finish myself to finish. Skyrim got away because I'd be too depressed if it never ends. Oh, man. Is there porn in it? It'd be sick as fuck. All right. Play it right now. Have you seen these two new HSR videos A yet? A lot of people. Yeah, I already reacted to this. Have been under already the reacted. idiotic assumption that Zila needs good relic. Hello, for guys. Some... Mr. Pokey here. Ba I have not seen this. I have not seen this. What the fuck is how different HSR creators do their content? Genuinely. Genuinely, what is this? Hello, guys. Mr. Pokey here. Back, back with, with another, another video. video. Today, we will be zero cycling MOC 12 Sam using Akron. Oh, yeah. And this is my Akron style. So, yeah, it's very, it's very, it's very relatable. Yeah, so, yeah, so, you just need an easy idol on as well. Yes, very, very relatable. Chat. <laughs> you know what's crazy about Mr. Pokey? Mr. Pokey is, he's fixated on the fact that he's neutral. He's fixated on the fact that he doesn't cause drama. Bro, every single time I go into his stream, he's saying some shit that if I were to say the same shit, 18 hate threads on Twitter, 19 people come into my house saying, burn the white man, burn the white man. I'm telling you, bro. Bro does not, get, bro does not realize how much of a fucking menace he is. Genuinely. Genuinely. Respectfully. He's a fucking menace, bro. Remember when I used to be called the white devil? Chad, are you all ready for me to lose and expect to cry of the Windigos for me today? Of course. <laughs> what the fuck you mean the cry of the Windigos? Also, that's my favorite photo of me, bro. That's what happened. This is the, this is the, your mom was over. Your mom was over when I took this photo. You are, because that's my special anime power. <laughs> Wait, we get a five star, we get a five star. Mods get the pull going. I swear to God, if I lose this 50 50, I will quit this game and go back to Genshin Impact and harass those people and make them tweet about how miserable their life is. My drama with Tech Tone, one out of 256 page. We're also using our like, oh <laughs> right, I've only missed two 50 50s. Okay, and that's with pride. Free to play pride. That's my free to play pride. And I hate how you disrespected it because I earned it. Nah, bro. This is so good. Because this is the best part of our career. If we don't have the like, just get in because we were not poor. We we're not poor in the village. We fit each other to a map. Oh my god, Akron is so hot. <laughs> I wonder what that finger is used for. I bet she used it on Black Swan. <gasps> is that a Honkai reference? Oh, she's just a Kiana speed. If a nuclear bomb were. Bro, Mina just needs to jerk off, bro. I'll say it. Like, homegirl home girl needs to jerk off before they stream. Because bro is too horny every single time they're on the internet. Okay, and that's what happens when you give all these motherfuckers, like, a VTuber guys, and they have a non-amenity, and they say, okay, let me just be a freak, bro. Mina is more Cooper than Tectone? Hell no. So pretend to be. I'm the only motherfucker who should be praised for how hard I come, Okay. Because I'm a freak. This shit is called a mental illness when it comes to me. All these other motherfuckers are pretenders. I am the real sick human being. Drop on my specific location, it would be terrible, and I would just cease to exist from this planet. But that is not the case when you have Agron as your wife and bodyguard. She <laughs> would literally slice that bomb like it's her average day going to the bingo center. But what you didn't realize is that she's so powerful that she ended up slicing you as well with the bomb, so it didn't even matter. My sparkly 
I'll be real, man. I wanted to watch Braxophone, but some dude told me bro was creepy as fuck because he said he enjoyed his content. I'm not gonna lie, man. I haven't been able to watch Brax ever again, to be honest. Specifically, imperatively, engineeringly tuned to be able to go three turns in one cycle. Very nuclear sparkle, if I do say so myself. Now, if you don't know- Alright, let me just make one thing very clear. Mr. Pokey coined genuinely. Nuclear is my thing. Okay? I want to make that very clear. Before bro tries to take my shit again, nuclear is my thing. And he himself has admitted that. Okay? So before we give Pokey my nuclear tag, yo, you better fucking watch yourself, bro. Okay? Otherwise, otherwise me and Pokey are about to have some nuclear father-son beef. Dude, dude, dude. When me and Mr. Pokey meet up in real life and bro comes over, man, and we get to live together, when we get to go hiking together, that is going to be nuclear content, man. I actually cannot wait. Oh, to speed tune. I made a video in the past that you can tune into where I explain in details on how speed tuning works and what is needed to reach the threshold. Hello, trailblazers. Welcome back to your daily dose of failure. Today, as you can see, I'm currently homeless after I made that ruined May video. <laughs> she sued me and I lost my current property. And also It'd be like that, man. Video, my child, Jimmy Tonga. I went to a court battle against that autistic bitch. <laughs> and the only reason I lost was because everyone on the courtroom had a working little neutron on their pan. Yep. And it's activated when she started. Why isn't talking. he in the sewers yet? Hey, Lucky Stroker. Thanks for the five months. You voice acted in this game? Yes. You know what? I need to be specific with my stream titles. But yes, I voiced this fellow right here. Can you give us an example? Time for the master stroke. <laughs> Conflict is pitiless. Radiant spirit, heed my word. Show no mercy. Okay, yo, voice actors, we fucking get it, bro. You can talk. We get it. You have the ability to talk. It doesn't mean you gotta do it over and over and over again, man. I can do that shit too, bro. Holy fuck. Help me, Mr. Dunder. Before we actually begin, I have to sell the stream for as long as I can, so I have to go back to this domain and find for better accurate piece. And if I get a decent piece, I will then proceed to ask some sub donation to solve even more before willing the piece will gender into a mediocre piece because I have the shittiest luck of all on Starbucks. Because I keep cursing the other YouTuber with the curse of Pokey, truly the biggest nuclear drama of all time. Hey, hey, hey. Bro, how does Mr. Pokey think he doesn't cause drama when he goes into other streamers' chats and says, Curse of Bailu and praise on their downfall. I'm going to keep it a buck, guys. I'm going to keep it a stack. I'm going to keep it 99 because I lie a lot. I think Mr. Pokey causes more drama than me. Thoughts? Thoughts? What do we think? You know, I mean, we might as well start drawing with Mr. Drama. Low key. He got banned on different channels. True, man. True. You're a liar? Nah, well, I mean, you know. Uh, I feel like bro just be causing problems. I feel like I feel like I might have to daddy up on him, low key. Low key. Yeah, but you're white. Yeah, that's true. Hey, if you think I'm losing this, you better spend some butter on your bottle. I have not lost a single 50-50 in my life. What did I say? Yeah, I'm just not pulling for. I'll be real. I would make a joke about box news content, but I don't watch. <clears throat> Yeah, I don't know, man. Is, is that what he's like? Who knows? For her, man. She's just so cringy. Honestly, she's just a little edgelord. Oh, no. Oh, no, 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 no. Fuck, man. She's just a little tadpole, right, guys? Come on, man. Hey, buddy. She's a little tadpole, that's for sure. <laughs> Before we actually be... <laughs> Dude, I'll be, I'll, I'll be real, man. I think M-Tash is so fucking funny. When he calls shit Sussy Baka... When he, when he talks about characters being hot, like, that shit is fucking diabolically hilarious to me, bro. I, I know other people think that he's, like, cringy and white. Ugh, God. But, like, bro, dude, when he goes a little sussy mode, a little sexy mode, slice and dice. I feel like m is, like, low-key sleeper build for comedians. Begin. I have to stall the stream for as long as I can, so I have to go back to this domain and farm for better icon and And if I get the decent bit, I will then proceed to ask some sub donation to stall even more before rolling the piece, which will then turn into a mediocre piece because I have the shittiest luck of whole Honka Starbucks. Because I keep pressing the. Bro, why the fuck does Mr. Pokey speak so fast like a chicken, bro? Like, who the fuck is. Fu and what? Yo, great fucking video, man. 
Dude, little videos like this where we just take little jabs at every member of the community in a fun, lighthearted way. It's actually so fucking good. Yo, good link, boys. Yo, go subscribe to Krogs in them. Bro has 200 subs right now. We'll see if we can get up to over 1,000 by the time we react to this on Twitch and by the time we react to this or uh, when the video react goes up on YouTube. Love supporting smaller creators. Great fucking video, Krogs and them. And uh, yeah, man, appreciate the fun content. Actually super fucking fun. He's bouncing on my booty cheeks. I love the way he rides. I can feel him scream when he's coming deep inside. Wait, what did you just say? Hold on, I saw a link. Solo finally Ladies, speaks yeah. about the gotcha cast. Um, I don't think I want to react to this. To be honest. I feel like everything that happened with the gotcha cast is incredibly sad. And I don't want to use it for content. And there's a reason why I stopped making jokes about it. Because... I just feel really sad about it, man. And it really sucks how Solo remembers. The way that Solo remembers what happened on the Gotcha cast really makes me sad. Because he said that nobody tried to stop him, but I tried to stop him multiple times. You can see that in the VOD multiple times. And it's just, it's very disheartening because it affected him a lot more than I thought it would. Uh, to a lot of us, it was just in good fun, but there were some bad eggs, obviously, and uh, I just feel really sad about it because I, I like Solo quite a bit. I think he's a very sweet guy, and he had my back in a situation I don't think anybody else would have, and uh, it makes me genuinely, it makes me genuinely sad to think about how much that affected him. What happened? Oh, uh, well, Solo was just talking a little bit too much, and uh you know, nobody wants to go on the gotcha cast and just say, hey, shut the fuck up, right? But I kept cutting him off, and I kept cutting him off, and I kept cutting him off, but it just didn't click, and that just happens when, you know, there's different levels of social awareness, and it's just, you know, obviously it didn't, it was it was funny, you know, and it, it was funny to a lot of people, but there was a lot of people who got really upset about it, and uh, it's just kind of a shame. It, 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 really, it really bums me out because, uh, you know, I once again, I really like Solo as a content creator, and I wish it didn't make him as sad as it did. But, uh, yeah, there's a reason why I don't talk about it anymore. And uh, I, I hope you guys don't either because it, it's just a it's it, it is a funny situation, but it's also kind of sad. But, uh, yeah, I'd, I'd rather not react to that on stream, to be honest. Uh, let me do this real quick. It ain't that deep. That's what you'd think, but it actually goes much deeper than you possibly think. And that's the reason why I'm going to keep it at that. Uh, let's do... Praise? I'm the only motherfucker who should be praised for how... Yep. That's the end of this video. Hopefully I made your day just a little better, and I'll see you guys again very, very soon. Later! Hello everyone, this is your daily dose of internet. Many reptile breeders tickle the shell of an egg to see if it's ready to hatch. This method is only used to see if the baby is strong enough to break through the shell. Yeah, I got you. I got this on camera. This person bought a giant stuffed bear, jumped inside, and then went to Walmart. Wait, turn right. Turn right. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> now teach me how to doggy. <laughs> that is too cute. Please. I mean, seriously. <laughs> <laughs> this is 
is called the Sea Keeper, which is a gyro stabilizer to prevent the boat from rocking back and forth. At the bottom of the boat, multiple stabilizers are placed to shift the weight in the opposite direction of the natural motion. ...of every boater's experience. Because stabilizing the roll motion is stabilizing the worst motion of a boat that makes people sick and tired. This will come about, we think, the same way that safety and comfort have been built into automobiles. This is a Eurasian wryneck, and they have an interesting defense mechanism when they're captured. These birds make their body as skinny as possible and move like a snake to try and scare predators. This is called a self-starting siphon and is a simple shaped tube that can move liquid without using any sort of effort. Many people actually used to make tubes like this to steal gas from gas stations. Let's see what happens. Watch it closely. We lower it in, water level comes up to that first bend, over, down, around, and out. And it only just made it. In fact, it wouldn't have if that hill were too tall or the water level weren't right up to the edge there. This is a giant dragline excavator built by the Soviet Union. This incredibly massive machine doesn't have any wheels, but it moves by walking on its feet. During the Vietnam War, this is how the Viet Cong would hide from U.S. soldiers. <laughs> Not only was it difficult to find the enemy, but the Viet Cong also set up numerous booby traps. Uh, that's the end of this video. I really hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you guys again very, very soon. Later! Hello everyone, this is your Daily Dose of Internet. These are mobula rays, and this is a performance both males and females carry out to attract a mate. The higher the rays fly, the bigger the noise they make on the way down, which makes it easier to get noticed. What you just saw was the world's first standing double backflip on a hard surface. This is called a sun dog, and it's a very rare situation when it looks like there are three suns in the sky. It's created when sunlight reflects off of ice crystals floating in the air. This is called a Paternaster lift, and it's a continuously moving doorless elevator. They're not very helpful for elderly or disabled people, but do make it very easy to jump on. Supposedly, there are sensors that stop the lift if someone were to get their arm stuck between levels. These people in California blocked off traffic on a bridge so they could do some stunts. They were arrested a few minutes later.
This is an easy way to convert salt water into fresh water. By heating up the bottle filled with salt water, only fresh water evaporates and moves to the other bottle. So now it's been about 10 minutes since the water started boiling, and I think I have enough water in this bottle that I can give it a test. Absolutely pure. That's the end of this video. I really hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you guys again very, very soon. Later! Hello everyone, this is your Daily Dose of Internet. This person created a Stirling engine made out of soda cans and a candle. A Stirling engine is an engine that only needs a heat source to operate. Hey man, can you hurry up in here? I still got a shower. This bear was injured in a wildfire in California, and these veterinarians decided to use the skin from tilapia fish to heal the wounds. Medical professionals have discovered that the skin from tilapia fish actually speeds up the healing process for burn victims. Because she's so painful, and we try a new therapy. I put those, those bandages, the tilapia skin on her feet, and right after we got done and she woke up, she stood up for the first time and was able to walk. A company created a backpack that stays in place while your back moves up and down. This technology is... <laughs> yo, all right, we're back. Turn them off. Uh, yo, AFK okay, tone was fucking killing it. Hey, hard to chat for RoboTone. Hard to the chat for RoboTone. We're back, we're back, we're back, we're back. Bro, went to sleep. No, I'm going to go take a shit. Although, dude, throwing up daily dose of internet, hitting a nap, coming back sounds clutch as fuck. As been taking a tube of no People use consumables? No. Well, the only people that use consumables are mint pickers because they can't uh, that they can't play the game like a real winner by spending a lot of money. Mint picker. <laughs> What a insane phrase, bro. What a insane fucking phrase. WrestleMania at home? Doesn't it look so good, though? Oh, shit! Can't you see dead? It does! More! I love how I love how quick she picked on the added to the bit. That's just dude, she's such a good RP here. It's actually so fucking funny. Uh he raised one mil, by the way. Oh yeah, C Dog? Yeah, it's dope. Uh how you should respond to getting canceled. You can't go around apologizing for jokes. They're jokes. So I've got a plan. The next time I get canceled over a joke, the next time I upset people with a joke, I'm gonna come out on the day of the cancellation. I'm gonna make a statement, a public statement. I'm gonna say, I've rehearsed this, I'm gonna say. I'm sorry. <laughs> and the people that I've offended will say, you don't really mean that apology. And I'll say, so you're saying I could say something and not mean it. Now you're getting it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude. Dude, 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 dude. That is actually... One of the smartest things I've ever seen, man. Actually fucking genius, bro. It's the same photo. Yeah, I know. I didn't get it. Don't worry, man. You'll get it in a couple years. So, guys, the joke is when you get canceled for a joke, a.k.a. saying something you don't actually mean, people will get upset because they say that you mean it, so then you say, I'm sorry, and you don't mean it, they'll say you don't mean it, and then you'll let them know, oh, so I can say something and not mean it. That's the joke. That's Guys, that's the joke. The joke is, is that you can say things and not mean them, and people should be a little bit 
less ass hurt whenever anybody says anything on the plot. It's the joke. Yeah, the joke is is that you can say things and not mean them. I wonder what people are doing on the platform right now. Uh, so we got silent breath. Um, guys, I don't know if I want to play this. <laughs> what the fuck? What the fuck? Forcing. Why does this look so fun? Alright. Is it hard what he's doing? Why does it look so precise? Oh fuck, oh fuck. Oh my god. Is this the new getting over it? It is hard. Oh, dude, I can't imagine how frustrating it would be if you ever lose control of that ball. I'm trying to understand why he's sweating so much. It looks so straightforward. Oh, oh, ooh, ooh, um, ooh. Yeah, okay. Now he's got it. Everyone relax. I got this. Okay. As fans doing what? And uh, he's hey, still grinding that do? shit, bro. I think I told him I was. I think I held a gun up to him in the car. <laughs> I haven't seen S fan outside of his own house in over three months. I'm being dead ass. Wait, why is the block Minecraft? So I'm good. Bio playing Bio Cock is actually pretty based. I've also never played a single Bio Shack. I should probably play that. I should oh, probably play this. I thought this content was bannable. Dairy Queen Dilly Bars. Kung Fu Jesus and the Search for the Celestial Gold. Yeah, that sounds fucking awesome. Bro, is gaming back? Gaming legit has to be back. Okay. Sick. Bro lagged out. Okay, bro is quite simply just watching a movie. That's fucking insane. Uh, first, I'm going to go to the ball. The okay. universal ball over there. I'm going to take a picture. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to take a picture with you girls, but we, uh, but we have to cross, though. Okay. Earth Defense right, Force 6 it. is base as fuck. Actually, base as fuck. Stop. Fucking nuts. Classic subathon. Classic, classic, su su classic subathon. What's Canute doing? Lifting? Ooh, driving. That is very cool. Driving on the road. Wonder where he'll go. Yeah, I'm playing free to play. I don't have Fallout first. Free to play and Fallout 76? What type of fucking game is this bullshit? Huh? You had to specify that in a Fallout game? That's insane. Saying don't play Liza P. Good for him. Oh, my viewers are in his chat. Love Moxie. Oh. I don't know who this is. Dude, He's Games Done studio, Quick. Obviously. Dude, Games Done Quick became, was like, dude, Games Done Quick was so good. And they started pushing this fucking agenda every single fucking stream. I don't have any, I don't have any reason of like, like all the causes that they support are fine. But, like, the way that they do it feels so forced and so corporate, it's so fucking cringy. Dude, Meat like, Canyon's new Gamer Sub flavor is fucking fire. He put up this new shit called Raw Meat. Like, it tastes like uh, sour, modern, sour watermelon Jolly Ranchers. It sounds so fucking good. 
More Minecraft. What mm. the fuck do people do in Minecraft in 2024, bro? I actually don't get it. It's 2.0. I have no idea who that is. Here, this is just multiplicative damage and just multiplies. I fit one. Nerd speak. Uh, I mean, it's not like this is done bad. I don't know who this is. I got. I can make two. Oops. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's Hello, okay. Burnman. I work on it. There, she's fixed. It's the fix. Hello, no worries. Bro, V's voice Hello, is so Vernon. fucking hot. Hello, Victor. Oh, like, this God. whole model of voices Sorry, is so fucking disgusting. fun. I think this should be. Stardew sounds fun as fuck. What's Sunny doing? Of something rather than be either indifferent or negative. Yeah, I'll be real, man. I feel like everybody trying to get into the W community kind of just like listens to music and rap like non fucking stop and like just dances to that shit, which is like cool, I guess. But I was just noticing that I was like always wondering like what does like every pogger streamer do? What does every W streamer do? What does every autistic streamer do? You know, because it's like the W community is like Kai and like AMP and like your age and the poggers community, which is like, you know, the circle that like I'm well, I'm kind of like I don't really belong to anyone, I guess, because I'm like kind of a newer streamer because I've only been doing this for like four years, which is crazy how that means newer streamer. But like to be a, like an established streamer, you got to be doing this shit for at least six or seven or at least be like very heavily related to somebody else. So I guess maybe I'm in the poggers, I guess. But uh, I think I think I'm more in like the autistic era because I'm fucking retarded. Right, but then, like, uh, you know, the retarded streamers, they do shit where it's, like, they play old-ass games, which I think is probably the best era, to be honest. Like, I feel like Kaso and Jinx are probably the best thing to happen in this fucking platform, to be completely honest. Like, to be completely honest, I, I genuinely think Kaso and Jinx are just, like, fucking so goddamn good because they're, like, actual streamers. Whereas, like, a lot of, like, uh, streamers these days are going, like, more of the celebrity route, which I find is very cringe. Like, very overproducted, overproduced, like, game show over and over and over and over again. When in reality, I just, I like when, like, people can pull 40, 50,000 viewers of just playing a fucking video game, bro. Imagine that shit. Jinxie the crybaby? Shut the fuck up, bro. Fuck you on about, bro. Jinxie's actually so funny. Jinxie's probably one of the few streamers I can actually watch and not get bored these days. Like, if he was just playing a game I've never even watched before. He was just like playing, like, C's or some shit. It was so fucking fun. Very good streamer. And Queso's fat as fuck, and I love shitting on fat people. It is really good. The quality of the fish is really good. I always see Andy Milanakis, and I never hang out with him. It's a shame. And then Mewtwo King here stuck in his idle animation. I've, I've really missed out on a lot of these games, huh? I want to see the intro real quick. A sword fighter on an important mission. He's idling, oh, guys. So He's idling. Ain't this the siege game? Insane. Dude, it's so cool when you get to like see like a streamer's like whole cycle. Cause like you see you see dad at like 36, 37. But like bro's been doing this shit his whole life. You know? Nathan Barnett. He's a gaming whiz. I hope I'm like this. You know, one day. When I'm like 35, 36, shit, maybe even next year. Because I'll, I'll, no matter what happens, if I ever fall off dramatically, I'll never regret it. Because I've loved my time being a content creator so much. And yeah, sure, it probably caused me some negative quirks and gave me some mental illnesses, but I'll never regret it. It it, it, it has been genuinely so much fun. Oh, I'll just play an AFK Journey. We do need the purple dust. We really do. It's the same photo. It's not, I'm a visual learner. Okay. For me, I feel like I'm a super imaginative, like I take something and I just like have to like picture it in my mind. I actually feel bad for like, you know. Oh, dude, I saw I a clip of this chick it. the other day bending over and slapping her ass. That shit was well, so hot. I, mean, I feel really bad for, um, I feel really bad for people who still do VR chat. Cause like VR chat's like kind of like fading away, you know, cause VR chat at a point was like huge. It was like everything, but like now all the creators that are kind of like stuck in there. Like, I kind of feel like they're just kind of losing their opportunity to lose a normal life. And it's, like, really fucked up because a lot of people were able to escape. And I'll be real, man. Even me with a highly addictive personality, like, even I almost got stuck in there. Because I'll be real, man. When I was in VR chat, I was enjoying that shit more than my actual life. And then I realized it wasn't because my... It wasn't because VR chat was better. It was because I lacked the ability to improve my life. But then I just started removing people who I didn't like anymore. And I started cutting ties and my life became what I wanted it to be rather than hoping a video game would be an escape. 
because I find it very sad when your reality is something that you need to escape from. So I'd rather just spend time working on that rather than trying to uh, just constantly run away. And I consider VR tech kind of a form of just kind of running away and accepting your fate of being miserable forever. My opinion. Never mind, I love VR chat. Yeah, true. What happened to me with the RP nightclub scene of FF16? FF14? Yeah. You did the right thing? Oh, yeah, no, I agree. I agree. What do you think about this? What do you think about what? AFK Town? No, because I don't want people to know that I'm AFK, right? Like, the whole point of me having that little bit is to not let people know that I'm AFK, right? So, no, I don't want that. I've, I've really missed out on a lot of these games, huh? I want to see the intro real quick. Hi, Binky. Good morning. Well, this, I need to move out, and I don't really have the money to do that right now. Uh, okay, Pegs, let me ask you a question. How old are you? You say you need to move out. I know you're above 18. How old are you? Because you're saying a phrase right here where you're saying you need to move out. Why do you need to move out? Like, why do you why do you need to move out? If you're in a house that you feel safe in, that people are happy that you're there, why do you need to move out? You know, because I'll, I'll be real. I, I moved out when I was 16, right? But that was because my dad was in jail, right? And I had no family member to help me. If you have a loving family, eh, just live with a man. You don't really got to do anything. To be honest, that's just kind of how the world is these days, man. Like, nobody's moving out anymore. Like, it's fucking nobody. Oh, not really need, I think, but it's annoying to live with others. I think you will realize how truly blessed you are to have people that live with you, that treat you with respect, uh, because living alone is a very sad thing. It might be fun for like a week or so, but it gets very lonely. It gets very lonely very quickly. I, I love living with other people, to be honest. I, I don't guilt people who are ever having roommates. That's just kind of how the world works, man. I mean, the, the reality is, uh, you know, we're all kind of fucked together, guys, because the world is very impossible to sustain, and only the top 0.1% can actually make it out of their houses and actually get a house by themselves. Uh, it's very fucked up. You know, I mean, uh, for guys, and us guys know this more than anything, it's also very hard to get a girlfriend, because a lot of the times when you get a girlfriend, and this happens for girls as well, but it's also kind of scary getting a girlfriend, because generally when you get a girlfriend, it costs a lot of money, guys. It does. It does. Now, what is very nice is that when a guy works and a girl works, they make similar money, and then they get together. That's like an unstoppable, like, super combo. But that rarely ever happens. One person is generally lower yielding than the other, and it causes a lot of issues. It's very, very, very difficult because... uh the world, you just need so much fucking money. You need so goddamn much. It, it is actually insane. This might be a cultural difference, but is moving out when you're 18 a normal thing in America? It used to be. I mean, that was kind of the plan. I mean, the plan was, when I was a kid, was you turn 18, you move out, you go to college, you get a job, you have a career. By the time I turned 18, that was not viable. But that's what I was told when I was a kid. When I turned 18, that's what I was expected to do. That is not what happened. Uh, both my brothers defaulted to military lifestyles, and so they were able to do to get a house like that, but I refused to work in the military um, for many reasons. Uh, and one, because, well, they wouldn't let me in because I have too many mental illnesses, unfortunately. Uh, but two, I really don't like the idea of war. And uh, obviously, that's like a, that's a very pretty thing to say, but obviously, like, you know, I'm a big believer of the pen is mightier than the sword. However, you need the sword to enforce the pen, right? So I understand it's a it's a it's a thing that has to happen. It is a thing that has to happen. But I but I consider every single fight, every single war, a product of a miscommunication and a failure in uh, people's ability to talk to one another. But eh, it's just a it's a whole spiel. I don't want to get political or any of that shit. But uh, yeah, I just really don't like that shit. That's very unfortunate, and I, I feel like I can. I, I mean, I know this is going to sound cringe to say, but I feel like content creators have the ability to kind of uh, make ripple effects in how people can communicate and how people can be as a whole. And uh, I kind of like, uh, we don't need to get into this. We don't need to get into this. 
Uh, well, there's no need. Anyways, Teddy Roosevelt said, talk soft and carry a big stick. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, have a, I have a big old stick. Have you heard this banger? Let's see. Kids singing in it. Yeah, no, it's pretty fucking mid, bro. I'm not going to lie. Truly believes it's going to be anime of the year. I'm getting CC'd by shit I don't give a fuck about. I thought it was building up or something, but the drop was ass. Yeah, no, it's fucking terrible. All right. Boys, who's ready to lock in? So let me give you a little bit of lore on the video we're about to watch. I was chilling in my Discord, as I always do, discord.gg4 slash techtone, and this dude comes into my voice call, and he says, techtone, 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 do you allow me to talk about videos that people make? And I say, not if it's self-promotion, but anything else, yeah. And he says, well, I'm going to do a little bit of self-promotion. I say, okay, I'll hear you out. He said that he went on Reddit, and he kept on hearing things about the problems that I did, the problems that I caused, and whenever he would look into it or ask, what are they talking about, people would just say, well, look into it for yourself, and you'd understand about how I cause problems in every single community that I'm a part of. And I said, okay, so what'd you do? He looked into every single drama that he was aware of that I have, found all the source material, and he formed an opinion of me, and he wanted to make it very clear that he was not a fan of me. But he made this video anyways to kind of understand what his perspective was of being a lore master for Tectone lore. So now I'm going to watch this shit, and we're going to see how it goes. Uh, the video is made by Riker Watts, which I'm going to subscribe to. And uh, I guess if you're ever wondering all of the issues I've ever caused for every other community and all of these things that people say that I've done, well, I guess we're going to have a, somebody else's perspective on this with sources I've been told and he also says that he states all of the issues neutrally and then presents the outcome at the end of the video. So apparently the first 40 minutes is the explanation and the last 20 minutes is the outcome to everything. So uh, I guess just let's just watch this thing in its entirety and uh, feel free to subscribe to my channel and feel free to subscribe to Riker Watts. But this is kind of cool, man. I'm not going to lie. This is kind of cool. Let's go. What's happening right now to me is that people are taking my videos. You're a Genshin Knuckle Impact. Knuckle I look so ugly. How disgusting that is? Clipping them out of context. You know what you and Adolf Hitler said? I can't make that argument because I have a fucking brain. <laughs> Translating them incorrectly. Being How much that hurt me for that I 24 hours. hours. I never that did. That benefits anything. them more. Not capturing the sarcasm. And then they cover it up. Oh my god! This intro is crazy! The nuances of my speech pattern. Oh dude, you called God, you cryo amber. And now I'm being posted on Billy Billy as a arrogant. They should think of because I can't keep my mouth shut. Loud mouthed dipshit. I did it before I hate you. Because I blame the. Jesus Christ! It's just fucking unnecessary. Dude, dude, that first 50, 50 seconds is why I love my own content, man. Good God. I am a loud, outspoken, bald man. Actually fucking love it. When it comes to content creation, there's a multitude of different ways to present an idea or an opinion. Yeah. Whether or not it will be accepted by the wider audience is up for debate. True. As day in and day out, thousands of hours of content is uploaded to YouTube, spanning widely different topics. In the more niche creator spaces, you might find drama over things that generally do not make sense to get upset over. Others have more viable drama that ends up having real consequence. Yeah. For a certain gacha gaming creator, this is no exception. However- Listen man, you can say whatever you want about my content. You can say whatever you want about my streams, about who I am. There is one thing that you cannot deny. I cause so much crazy shit to happen by merely existing it is insane and it's very cool when my chat gets to sit here and actually really be a part of that experience and the reason why it makes me really happy is because i know that when i talk on twitch people listen because whenever my chat knows i'm about to monologue they take their hands off the keyboard and they're like okay what dumbass shit is he about to say? And then once I finish, chat will explode with either emotes or people saying that I should kill myself. 
It's like I speak, I see the chat stop moving, I finish. Oh, dude, I love that feeling, bro. It's so good. The severity of the drama he faced and the subsequent backlash over his tenure making videos on gacha games is interesting. With the okay, time correction, I have not been doing this for ten years. I've been doing this for five years. It spans and the intricacies of his drama and outcomes. It only stands to reason that one should go deep. However, with there being several dramas over several years, finding all the information can be difficult as a lot of it has been removed from- Oh, tenure! Tenure! Heard ten years! Okay, gotcha. One reason or another. Here, we're going to condense it all to the best of my ability. There's a saying that goes along the lines of, if you want to know somebody, walk a mile in their shoes. I wear size 15. John Good Robertson, luck. who we will now on refer to as his online alias, Tectone, was born in the USA. How does bro know my- how does bro know my whole name? Hey, on December 23rd of 1993. December 29th. Growing up, his childhood was fraught with family drama. True. In the years leading up to his adulthood, there were many aspirations that Tectone had, from being a professional wrestler yep, to acting and a half. in general. For anybody who doesn't know, I have a passion. Musical theater, two and a half. Okay. I did professional wrestling for a while until yep. I got injured. Yep. And I went to performance Started arts uh, in college, studied that for about two years, and yep. then I did the professional play. Yep. A big awesome. passion of mine until I took a uh, interactive Video game media theory. and graphic design course in which I realized, hey, YouTube, I yep. can do this. I dropped out two weeks before I was going to graduate just because I knew I was going to be a YouTuber. However, his career steered into making content shortly after taking courses on interactive media. Yep. While this is an insanely abridged version of his story, his history before the very first video he made can be summarized as he was born, grew up in a military household with several siblings, did not get along well with all of them, eventually- And you know what's crazy? You know what's crazy? So I've distanced myself from my family drastically, right? They're still getting into drama every single fucking day. My dad went on the Steak and Eggs podcast and he said some bullshit that some of my brothers didn't want getting out. And now they are very angry. <laughs> <laughs> because one, some of it wasn't true, and two, some of it was true, but they don't want to hear the consequences for their own actions. <laughs> it's so funny. And so I said, no, nah, I'm good. Gave them my take, and I said, hey, y'all deal with it. I, I prefer the family I've chosen versus the family I've been born with, me personally. So I I'm going to just chill with my friends. I don't need this bullshit anymore. You know how many issues my friend group has had? Zero. In three years, zero. He moved out. Somewhere in there, he began playing gacha games that led him down this path. Tectone's first video was of a mobile game known as Summoner's War, where he immediately, we can see, his desire for improvements yep. on a game that he clearly had a passion for. Uh, and I feel like some of the ideas My first video, man. The game could be pretty easily implemented. And also very beneficial for the community and also I love how insane my ego's been from minute one because from minute one I've been telling games, game developers how to run their games better than they do. I need to make my own game and put my money where my mouth is, man. I really do. So, you know. While well, games such as Summer's War brought him to homelessness due to the predatory practices of the game's pay-to-win <laughs> elements for PvP the main purpose of the game, Tectone bounced back and moved forward. Yes, sir. His most well-known drama that started was in Arcanites, but there is a lesser-known one that he was a part of in a game called Skylanders. So, all the games that I've ever played, Summoner's War, Skylanders, Aloon, Ulala, Idol Adventure, Sinnoh Alice, Seven Deadly Sins, Grand Cross, Arcanites, Genshin, Honkai Star Rail. I would probably say those are the nine games that I've covered over my five years of being a content creator. So I went to this new game and it was called Skylanders Ring of Heroes. And now here's the important thing. This is the only game in my entire channel that you cannot find me make any videos for, even though I made videos for that game for over half a year. I will say what happened with Skylanders Ring of Heroes is very sad, and I don't really ever talk about it. And I am curious if he talks about it in this video. Because the Skylanders Ring of Heroes shit was very, very, very dark. In Skylanders, a clan was exploiting a massive bug to Epic. defeat a difficult challenge to gain rewards leagues ahead of everyone else. Nobody else knew the glitch until one of my mods, and his name is Mateo. Mateo, are you here? You've been here every stream for like years. I wonder if Mateo is here right now. Is he here? Uh, no, he might not actually be here this stream, man. 
Let me know, uh, let me know if Mateo pops up in chat. Told me about their bug exploit. When yeah, so Mateo was originally an annoying piece of shit, and then he turned his back on his entire guild and, expo and, uh, and uh, exposed the exploit they were using to get ahead of this game, and they kicked him from the guild, and so I made him my mod to make up for it. Insane. Mateo stabbed Epic in the back and told me how they were doing it. There it is. I was like, are you fucking kidding me? Tectone, having his suspicions come true in the form of whistleblower within said clan, brought it to the attention of the community manager. After a quick Captain investigation Puffy. lasting only two weeks, the clan in question was summarily banned and disbanded. Yep. However, the backlash of Tectone voicing against their exploit initially caused this clan to harass and false report Tectone. Yep. She saw all these people trying to get me banned, and she reached out to me personally. And she said, Tectone, so sweet. this can't be true. You aren't exploiting bugs, are you? Why are we getting so many mass reports of you exploiting bugs? This was the first time I ever saw a company, like, treat their content creators with preferential treatment. And, uh... I'm not sure if they say what happens, but you're probably going to see why they don't do that anymore. The hatred was shifted to the community manager that led to her eventual firing. Yep. They stopped going after me, and they went after her instead. And unfortunately, she lost her job. Because with that many people complaining about your CM, the company was forced to move their hand. So the CM had my back and wouldn't ban me because she knew that I wasn't doing anything wrong. So this epic guild with the head of Discord server of over 400 people all put in false reports on her misactivity as a community manager, and they got her fired from the company, and I've never heard from her ever again. Really fucked up. Really, really, really fucked up shit. The history of this drama is short and uneventful, but the actual start of his controversies. From one game to the next, Tectone eventually made his way into the first documented drama that still follows him today. Arcanites? Arcanites! Arcanites! Love this game. Let the record be known. This was the first game that I've ever had drama with another content creator. I'm putting Dreamy's name as a content creator in quotations uh, because they're dog shit at their job. And I hope they get upset by me saying that because I don't care. Arc Knights. In a game surrounded by PvE instead of PvP, you might find it out of place to find anyone fighting over anything. I know, right? However, the spat arose between Tectone and another content creator known as Dreamy. Yep. Dreamy arose when Tectone came with the opinion that a character... She changed her name in YouTube after Mr. Pokedrama? No shot. Wait, what's their name on YouTube now? Dream the OG retard? True. Wait, what did they change their name to? Lysandra? Nah, link it. Link it, link it, link it. There's no shot. There's no shot they changed their whole name after they got called out. <laughs> Are you kidding? They changed their whole name because they know they got called out for being a piece of shit? That's insane. Seeley has to be the most future. That is insane, bro. This motherfucker changed their whole branding because they're trying to be avoided being known as the piece of shit. That is wild, bro. Well, well, well. Found ya. Hey, good shit, chat. Found ya. Insane. Probably. Bro, this bitch caused me so many issues for just having the ego the size of a fucking planet. Yeah, and here's the difference. I have an ego because I deserve it. I'm beautiful. I'm ha <laughs> I need to relax. I need to relax. Yeah, insane. Insane. ...was not as good as displayed, since every showcase had yep. several supports buffing her damage. While a valid criticism of the showcase, Dreamy disagreed and felt the need to debunk the claims that Province was bad. This showcase places said character against a boss, dropping a fifth of their HP and pitting them against the speed of another character with buffers to showcase yep. the comparison. Regardless of the outcome, Tectone was still in disagreement. You can make any unit in the game look fucking crazy if you pair them with every buffer in the game. Let's see what Chen is going to do in order to...
Doesn't this feel familiar from the drama we had today where another content creator said that you that Zila's good and then used a Zila with a 179 speed Pela with a 175 speed Hanabi with 200% crit damage and a 151% speed or 151 speed Bronya with 200% crit damage on their Zila and said Zila's not bad, you're bad. Just use E2 Sparkle, hee <laughs> hee. Oh my God, insane. This is problem. Oh, hit him for, you know, about, what, five, 6,000 damage right there? But instead, in a time scenario, we're just gonna go ahead and take away Province's only downside, and that is dealing with units that are above 80%. So Dreamy did a thing, a video, for why they said a character that I said was bad wasn't bad and that I was bad. And then they proceeded to use that character with, I shit you not, zero exaggeration, every support buffer in the whole game. And then took another character called Shen and instantly nuked the boss to below 80%. Because once the boss is below 80%, then Province does additional damage to the boss and said, well, you see, I was right. No, you fucking weren't. Anybody could have been good if you used every single buff on him in the game. Only downside, Sorry, Lasara now. Dealing with units that are above 80%. Ultimately, Insane. this was just two opinions on what is effective and what isn't. Yeah, and my opinion was correct and they were fucking stupid. What are we proving here? Because in my opinion, did this video not just prove my exact fucking point? It did. Any unit can be a fucking boss killer if yep. you pair them with every unit in the fucking game. And dude, people did not like that take either. Because then I showcased that Spectre could be a boss killer as well. Like I said, like the company wanted me to say, by the way. The company also paid me to say that. Because if you look up Ark Knight's ads, you'll hear my famous line, any unit can be a boss killer because Ark Knights love that and made them feel like the community would have more freedom with their accounts. People hated that fucking take. They hated the take that their company themselves told me to say. That's why they don't realize how fucking stupid they are. Actually insane. It turned into a war between communities of content creators under the same game. Small, but the fire stoked by a mere disagreement. However, unsurprisingly, the entire drama quelled when the two concluded their- Yeah, we had two sides. We had the people that weren't stupid and the people who were fucking stupid. Uh, thankfully, the people who weren't stupid won this one. Very rare. Disagreements, ending with even the direct promotion of Dreamy's channel and a thank you from Dreamy. We have Province's Savior, Yep. Dreamy. Now, a lot of y'all know Dream and I had a disagreement about three or four months ago about how I think Province is dog shit, yep. but she loves Province. And people thought that Dreamy and I had beef over this shit. It's like, Doc, you, you understand that two people on the internet can have a disagreement about a fucking unit in a video game. I look so good here. To this day, people believe this specific instance of drama to be irrefutable proof of Tectone's future behavior. It was insane because me and Dreamy, we hashed it out. And they told me we were good. And then, oh man, the Jin Jinx and Tudor drama reared its ugly head. And I saw them weigh in on their comments. Them saying, I had issues with Tecto too. He gaslighted me. Oh my God. I hope they get into all this shit, but it'd be very hard. I feel like the hardest drama to cover is probably the Jin Jinx and Tudor drama because that involved so many obscure live streams, even on Tudor's private channel himself, that I went on multiple times. And it's a shame because the Jin Jinx and Tudor drama started very small, but then it got so large so quickly. And uh, to be able to understand all of the nuances that went on between them, I want to make one thing very clear. Um, it wasn't so much an issue with Tudor that I had. Uh, it was more so an issue with Jin Jinx because they were essentially blaming me for their poor mental state, which I just thought was fucking bullshit. Uh, especially because that whole issue started because I was attempting to help them. And then they said that I like forced them at gunpoint to go on to their live stream, which to me does not sound very good to tell your fucking audience, in my personal opinion. But that whole thing is so hard to encapsulate. A disagreement on an overpriced tower defense mobile game made to fish dollars from the wallets of the weak-willed. In the end, nobody talks about Province anymore and still raves about Tectone's incorrigible behavior. Yep. From here, Tectone managed to remain drama-free for quite some time. Yes, I did. Until a certain breath came from the wilds. Right. I want to make thing, one thing perfectly clear. I stay drama-free when there's no drama. I never create drama. I merely react to it. And everybody knows that if they see my videos. I'm not, because once again, let me tell you why. And I'll tell you why very clearly why I don't start drama. Because my channel does not create original content. I'm just a reactor. Case in point. We all know it. 
I'm a lazy motherfucker. You think I got time to make drama? Hell no, bro. I don't make original content. I just react to other people's shit. It's way easier. Riding the tailwinds of a success linked to its own. I'm not going to go into the details of what Genshin Impact is. It's pretty obvious what it is. Bringing up drama does start drama. No, it doesn't. It continues it. And I can't continue something that doesn't exist. <laughs> you can't eat a burger that's not in front of you, man. If I were to eat and there was nothing there, can't do nothing. It's another gacha game, but it was probably, and probably will remain to be, the most popular gacha game in the space. Genshin Impact, this home of the Men Pickers. Oh, my favorite creator, slime! Of Enviosity. Enviosity is a free-to-play Genshin Impact streamer and holds the title with pride. It is crazy how deranged of a human being Enviosity is the more you look into him. Because when you first see him, he seems like such a wholesome guy. And then, like, if you sit through a whole stream, or if you go through his history, the guy is fucking nuts. Straight up fucking nuts. Tectone, to many people's knowledge, is the complete opposite. A term coined by the industry as a terminology to quantify large spenders, yep. now fondly used as both insult and ego stroking. Wait. It was insane how much Enviasi would shit on people for being a whale, but then if you were to shit on people for being free to play, bro would just cry on stream. Actually nuts. Yo, Riker! What up, man? We're watching your video, bro. Thank you for making this. I'm excited. It's looking good so far. There's plenty of little things that happened between Enviosity and Tectone. Ultimately, their personalities clashed, and Tectone was told that he was in the wrong by another creator by the name of Atsu. So it's pretty much how it would go. Enviosity would shit-talk me. I would say, that's fine, it is what it is. I would shit-talk him at the same level, and he would cry and call me a bully. And then because he was the one to get upset first, everybody would take his side. Because that's how it goes. On the internet, whoever cries first is the victim. MVP was happening. And I was like, I'm sure I can fix this. I'm sure I can help mediate this. And I thought I did. Yeah, man. The smaller content creator just really wanted to fix the issues between the two largest content creators in Genshin Impact with no secondary goal whatsoever. Surely he was doing it out of the kindness of his heart because he's such a wholesome little gumdrop. A creator that we will go into more detail on later. Drama stemming from situations such as Tectone offering Envy a reward for completing Spiral Abyss as an incentive, where Envy was furious towards Tectone on stream about it, to a situation where Tectone offhandedly said, nah bro, fuck anybody who likes Hollow Knight, shit game, coincidentally, while Envy was playing it. But so did Tectone at one point, so fuck Tectone too. <laughs> he has the context of me playing Hollow Knight! That's insane, bro. That's insane. Bro actually brought the context. That is fucking nuts. Bro, people don't know that Hollow Knight's one of my favorite games. It is so fucking good, bro. Every single dev live show, I'm like, yo, Silk Song win. Silk Song win. Silk Song win. Good homework, man. I will say, I, I know for a fact there is no way to properly understand the Jin Jinx tuner one. Nobody can actually get the full context of that, but every other drama can be very easily explained with context. So I am curious how we tackled that. Unless he like downloaded deleted VODs. Get off me! Ah! I'll miss old Tectone, bro. He, dude, old Tectone was wild. Straight up, old Tectone would just say shit non-fucking stop to try to piss people off. Now I say anything and people just get pissed off. Like, I was a genuine shit disturber, bro. God, man, I, dude, 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 dude. And, like, content creation back then was, like, the best part of my life. So whenever I was streaming, I was happy. But, like, these days, like, I love content creation, but I also love hanging with my friend group. But, like, back then to me, it was, like, I want to be the best content creator I possibly can, man. Fuck, old, old, old Tecto was also, I'm not gonna lie, old Tecto was a piece of shit and an asshole. Not gonna lie. I'm so different, guys. Tectone's community telling Envy to pull for Rosario on stream, causing him to have a mental breakdown. Yeah, my heart can't take any more chat. I'm at, I'm, my heart rate, I, I can't, I can't. My heart rate's at 152 for fuck's sake. I can't take any more of this shit. I know you guys keep fucking pressuring me and telling me Envy, keep going. Please, keep fucking going. Go, get Rosario. And there's gonna be some fucking toxic people later today. They're gonna be all like, oh, imagine tuning in to watch Envy and he didn't get the Rosaria. Imagine how fucked up that is. Well, welcome here. We'll get Rosaria for you. You know, toxic people fucking saying shit, whatever. Chat, I just can't. I can't. I can't. While there is no direct proof. 
bro had a mental breakdown on stream because people said, hey man, pull for Rosaria. You want me to cater to that? Bro had a temper tantrum on stream because somebody said, hey, it would be cool if you got the new four star. People wanted me to be responsible for that guy's emotions. That is fucking nuts. That any of the people in chat that were part of this stream were from Tectone stream, it's not unlikely. There are more occasions, but it's difficult to find any evidence or video of it happening, but you get the idea. Yeah, people said they were from my channel. They had no proof that they were, but that's what they said. And it was crazy how every single issue that happened in the community, they would say, Oh, it's tech. It's got to be Tectone's community. What the fuck are these people on about, man? <clears throat> like, bro, bro, bro. My chat does not listen to me. At all. Yo, chat, type seven. <sighs> hey, wait a minute. Hey, you guys are pretty obedient. <clears throat> Maybe I'll give you guys a JOI countdown later. This drama caused Tectone's community and Envy's to clash, on top of both creators themselves. Enviosity stresses- My biggest issue as well with my chat is, my chat does not use other platforms. So like, so many other platforms like Twitter and Reddit completely body me because all the soy boys do that shit, but my chat just, just does not use those fucking platforms. At all. They use those platforms zero. Just getting to his head, blaming Tectone as a source, and even causing Asian guy streams to intervene. This intervention by Atsu made Tectone to be the villain in this drama, pushing him to seek help, which led him to the interview with Healthy Gamer GG. This was dude. When Gar you go back and you watch this interview, and you realize how many wrong misconceptions I've had planted in my mind from other Genshin Impact content creators telling me that I was Satan, it's actually a very sad interview to watch. Doctor K, a detail we will get into later. Eventually, Tectone ends up apologizing to Enviosity directly, <laughs> which I should not have. I shouldn't have, I was deceived by thing that he changed and he just didn't. Zero negative feelings towards you whatsoever. And you know what's crazy? I apologized to Enviosity twice at length, publicly and privately. He never returned the favor with anything other than a, I'm sorry. Okay, yeah, my bad. Insane. This shit was so uncomfortable to watch. And I am genuinely sorry that this had to happen to us. And I also am sorry for letting misconception after misconception get in. In case anybody doesn't know, this is me attempting to be the bigger man. My head and pretty much ruined your reputation for me, at least temporary. That went away a little bit ago, but even though it was temporary, I'm sorry that ever happened. And once again, I'm not asking for your forgiveness, but I do want to let you know that in, in my eyes that you're, you're great. Me having to apologize for somebody else's oversensitivity is something I will never do again. But this is what happens when everybody blew up at the same time. Even I made mistakes quite frequently, right? I should have never apologized for some guy's main personality trait being a fucking bitch. That is not my problem. That is not my fault. That is his own shit he needs to deal with. That is not my job. And I apologize that this should happen. That ass. The end result. Old Techie was weak, man. Coming on to tech he was weak. Anyway and doing so well to even win against the other creators. It seemed as if the whole anxiety fueled drama had reached its conclusion, and the two would be okay in the same gaming community. Envy is our winner, making it to question 22, the first ever Genshin Guesser Champion. My God! Envy, how are you feeling, homie? I'm still hungry. But that shit pissed me off. <laughs> It pissed me off, bro. I ain't even gonna lie, man. I ain't even gonna lie. That shit pissed me the fuck off. Tectone, being Tectone, had to jokingly make a remark about Envy. And it I know. Imagine that. Tectone being Tectone, I had to make a joke for somebody who I was attempting to be friends with. And that's the problem, man, is when you have a homie who can't handle jokes, good God, get him the fuck out of your life. Dissolved fairly quickly after. Tectone opened his mouth. A Reddit post from three years ago seems to go into further detail. However, some of the clips and some of the videos regarding this drama are sparse and few and far between. Yep. So any information that could be for this is mostly lost. Well, the drama with Envy ended here, and I read both all creators that. basically staying away from one another, the next one came rather quickly. Ooh. This one's a rough one.
This one is a rough one because this happened so many times where we resolved it. They brought it back up. They resolved it. I brought it back up. We resolved it. They brought it back up. Then they quit. When they quit, I was being blamed for their quitting. Oh man, that caused me so many fucking issues. When they quit and they said it was because of me, no, it's not. Okay? If you can't handle internet beef, then you shouldn't be a content creator to begin with. Straight, It's something that's expected in the field, man. Straight up. You, you can't say I quit and it's this guy's whole fault. Fucking insane. Actually insane. Over, over Zhongli meta takes is nuts. We all collectively know the outcome of this one, Zhongli, and subsequently Geo. Didn't you say Zhongli was better with HP? Yeah, I did, which was a, was a correct take. Got a massive buff overall, making him one of the top Spiral Abyss usages to date and the best comfort pick for any user in the game. However, before the changes went in, there was an opinion. This opinion was opposite of the verbal masses. Tectone, one Was there a drama where you were actually wrong for once? Was there a drama where I was wrong? Yes. Uh, the me versus gotcha smack. I was wrong a hundred percent because I didn't understand homie's joke. And we hashed that shit out very quickly. Um, me and the Kai Senat drama was wrong because I, my sarcasm was pretty bad. When I look on it, I was way too deadpan and nobody could have understood that was a joke except for me. Um, But as far as gotcha drama goes, nah, I was pretty spot on. M Tash, nah, we were both shitty to each other. That that was that should have happened. Me and M Tash were very shitty to each other. Uh, over that, no, one hundred percent. We were both in the wrong. I'm trying to think one where I was one hundred percent incorrect. You were right about Kai, yeah, but I still said it mean. You know, I still think Kai's a good dude. Does Kai even know who you are? Yeah. One of the biggest content creators for Genshin at the time toted the counterculture opinion that Zhongli was fine on release. A bit more healing. That is literally it. He is one of the best C05 stars, in my opinion, in the whole goddamn game. And this is very important to context because at the time of release where I had every single character, all we had was Tartalia, Zhongli, Klee, Chi Chi, Mona, Deluke, Venti, Jean. Like, when Zhong Li came out and his shield was that busted, we didn't have Diona yet. We did, we did not have Diona yet at all. And so he was very good when he first came out. Now, he's fucking nuts now, but now he's also bad because Geo's terrible. I'm yeah, we didn't have Albedo either. I'm going to take a hard stance right now. If you are running Zhong Li as your main damage dealer, congrats. You can do whatever you want. Me was saying that was, you can run Zhang Li as a main DPS, but you're an idiot. You can do whatever you want, but you're an idiot. Because Zhang Li was always meant to be a supporter, a supporter CCer. Another content creator, a duo actually, sharing the channel by the name Jinjinx and Tuner, yep. went on to make a video about the frame data and power level of Zhang Li compared to the other five-star units at the time. And I will admit, they did such a fucking shit job at this. <laughs> I'm gonna be real. They didn't even test Zhongli at max. They didn't even test HP percent relics. You got to understand. You got to understand why that shit pissed me off. Because they said he was shit. They never tried the HP percent build. They never tried him at max level. You know, I don't know what you want me to say, man. And deemed him underwhelming overall. With the extensive testing that Jin, Jinx, and Tuner did on the strength of Zhongli, the community dubbed it as the irrefutable proof on why Zhongli needed the buff, or any, in the first place. Yeah, nah, that's cap. Tectone's community, knowing Tectone's obnoxious behavior, pushed Tectone into looking at Jin, Jinx, and Tuner's- ah, Obnoxious, free thinker, passionate, ah, who's to say? This video on Zhongli. This led to Tectone talking with Tuner, a Genshin player who was a little late to the start of the game, but not bad by any stretch. And I would also say the casual community probably makes up for more than 90% of the community, I feel like a hardcore is yep. Oh, no, no, I wouldn't say that uh, in any any game, the casual community yeah. will make up a super majority 100%. of any game. Yeah, yeah. Uh, now, I have to yeah. assume the kind of people that are interested in looking up videos are maybe a little bit more geared towards that more competitive because they're learning on bettering themselves. But, yeah, I agree. The conversation they had was rather civil. And even though technically- so I wouldn't say it was civil. 
one of the reasons why I hated this conversation so much, uh, and this is something that a lot of people who aren't CCs don't get, is that there's one thing, this is back then. Me now, way different. Me now, way different, right? But back then, the big issue that I had with Tuner was that he talked so fucking slow. And the way that he talked and how slow it was was killing my fucking viewer count, right? And he kept on yapping about shit that just didn't need to be said at the length that it was. And when it was killing my viewer count, I really just wanted to get the fuck out of the stream because I said everything that I needed to say in like five, 10 minutes. Bro was yapping for like over an hour. Like if you go back through the VOD from my memory, if you go back to the VOD, the amount of time that I spend talking and attempting to joke and entertain versus just tuner info dumping, there's nothing wrong with that now. But for me, I needed all of my streams to pop off because I was crazily in debt. This is nothing that tuner had control over. But one of the things that really pissed me off was just like, God damn, bro, just have your points and get them out. Because I yapped my shit in five minutes. He was yapping for like an hour about his points, bro. Shit took forever. Like, bro was talking in point two speed. He had dubious intentions initially. He failed to follow through with them and just had a straight conversation with Tuner. If there's one thing I want your chat to take away, um, mm -hmm. is that just don't don't harass anybody, right? Because like everybody's True. truth is their own truth. You know, you have different resources and availabilities to me. You might have had a set on day one. You might have had like the perfect set to make him broken on day one. We didn't have those sets. Uh, I would also like to clarify the word, or the use of the word harassing is very different to a Genshin Impact player versus a normal human being. Harassing to someone in the real world is going up to them, pushing them down, being racist, being sexist, being transphobic, punching them in the face. Harassment to a Genshin Impact player was, oh, this guy disagrees with my opinion and now I'm going to cry. So that's the big difference. So our initial impression was that maybe he was weak, but you you had your HPs because you said you're keeping your HP scaling. You're like, holy shit. Yeah, dude, just throw HP on this guy. Let's do it. And there you go, you know? This was him admitting that he just didn't try the HP build, which to me seems very obvious when a guy's entire kit has HP percent scaling on every single ability. So just, what, what am I supposed to think as a casual creator? When somebody doesn't test HP scaling on the guy with only HP scaling. From the perspective of a whale to a non-whale, all about Zhang Li's capabilities. Tutor he only had it on alt and shield. So every ability. So what you're saying is every ability. So you're saying exactly what I said. Every ability. I didn't say everything. Because that would have been his auto attack. But I didn't say that. I said on every ability. The fuck are you on about, bro? Put the HP set on the HP character. Look plainly and respectfully to Tectone. And in kind, so did Tectone to Tuner. It was rather constructive, and the stream held no ill will once all was said and done. Straight up, even though I was annoyed with how the conversation went, I thought we were all good. I thought we hashed it out. And then they left this comment that pissed me the fuck off. It seemed as if the entirety of the situation was overblown and taken to the worst. Yeah. I really want to say, yeah, hold on. I really want to say, uh, assuming you're listening right now, um, I really do appreciate what? that you took the time to want to talk instead of, of just talk shit. Of course. Um, Straight up. It really I know, means bitch. a lot to me to know that yeah. there are other content creators and other people who care to have a conversation. And he even he even thanked me for that conversation. People don't remember that, that this conversation that they later said that I forced them into, they thanked me for doing it at the end of their stream. And I even gifted them subs like so many people forget that shit. However, a comment left on the upload of Tuner and Tectone's discussion was read. Was this the comment? Okay, harassment from Tectone's channel is just such an insane thing to say. Bringing up viewer count makes it so weird when you're just talking about the content of what each other's saying.
The, okay, again, I think the coverage in Almany landed somewhere in the middle with both sides seeing points, but the fact is, Tuner invited a complete stranger into his workspace who was known to be boisterous and had a proverbial gun pointed at his head. What the fuck is that weird-ass comment? Like, am I nuts? Or, like, that makes it seem like I bullied my way onto his stream, harassed him with my argument, and forced him to do as I say. When it was literally like a, hey, man, do you want to talk? Are you sure? Okay, when are you free? Okay, let's talk. We talk. He thanks me. I get them subs. He thanks me again. And then they leave this fucking pussy-ass fucking passive-aggressive comment? Like, that shit was so weird, bro. If this comment never happened, all that shit would have been completely fine. But this comment is so weird. And painting a completely normal conversation as, he had a proverbial gun to my head. What the fuck is that, bro? And let me know if I'm crazy here. Because to me, this shit is weird as fuck. But like, I don't know how you go from thanking me on stream, saying that you want to talk, talking, being grateful, giving thanks, and then leave a comment saying, I never wanted to be there. He forced me there over the, the, the over like, with, with, a, with a gun to my head. Like, that shit's so two-faced. Read by Tectone, and his perception on them changed. So, so I went into this conversation with this guy. Did he write that or did a mod write that? Uh, that's, that's a comment from over four years ago. YouTube did not have mods back then. Mods can't just leave a comment for you. And I completely blew him out of the fucking water in like three sentences and then the dude rambled for like 45 minutes. I still hear about people talking about how I shouldn't have done that because we're on like two completely different social planes, okay? So what I mean by this comment here is, is that I get all of my points out defending my position in three minutes and then he spends like an hour and 20 rambling about his. I want to make that very clear. This is a, I present my argument, we get done with it. I was pissed off because he took so fucking long to talk. Okay. So anywho, because I absolutely fucking crushed this dude, he took the entire VOD, yeah. uploaded it to YouTube. Because in my opinion, if you get your points out very quicker and concisely, it's not really a good look when you have to yap for hours and hours and hours. Because this is back in the meta, and then the internet believes this to be true, which is, uh, if I talk longer, if I type longer, that makes me more correct. And that shit just pisses me the fuck off. It's just say what you need to say and move on and said that I was attacking him in the video. True. Weird as shit. And meanwhile, the only reason why I brought him on was because he was getting so much hate for his Which opinion, he was. I wanted to give him a bigger platform to express his point of view. Because this was back in the day where you say, Zhongli needs a buff. Everybody who spent money on it thinks, oh, character bad. Fuck you, Tuner. Fuck you, Tuner. And then they say it's my fault because my community was harassing him. No, if you shit talk a character in Genshin Impact, you get shit every single fucking time. From day one to day now, you know that's the truth. If you shit talk a character in a gacha game, people will hate you. Tell me when I'm telling lies. Not understanding that Jinjinx and Tuner, more specifically Tuner in this case, weren't aware of Tectone in the first place since they kept to themselves. The comment left is probably- To be fair, I was also not aware of Jinjinx and Tuner. I just got linked his video in my chat. ...deleted, and the only evidence of his existence is within Jinjinx's quitting video itself. The part of the comment Tectone was probably upset about was, yep. quote, Tuner invited a- Yes, I was very upset over this comment. I was ve Still am. <laughs> this guy's smart. This guy knows I was very angry about this comment. Complete stranger into his workspace, who was known to be boisterous and had a proverbial gun pointed to his head. Unquote. Which likely is the reason Tectone stated that he was made out to look like the villain. Weird as shit. Two different perspectives clashing. And instead they tried to paint me as a fucking villain, which was oh, fantastic. It was great. Weird as shit. And then on that day forth, I just said, oh, well, if people are kicked down, fuck them. I just won't try to help. Tech. The backlash True. that Jinjinx and Tuner faced over Tectone's reaction got to Jinjinx, where he ended up taking a break from the channel and subsequently realizing that content creation on YouTube was both unsustainable and made him unhappy. There you go. Which led to him quitting altogether. You're welcome. In the video of him quitting, he brings up- <laughs> Okay, that's not on me, bro. Okay, if you're gonna quit your job over two guys talking meta, you know, <laughs> that's not on me. <laughs> That is not on me, bro. Like, anybody with common sense would agree, that shit is not me, bro. That, that is not on me.
of the drama that happened. He thought that after that discussion was done, the drama was over, that was it. But somehow it managed to creep its way back in again a few months later. When we uploaded the VOD of that discussion to our YouTube channel, we also put out a comment that explained the situation that happened and gave context to the entire discussion. Yeah, the context was that I was a big bad meanie and you hated every second of it. Yeah, dude. What an innocent action. Oh, all we did was upload the VOD and provide context that you were fucking harassing us. Why did you get upset? <laughs> yeah, I fucking wonder, dude. Holy downplaying. Well, Tectone apparently took that comment as us shit talking him. In his eyes. How else would you take that? Guy invites a dude who's known to be an asshole and forces him to communicate with us. How, how else are you supposed to take that comment? Is our attempts to provide context and tell people exactly what the situation was and that he ambushed us was us throwing shade at him. Y'all, y'all want to razz on me for that shit. Call me a crybaby. Yet after he- Wait, I am before Tectone tries to copyright claim us for using clips from a stream. Uh, so I will go on record. I have never copyright claimed another piece of content in my entire existence as a content creator. Do you want to know why? Because I don't know how to. So anybody ever making that claim is full of shit. Soul made that claim. Jin Jinx and Tuna made that claim. I never did. Not a single time. And if I did, prove it. Prove it that you got a copyright claim that says sent by Tectone. You will not have that because it does not exist because I've never done it. That's the truth. Posted that video. He put out like public comments about talking how I was a fucking bully to him. Like even on that video. Yep. And was even throwing shade. While also using admittedly effective revisionist history manipulation tactics like saying things like he dismantled our argument in two minutes using in-game data and logic. Even when other- Okay, so what I was saying was is I defended my position in three minutes that proved my logic to be sound in seconds compared to Tuner yapping for hours is what I'm saying here. Content creators came on my channel. Like when Jin Jinx and Tuner came on my channel, bro, I fucking dismantled him in seconds. And he had to spend 40 minutes trying to justify his cause. Which I 1 million percent did. Hey man, uh, you didn't try the HP set on the HP guy and you didn't even get max level. So why are you talking about him? Did that shit in literal seconds? And then I make a joke talking about STDs and having sex with prostitutes. I don't know what bro thinks I'm yapping about, but that's kind of what I did. Right? Y'all were there for that. I dismantled him in fucking seconds. True. I have able, been able to defend every single one of my opinions beyond a shadow of doubt using literally in-game data and logic. Which HP data, HP scaling on E, HP scaling on alt. Why did you not try an HP build? You can easily see is not what happened if you actually just went and watched the VOD of the- That is exactly what happened. ...actual discussion. However, he is the bigger content creator, so he can rewrite history as much as he wants and say whatever he wants. <laughs> that is such a soy fucking take. This was such a soy take. Everybody who's a content creator knows that when you punch down, you are directly fucking your channel. Everyone knows if you punch up, you get into that creator's algorithm and you only have the ability to gain. Also, is that Mateo? Yo, Mateo, you were in this video, man. When uh, when you backstabbed Epic, also 55 months up, by the way. When you backstabbed Epic, bro, that was in this video, man. You got a shout out, bro, for being a homie. That's you, baby. That's you. That's you. And he knows that his viewers aren't going to bother going back and actually looking at the VOD of this discussion and seeing that all of his claims are bullshit. And in a he said, he said... Should we go back and watch the VOD? I would love to go back and watch the VOD. That would be a fun time. We'll go watch the VOD after this. Situation, the bigger content creator always wins. No, 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 no. The smaller content creator always wins because one, anytime you're involved with drama, you lose subscribers. 
And anytime you're in drama with a larger content creator, you get sympathy because you're the little guy seen as the underdog and you get into the larger creator's algorithm and that gets you more views. This is a cope take used to manipulate people who don't know how YouTube works. But that's the goddamn truth. And let me tell you why this is the truth. Chad, how would someone become relevant by beefing with someone nobody knows? No MMA fighter will ever get their big break by fighting someone nobody knows. But every single fighter will get their big break by merely being in the same ring as another larger uh, fighter. It's the same thing with YouTube. You gain relevancy by beefing with larger content creators. But these people really, really, really want to change the narrative and say, oh, the little guys gets punished. That's not how it works. And you know the majority of your audience don't know how YouTube works. That is a deceitful, manipulative fucking statement, which was the entirety of Jinjinx and Tuner. More so Jinjinx. I actually like Tuner quite a bit, but Jinjinx was just salty and fucked up, bro. Legit. I'm glad he got off YouTube straight up. Like, bro, bro would just yap in the most un, like, the, the most disingenuous way possible. But the problem is, when people see that issue, they're not aware of that context. So hopefully I made that make sense. Regardless of what people thought of it. That's why you always punch up. It was like, like, think about it. That's why Gunners always punch up. Think about how many times you see, um, like, hundreds of smaller content creators attacking one large content creators. But how many times do you see large content creators attacking millions of smaller content creators? It just doesn't happen because it's not beneficial. Around this time that Tectone talked with Dr. K, an interview I recommend everyone watch for themselves to gain a better understanding of where Tectone's mind was during this time I frame. was fucked up as well. I wasn't. I was everything fucked up. Everything went back to normal. I mean, things behind the scenes that I can't talk about were really fucked up. Things on content were really fucked up. That interview is very painful to watch. <sighs> Until, of course... <laughs> Oh no! What did I do this time? Oh no! With no specific date on both of these accusations that stemmed into the drama, Techtone came under fire on Twitter, because a fucking course Twitter has a problem, and on his videos, specifically being a racist and or a pedophile. In regards to being a pedophile, without context, Techtone put Klee in a waifu tier list. Now, as for where this waifu tier list is, where he says the quote that Klee could be a- Please. Please give the context of this. Waifu to another 12 year old. I can't Guys, wait to hear the context, please. Wait to hear the context. I can't find it, but the closest I have is this. Fan of blondes. Next up, Kaching. I don't have one. Next up, we have Glee. Everybody's favorite daughter. Okay? Look, I know what I said earlier. I know about the disclaimer. But unfortunately, look. She's too cute. If somebody else were to try to date my daughter, Clee, I would beat the fuck out of them. In case someone sees this list, oh god, I can't put her in D tier. I can't. It breaks my heart. I will put you in C tier. I can't. C for child. Okay. C for child, Clee. This is fine. All right. She's having a great time. Please give the full context. The video of it is most likely deleted, but there's plenty of evidence of him claiming he said it and making it out to be not a big deal. No! Clee may be 12 years old, but she could be a waifu being called a- GIVE THE FULL CONTEXT! YO! Pedophile. Because I said Clee's a fucking waifu. God, it's so easy to clip shit out of context. It would be easy to take this at face value, but because I'm digging up everything Please. with full context that I can find. Clee may be 12 years old, but she could be a waifu for another 12 year old person, okay? Oh, yeah. Oh, thank God. <laughs> oh, thank God, bro. Thank God, bro. That clip out of context was so bad. That clip cut out of context was so bad. It was so bad. Dude, everybody was coming to me about that clip, calling me a fucking freak, bro. I even had my, uh, well, okay. Like, never mind. I, I shouldn't talk about her either. But uh, another person who was a part of my life who was much younger and they were related to me via blood was very upset for hearing that on the internet. As well as my family members as well. So I had to show them the full context too. Because that shit was weird as fuck. Like that shit was weird as fuck. Yeah so apparently saying that uh, 12 year olds. Can have a crush on another 12 year old. Um, is pedophilic. Being called a pedophile. Because I said please a fucking waifu. To another 12 year old. 
five months ago, no joke, I got canceled on Twitter. And they took all of these clips from me out of context. And I was called transphobic, homophobic, and a pedophile. And the reason why I was called a pedophile was because I was making this thing called a waifu tier list where there's this character in this game I call her name's Klee. She's 12 years old. And the statement I said was, was that Klee could be a waifu for another 12 year old. In the video where said, I thought he deleted it or whatever, I found this comment that quotes it. Being called a pedophile is a serious accusation, a very serious one, career ending possibly. And the fact that he was called a pedophile and clipped completely out of context is pretty fucked up. Yep. This was taken out of context in screenshots that lack the verbiage for its clarity and clip. That's kind of been the history of my whole career, man. People clipping me out of context, making it sound like I said shit that I never fucking said, and then forcing me to defend viewpoints that I never had to begin with. And you know what's crazy? Hey, we still on top, boys. Hey. 1v9 in. One man versus the whole planet still on top, baby. It don't matter. Make sure to follow the stream. To make it seem as if he genuinely was a pedophile. Yes, sir. Techtone, obviously, defends himself against serious accusations. And with no proof of the transgressions beyond a single clip or image without context, Tectone moves on. Yep. Winner. And there's Yunjin. <laughs> Tectone made an insensitive comment on the trailer of Yunjin, stating that she sounds like a fire truck whine during her O Maestro line that played. I mean, come on, guys. Like, it might be fine for a little bit, but then after a while, it's just gonna sound like a fucking fire truck. This sparked controversy this over whether or not he hated Chinese people because this of the is a classic. of singing happened to not be in his taste. Apparently, wait, a xenophobia. What is that? Classic react. <laughs> what? Hey, sorry for um, thinking that a bit of a song is bad, which makes me, you know, racist. Additionally, in a video Insane. about the racial insensitivity, he explains himself and directly apologizes for the remarks being insensitive to the Chinese opera culture, not knowing how much it meant to them and how bad it was to say what he said. I would like to apologize. Hey, I'll keep it a buck. It wasn't really that bad. It was kind of funny. <laughs> I'll say it. That shit was mad funny. I don't even give a fuck. Uh, shit was so good. From what I said about Yoon Jin's opera singer, I think you're correct. I think there's a big difference. Old Techie was too soft, man. He was too soft. And not liking. You got to understand why I was soft, though. And that was because I, I knew I had to appease these people. Otherwise, I couldn't make money in order to, like, get people out of debt and, like, you know, kind of take care of my livelihood. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I was I was horrified of losing my career. Someone's singing when comparing it to disrespecting someone's culture. It's very hard for me to apologize when I had no ill intent to begin with. I think intentions are important. I agree. When I did say that, I hope nobody actually thought that I had ill intentions to disrespect the Chinese. Was this right as you were about to join OTK? No, I joined OTK when I was still in Canada, and then I moved to Texas to join OTK. Chinese culture whatsoever. Because for me, that was just a joke. True. But once I was told how important and shown why it was so important to mm -hmm. the Chinese culture, if you've noticed, I never did that again. When I saw the song afterwards, as you can tell, it was- Let's give it a buck though. That song was ass though. Like, Yoon Jin cannot sing. But Chinese opera is not bad, like universally. Like, there is good Chinese opera. But Yoon Jin was just ass. You know what I'm saying? Like, she was just ass, low key. Met by highly praised, but people aren't going to clip that to show, oh, look at Techie redeeming himself. Everybody's gonna be there when you fall. Everybody's gonna be there for the accusation. And I hope my actions show that since being told how much that hurt people, I never did it again. Yet again, tech to Yeah, the biggest PR move I ever did was quitting Genshin Impact. That way I could stop apologizing to fucking pussies every day of my fucking life. Defends himself, and upon finishing the quest with Shenha and Yunjin, whereupon Yunjin sings about the journey of Shenha, it was good. Tech Tone gives it admirable praise. It was good. But while all apologies come with doubters, all comments pulled from this video. Should've just made this title, No More Drama Until I'm Desperate for Views and Attention Again. <laughs> <laughs> Salty motherfuckers that your community sucks ass, bro. Salty as fuck, your community sucks balls. Yeah, man. I guess Tainari was just trying to get views, bro. That's what it was. That, that must have been what it was, huh?
You gonna blame that shit on views too? To speak up about something, and something was said. Or y'all's community sucks ass. The fifth installment to Battle. Wait, what do you say? Free to play streamers are all mint collectors. Lol. <laughs> So good. Never an end to when someone has to speak up about something. And something was said. Ooh. The fifth install. This one was a rough one. Moment two, Battle Impact Dramatica happens when a close friend of Tectone, direct roommate Goose Egg, created a video on another content creator, Asian Guy Streams. Ooh. Or as he's more commonly known, Atsu. The drama began when I Or as he's more commonly known, Ratsu. Atsu subtweeted an action where one creates a vague statement that can relate to someone without directly mentioning them about a content creator, saying the following. There's a lot of creators that come across as genuinely nice people on stream slash video, but are actually like parasites behind the scenes. Okay. If you don't bend to their will, they'll make a big deal out of it publicly or drag your name through the mud behind your back to other creators. Do you know how dangerous of a comment it is to tweet that out? And put general distrust and paranoia amongst the community for no fucking reason. Not a bad, not, not a- Which is crazy because it's such a self-report. Bad overall thing to say. Who, wh why are we not naming who? Additionally, I'm also saying. Goose got his life fucked by this, by the way. Like, Goose got fucked hard by this. But there is a happy ending. Then there was another tweet, okay, that said, There are many creators in the Genshin circle, in wider connected circles. I'd like to befriend or get to know better. But they're already in so deep with many people who are awful people off stream, and it makes me skeptical if they're just naive or also awful behind the scenes. Then there was a subtweet saying, Man, all these people being friends with these people, man, they're so stupid, man. They should be friends with me instead. I feel very bad when I can see someone is trying to make an effort, but I cannot get a clear judgment of their character, so I just keep them at an arm's length to avoid risk of getting mixed in with people who have ill intentions or just horrible to talk to behind the scenes. <laughs> those three tweets are just crazy to make. Like, because you know what those do. What those do is, and tell me if this sounds familiar, those tweets make so many people feel unsafe and they don't know who to talk to, so then they have to turn to Atsu to get his opinion on who they shouldn't or should communicate with and they use him as a guide, and then what does he do to all of them? It's the same photo. It's the same photo. Brax is a creep. Such a vague blanket statement from a content creator that is directly supported by MiHoYo about the content creator space at large makes it very difficult for interpretation. However, while Goose Egg only wanted to know who Atsu was talking about, it was relatively clear that Atsu genuinely did not like Tectone, especially after the interaction between Tectone and Viosity previously. Yep. Goose is just your little fucking minion. He's your yes man. Nobody gives a shit about Goose. He's, he's just the discount version of you. It's so ironic because Goose's whole career is just built off leeching off Tectone. And he's just there nodding. And it's like, is, are you not embarrassed for yourself? I, are you just not embarrassed? How are you insulting someone else's numbers when yours is born from leeching of this guy? That's the wholesome guy that everybody says is wholesome, right? This guy? This is the real wholesome guy, huh? Oh, okay. This is the unproblematic guy, right? Tectone. Especially after the interaction between Tectone Watch and Goose's face previously. while he's hearing this. Goose is just your little fucking minion. He's your yes man. Nobody gives a shit about Goose. He's, he's just the discount version of you. It's so ironic because Goose's whole career is just built off leeching off Tectone. And he's just there nodding. And it's like, is, are you not embarrassed for yourself? I, are you just not embarrassed? How are you insulting some? Why did he let them affect him so much? Well, first of all, you got to understand Goose is very young and me and Goose lived in the same house. That's why it's very different. With other people you can space yourself from, uh, Goose could not. And so the only way that Goose could get space because he felt so bad of all the issues he caused me, he sat in his room for three days straight with the lights off in complete silence. I shit you not, it was like fucked up.
Because when you go after someone's like in their house, like it's very, especially with no proof whatsoever. It's very different when like you see like a clip of someone slamming a door on someone else and forcing their brothers to tears live on stream versus, well, this guy read my sub tweet. So now I'm going to go and attack everybody in his whole house. Right? It's very different. This shit is very uncomfortable. Someone else's numbers. When yours is born from leeching of this guy. Accusing the duo of drama baiting and going so far as to blame them together with full confidence. Drama starts by reading someone else's subtweets. It wasn't the guy subtweeting that caused the issue. It's the guy reading the subtweet who caused the issue. It's this backwards fucking logic that the gotcha community tries to use to weaponize anything against anybody. It is so fucking brainless, bro. There's been an issue with Tectone and Goose Egg where they keep drama baiting. And now when anybody, you're right, this, this carries on until today. Hold up, you know that what's crazy, this thought carried over to this day, Hex is being an example. Yeah, now when anybody is friends with me, they call him a leech, a dick rider, a glazer, and a yes man. So this dude has still fucked my career to this day where people are horrified. Even Mr. Pokey, whether he wants to admit it or not, I can tell Mr. Pokey is gaining resentment from so many people guilting him for merely being friends with me. He is now even in his own head. Yesterday when we talked, and I, we're going to have to talk about this again. Even yesterday when we talked, I asked him, why, do, why does he think that he's considered a drama baiter? And he said, because he's friends with me. And it really sucks. Because that bullshit has followed me to this day. And now anybody I care about, anybody I try to help out with, is going to get shit for merely being my friend. And you know what it all stems from? It's just from people being jealous. So much so we're like, now it's even hard for me to want to interact with people because I know the issue that's caused if you merely interact with me. And it's the same thing that Asmongold gets. Asmongold is horrified of bringing other people on his stream because he's afraid of what the internet might do to them. And it sucks that I'm getting to that level because my problem is I'm a very social guy. I love talking to people nonstop. But the fact that I have an AOE DOT effect that I leave on people, like your mom when she leaves herpes on people, that damage them for the rest of their lives by merely being friends with me is fucking insane. Both the Genshin TikTok community, the Genshin Twitter community, and most importantly to me and closest to me, the Genshin content creator. He was being mean to Twitter and TikTok users. What the fuck is that? You're telling me because the Twitter community and the TikTok community is angry at me, that's my fault? Who? It's one guy versus millions of people. Like, what the fuck? Creates a community by throwing a lot of bait tweets out there, by throwing a lot of shade on their streams or even in their video. This is such a pussy take in order to rally the community behind him and say, don't worry guys, I'll save you from the evil white man. Like, Jesus Christ. VOD highlights, and it's just very frustrating, and it's something that has not changed. In fact, it's probably regressed in terms of progression from the enviosity and tectone drama, or all the way back since the Jin Jinx and Tuna versus tectone drama. Since then, the drama, the chaos, the toxicity, it just keeps happening. The chaos. Oh my god. The, the chaos. Chaos control. Infinite drama farming. He's caused chaos. <laughs> fucking so dramatic, bro. These people are so fucking dramatic. Right in the middle of this, direct messages between Atsu and Tectone were leaked much to Tectone's dismay. Within them, there was a sensitive conversation about Tectone's past trauma. Full disclosure, and I will just say it because it's already talking about, uh, Atsu made me leak DMs because he said I was shitting on other content creators in those DMs, and in those DMs I had opened up to Atsu previously about my rape trauma, and uh, I was not ready to show that publicly. Now, nah, I guess it is what it is. I, I talk about it every now and then to show people that there is life after severe traumatic events. Uh, but yeah, I was not ready to share that trauma with the world. And uh, he made me do that because he said that there was DMs in there that weren't there. And then said, well, you didn't have to show them, but I had to because if I didn't, I couldn't clear my name. And uh, he, to this day, does not get it. Atsu essentially made the situation where Tectone's only defense was to bring them out and speak about them. Atsu, with nothing to yep. lose in this situation, doing the same. 
has repeated itself over and over and over again. We're here again in January and it hasn't gotten better. It's regressed. It's gotten even worse, right? I feel like he's gotten even worse. And I, part of that reason is one, Goose, who I believe is a yes man. He's always there in person, endorsing this behavior, allowing him to get away. Goose calls me out for sub tweets, doesn't say anything to Tectone, very hypocritical. That's yes man behavior. You have his chance not again, subtweeting. when Tectone tells lies, the example being the deleting DMs, they're all like, ha ha ha, caught him in 4K without even thinking about it, without even challenging the reasoning or the logic. And that's yes man behavior. It's well, what I perceive as he feels. Or it's not yes man behavior and not, oh, hey, this guy said something. I'm going to study it in great detail now. It feels like he's done nothing wrong. God, I really want this dude off my screen, bro. Pass. I really hope this part is but short. But it didn't because we, we're here today. In January, Even seeing this dude's face just irritates the fuck out of me. Causing issues for other people. And that is the voice is like nails on a fucking like, chalkboard, bro. I'm not here to receive an apology. I'm not here to demand an apology. I'm not here to give forgiveness or receive forgiveness or even offer an apology because I stand by everything that I said. This drama went back and forth and even directly brought Tectone into it. The result Good of God. such an ordeal ending up with Goose Egg accidentally leaking Tectone's address and moving That out. was really fun to deal with. I care of myself. I was also taking care of Goose, who used to live in that room. But then I realized I cannot take care of him because I am a broken human being. And a broken human being cannot take care of another broken human being, which caused both of our emotions to be absolutely horrible. So... He moved out, and it honestly, that's okay. I feel like that's the best decision for both of us. It is what it is. It is, what it is. Am I sad? Not even remotely. Because I have a habit of protecting people, and you'll notice that throughout my life, that for people who deserve protecting, and I even deserve people who don't deserve protecting, uh, I just try very, I try very hard to make sure that people can split off from me in a very cordial way. You can't be sad when you do what you know what's right for both of your mental health. I will leave one part out. I'm sure a lot of people can assume what happened for the bad thing. But I'm going to go ahead and go past that part. After Atsu made those claims about Goose, he could not live with the guilt. It made him start doing things that he regretted very quickly. One of those things was he leaked my address live on stream. That was rough. Her. This was during the point where I was underneath a lot of death threats. It was not good, and it scared the out of me. Maybe you can call me an ass over this. Maybe you understand where I'm coming from. I should suck. I asked Goose, since he was the one who leaked my address and put me at a security risk, I asked him to help me pay for a security system. Unfortunately, his analytics were absolutely f***ed up due to Atsu completely ruining his career. Obliterated the channel. He couldn't do that. He wouldn't do that. And we agreed to never talk to each other again. Mr. That shit is rough. I don't know how that is for a viewer. But even hearing that shit again, that shit sucks. <laughs> that shit sucks hearing that shit again, man. This overall make a goose step away from consistent content creation. Yeah. With the moving out and shaky ground Tecton was on, it seemed shortly after this he was on the up and up, remaining drama free for what looked to be about a year. Things were great. At least, nothing serious. But during that drama for a year, someone made a video on Tectone. And while Tectone didn't care for this video, a year later. Oh, we get into flip? <laughs> you should change this to Tectone versus Soul versus Soul's demons in his mind. Soul was definitely the most deranged person I have ever spoken to. Like, bro is straight up fucked up. Like, bro is angry at shit that didn't even happen. Makes up scenarios in his head that only exist inside his head. Like, bro is deranged as fuck. I can't imagine how it is living with him. Around this time, I heard of the drama through the Steak and Eggs podcast from Tectone's side. I'm streaming. And I get... I've even heard that there are, like... You know what? I'm not even gonna bring it up. Uh, you know what? Yeah, I'm not even gonna bring it up. That this guy's video... Uh, from over a year ago, and it was great called, podcast. Uh, Take next podcast. Mod shout it out. Tech tone, the king oh, of misinformation. Fuck, go, I dude. didn't want to watch it on stream. I watched it off stream, and I was like, "This is the most irritating video I've ever seen." So I react to the video on stream, right? Uh, and it was still a pretty dumb video. I okay. uh, brought him on my stream, and uh, I'm not gonna lie, I, I bro, I'm so sorry you've had to deal with so many brainlets after knowing you for a year. Now you're one of the easiest people to get along with. People just live to get offended. Uh, 
Yeah, I think I'm pretty easy to get along with too. But the problem is that everybody wants to get upset at everything. And then they expect me to apologize for them being a fucking pussy. It is definitely really fucking annoying. I daddy up on him a little bit. Uh, and then at the end of the thing, uh, he apologizes to me for okay. him making the video on me. Smart. And then me and him talk about anime. I invite him to come to my podcast. We hash things out. We're good. This was my first introduction to Tectone. Hey, thanks for watching Second Eggs, baby. 2022, when Flip on YouTube created a video about Tectone being an unreliable source of information regarding Genshin Impact. Looking at Tecto now, he is of course a whale content creator already creating a disconnect between most players and him, as well as the fact that he seems to be anti-theorycrafting and anti-meta due to some things that happened in the past which you can do your own research on. Do your own research. Why don't you just explain it? Because you know nobody and you know nobody gonna explain that shit. You know nobody gonna explain that shit. Now that wouldn't honestly be a problem in isolation, but when you consider the fact that Tecton has started a street robunculous amount of misconception in the Genshin community. Like what? Because he doesn't preface or state that things are his opinion. First of all, I prefaced it was my opinion every single time to where one of my subconscious quirks is me saying, but that's just my opinion. <laughs> that shit is so capped. Like, that shit is so fucking capped. Coupled with the fact that he actively shits on Meta and TC, that breeds a problem which we'll look at in the first piece of evidence. While there are some True. opinions and perspectives that would be worth criticizing on both Flip and Tectone, the infancy of the game and subsequently the budding creators within the game only knew as much as anyone else. Opinions were toted off as suggestions for other people or facts by many other content creators at the time. And, as the game evolved with newer content that supplied characters with different teams and builds, so too did these opinions. Tectone has a clear will perspective and can pretty much shit out any team recommendation and use it because he just does that much more damage than the average player. Flip criticism. It's crazy how much shit people give me for being whale and having whale perspective, yet I went on free to play accounts and completely bodied Spiral Abyss. Which is something that people say cap to, so I think I need to go on to somebody who plays Genshin Impact free to play, go on their account and dominate it again. Criticizes Tectone's takes on things like account reviews, teams with certain characters, Electro being bad for its time, and, for the most part, just meta-related issues. While the video has some contradictions to its own points, much yep. like this. You actually don't, dude, that's what I'm saying, dude. I told you, you literally don't need artifacts <laughs> on Venti. Uh, excuse me? You need to relax with the clowning. Venti fulfills his main role of being able to suck up enemies with no artifacts, that is true. But saying you don't need artifacts on Venti at all is disingenuous. He can do his job without artifacts, but the massive fucking boost you get from building him is still worth it. Yeah. No shit making a character stronger makes them stronger. <laughs> but he still does his role, even if he has fucking nothing. That's how broken he was. It's also so clearly satirical. This take was so weird to, like, hone in on. This point was picked. Nerd voice equals right? Yeah, I know, man. People assume whenever I raise my voice, it's because I'm wrong. And people think, <clears throat> well, actually, it's quite simple. Uh, we can tell right here that Chi-Chi is actually a majorly damage dealer because with the sharpness of her blade and the angle that she's able to swing from due to her lower stature, uh, it actually gives her a better goal, critical reach due to her being able to reach the opponent's balls even more. And, like, when people talk like that, they're like, oh, this guy must be, this guy must be spitting. Picked on by Tectone, too. He can do his job without artifacts, but the no massive boost you get from building him is still worth it. So what you're saying is... He can do his job without artifacts. So what you're saying is the exact thing that I just said? <laughs> well, the... Love Tectone, bro. Holy fuck. Insane. The video was picking on takes that were obviously dated or made sense in their time frame or were satire altogether. The yep. overall tone of the video was just to target Tectone for content ultimately. Yep. Tectone's response to the video was overall negative as the video painted him as a serial misinformer True. rather than just a content creator like many others that only knew the information they had at the time. I wonder how many other people just forgot that I had played the game casually and I made casual guides. Like, I, like, when other people said, when other people made guides, they were like, yeah, you're going to need 80% crit rate and 200% crit damage 
uh, and then he'll be able to do da, 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 DPS. And then my guides were like, Okay, so I like this character a lot because he uses shitty relics that you're probably wasting right now. So I'm running Bennett on full HP because he doesn't really need damage anyways. And his circle will heal so much that even a retard can clear this content just standing in the puddle. Right? Like, people got so angry at me making casual guides because they got so many fucking views. Like, bro, like, I literally made it. Yeah, exactly. Normie targeted guides. Because, like, that's how the majority of people would play the game. Less than 5% of people play games to be hardcore. The wide majority of people play casually. So making guides for casual players was always better. And people got so upset over that shit. Is this guy theory crafting my casual advice by meta standpoints? This is insane. The it same day sad. as his reaction to the video, Tactone left a comment saying it'd be cool if they could hop on stream together to discuss the topic. This was good. The topic being Flip's video. This is good. Much to Flip's dismay, in this debate, and I want to emphasize this isn't really a debate as much as it was just a disorganized discussion, Tectone absolutely... It was a slaughter. ...he dominated the conversation, picking on Flip's inability to articulate his points quickly. Yes, sir! But when the back and forth was done... In just like I did with Tuner, man. Bro yaps way too long. And then I learned, okay, if somebody's just gonna yap that fucking long, I'm gonna just cut him off. Because if you cannot articulate properly, that is not my fucking problem, man. I'm not going to sit here and listen to you yap for 10 minutes for a point that I could have summarized in five seconds. I'm just, I'm just legit just not going to do that, man. I'm just not. And dusted, Tectone went so far as to cool the waters and invite Flip onto his podcast called GotchaCast. What a guy. Lord, Don. Well, that's boring. What happened after that? <laughs> so this other guy. <laughs> okay, thank God. Oh, thank God. <laughs> This is the part of the video that got me interested into figuring out what the fuck was going on. Nice! This other guy <laughs> thinks he's like the Batman of okay. the Genshin community. Right. He's gonna say <laughs> he's gonna all the things. He's gonna take you to task. Exactly. Yeah, he's gonna hold you accountable. Yep. He, he came to defend, defend Flip. Uh -huh. A guy who didn't even want to be defended, <laughs> right? Insane. So typically, in the pattern of Tectone's dramas, there would be an issue, it would arise, it would reach a boiling point, it would simmer down, and then everyone would move on with their lives. Yep. This part, where somebody else intervened and it got worse, is what interested me. Yep. Enter stage left, soul of an artist. Soul created a video slamming Tectone on how he treated Flip and going so far as to bring up Tectone's previous marriage and then trying to use it as foresight as to how he may use it against him in the conversation. Yeah, because people go on Twitter and they're like, what low-level IQ insult can I get that I think might bother Tectone? Oh, okay, I'll just grab this one that every Twitter user spams. Even though I have no context of what actually happened, I'll just parrot it because why not? Dude, I bodied everybody over that shit, bro. I bodied fucking everybody with that shit. Damn, man. I'm starting to see why your wife divorced. I asked if he regretted it. He outright does not. I have it recorded. I have the recordings of two occasions that you do, that you do pop off on free-to-play accounts and beat floor 12. Insane. Utility was overlooked just to shit on you. It was fucking weird. I asked if he regretted it. He outright does not. I have it recorded. Oh, shit, bro. That is wild. Hold up. Let me add you as a buddy real quick on Discord. Um, Yo, Riker, go to my Discord. Go to my Discord and then ping me in the general chat. And then I'm going to add you as a friend. Wait, no, I found you. Riker, profile. I, I sent you a friend request. Accept that real quick and show me whatever it is you want to show me on anything. I would love to know. I would love to know.
Alright, let's keep going. I wonder how many DMs I'm about to receive. Okay, let's keep watching the video and then we'll check out everything Riker wants to send me after. That's crazy. What's even crazier is I guarantee you that you're gonna take that one comment I said. Of course, you may use it against him in the conversation. Damn, man, I'm starting to see why your wife divorced you. That's crazy. What's even crazier is I guarantee you that you're gonna take that one comment I said about how your wife divorced you and you're gonna use that as the backbone of some argument about how I, I bullied you and said bad things about you and you're just gonna completely ignore everything else in the video. But I, I yeah, that's what happened, huh? I'm ready for that because you're really good at doing that. Of course, this reached Tectone and he reacted to it and subsequently brought Soul on stream shortly after. Uh, you know, I'm doing pretty good, man. Cool. Uh, before this conversation begins, uh, do you consent to this call? Uh, that depends. What are we going to talk about? Do you remember when I had to ask people if they consented to being in call with me? Because they were so afraid. I had to get verbal consent for proof that I didn't bully them to be here. And you want to know why I had to ask that? Because of Jin Jing Sintuner saying he had a proverbial gun to the back of my head. Oh my god, grow the fuck up. The discussion harped on topics regarding how Tectone treated Flip, meta takes, and Tectone's overall behavior within the Genshin community. While the first half of this discussion is like two friends bullshitting with one another, it started to dissolve with Tectone no longer taking Soul seriously in the slightest, and Soul realizing it much later. Additionally, the famous clip- Oh yeah, where I used to have a safe word when people were to talk to me on Discord. <laughs> Insane! No, Tectone. It's because you made a minor, or, or, or former minor. Oh, that's everybody, Wait, huh? a former minor? <laughs> oh yeah, my, my god, wait! You hey, made, you, you understand you, that I'm a former minor too, right? I myself There it is! Minor. Even though they could both goof off on the slip-up, uh, Flip was not a minor when he was on stream, but he made nope. this video when he was 17, which is the point that he was trying to argue, and additionally, Asmund Gold even says that this is what he was trying to say. I think what he's trying to say is you're trying to hold him accountable for something that he did whenever he was a kid. Yes. Like, that's the implication. Yes. But because he's bad at communicating, he looks like an idiot. Yeah. <laughs> but Tectone didn't forget about the point where he brought up his ex-wife. Uh, talking about Meta for, what, 30 minutes to an hour? It's not going anywhere. I think I'm done. All right. Do you think, do you think my wife should have left me? Yes. <laughs> no, no, not really. Um, I think, I think that uh, there's a reason why people do the things they do. Mm -hmm. And uh, Texon, my friend, you have a lot of reasons. So do you think, do you think that's what happened? Um, no, uh, what, I don't know. What do you, what do you, do you think, do you think my wife left me because I didn't play meta in Genshin Impact? When did I even remotely imply that? Well, I'm just asking. Despite Sol abruptly leaving after the fact, it was stated on a video. I pissed him off so hard. I pissed him off so hard, bro. Because at a certain point, I realized, oh, this guy's fucking retarded. Okay. So I'm gonna just fuck around now and see how angry I can make this dude before he leaves. Dude, the full-on screaming into rage quit was insane. He deleted... Yeah, I mean, Soul deleted this channel after this, guys. Did you know that? He deleted this channel. <laughs> Dumbass. And apparently Twitter, that they ended up resolving the problem. Even though Soul barged out on a bad note, you would think this should be the end. Two guys disagreeing and one barging out because they can't stand the other. No. Nothing that simple. Careers are meant Soul's to be Soul's brother, Exco Solo, ended up making a video too. His video basically said the conversation should have ended sooner and on a good note. W and Solo, being man. Soul's brother basically should talk Soul from a perspective of being with a guy for 20 years. Insane. Oh my god. I've never had a drama where somebody else's family member felt the need to have my back over yeah. their brothers. <laughs> That's bad. It was insane. But maybe this is a little bit more that serious. Was wild. Than I, I've never had somebody else's family member weigh in on the drama. Uh, so I guess let's just figure out what's going on. With Solo making some good points on Tectone, including how obnoxious he can be. Talk about. The only thing Sam. I can say is that Tectone, as an entertainer, does not know when to shut up, but at least he's- Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I feel like that's fair criticism. Hey, man, you, you gotta get to those mid-rolls somehow, man. You gotta get to those mid-rolls somehow. Tectone was rather positive about the video and ultimately <laughs> had this to say. I think it's very good. 
very good job. You know, is what it is. Hey, full disclosure, I still have full respect for both of them, right? Because I understand that sometimes people make mistakes and I'm not gonna hold that against them. X Go Solo ended up going on stream with Tectone and just having a rather civil discussion about the whole ordeal and blowing smoke on what essentially was just a dead fire, basically. I didn't hold that much of a grudge, but I know who did. Uploading five more videos on my ass after we said we were going to let bygones be bygones. And then I never reacted to them. So they never got any views. They were deleted, re-uploaded, wouldn't react to it. So they weren't getting views. And then they deleted their channel. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. Yep. Well, people on the internet don't know that side, do they? Bro was full schizo posting about me for two weeks straight. Someone was not happy. Someone was not happy. They adding to the aftermath, but not stoking any flame. So how does this get worse? Why a mental breakdown? To your Twitch chat telling me I'm unprofessional for talking about this on the internet? All of you, beat my fucking ass. He made the video first, you dumb fucker. I know. Painfully silent. I want Solo does finish that clip by having a breakdown on stream. That was a rough, that was a rough clip to watch preface this with this drama is far past and far yeah. over and even though the people involved are still hostile towards one another it doesn't mean that anybody should go and harass any party the situation ended up getting under soul's skin and he ended up reacting in a rather brash way tectone of course ended up making a video about the whole situation as the whole situation was already public no, I'm not going to take this guy seriously because he doesn't deserve to be taken seriously. But guess what, Soul? I'll talk to you serious now. No. Oh, dude, that was such a dope video. Why'd you cut it off? No, dude. No, I got to pull it up. Oh, dude, that video was so sick. Bro, I go off on his ass so hard. A meme about Jean Lee. I'm sorry. And that was back want me to be serious now okay let's keep going despite having no you can say tech tone someone having my or come on here's a crazy you know it in spade you've made your brother more sick for me to say hey this guy's takes your shit abuse their fucking brother think you're this is ridiculous absolutely fucking out at all and you minor you want oh come on where where is the part where's the part where i say that thing all these genshin stan dumb fuck relationship with your fucking three years ago you're a fucking moron. You're going to talk about the action. The person that you want to defend one. He's wrong. No. Because he wanted to give his... Is there any part where I can see the timestamp for that video? Bro, I pop off so hard there. That shit was nuts. Deserve to be taken seriously. But guess what, Soul? I'll talk to you serious now. Fuck, hold up. Yo, somebody help me with the timestamp. Yo, can anybody find me the timestamp where I say that? Perspective. Comments from aggressive... You Threatening him by doing a... The fact that people aren't calling this piece of shit out on his actions makes me fucking sick. React to the clips that they're saying on the Discord. If me streaming that is what your own fault continues to... Just, if that hood brother in very civil discussion... And here's another fun fact. Say that you do clearly that You can say tech tone bad on a hanging fruit. Own family. Hold on, I'll find it. Own thing. We're on good terms. Or try to... Zero Zhang. Are you gonna come? <laughs> 1034? It's not 1034. I already checked. It's not 1034. That's just cap. Oh, the fuck up. I'm the soul. You don't want to defend the hook because you're a minor. You will fangs into because, And I think that fits the at all. And Solo wants a VC for a minute. I don't feel with fear. I am not doing this for me. I'm doing this for his own sake. You take care of yourself. And it sucks beyond logic. You're lucky because you have the soul. Fucks. Not every. You let that warning after warning from your own family to stop you kept going and it led to this fuck oh, that video was so good whatever you can watch it for yourself bro that video was so hype that video was so hype man ah fuck it ah whatever now as much detail as one can extrapolate from a stream where there is no face cam tectone heard about the situation and gave his input taking it from a deep-rooted place of emotional trauma dude dude i go full 
I go full professional wrestling mode. Here? Wait, is this it? A meme about Zhang Li being good when he wasn't. What, are you gonna come? Grow the fuck up, you dumb fucking child. This is ridiculous. True. Uh, anyways, anyways. Dude, this shit was so peak. This was such peak drama. Like, dude, every morning he would respond, I would get so excited. And then after I fucking dumpstered him, and then nobody watched his shit after, like, the proof was there. Oh, man, that felt so fucking hype. What's this? Is this it? Guess what, Soul? I'll talk to you serious now. So let's keep on seeing what you like to do over this fucking video. You know, we, we, don't, we, don't, we, don't, we, we don't need to beat a dead horse. It's already over. So fucking hype. It was, yeah, I caught a fucking promo on his ass, man. It was so good. And it was funny because uh, for anybody who watches wrestling, you probably know who I was quoting. Uh, CM Punk, a great man. Do I have your attention now? Oh, man. I fucking love wrestling, bro. I love when I get to mix my pro wrestling shit with, like, my fucking, uh, with my anger. It's so good. I love it. That he had growing up. And he assumed to be on the shadow of a doubt that Soul was an abuser of his brother. This interaction, the assumptions, accusations, and blatant hatred boiled for well past a month. Prior child or not, it's pretty clear to see that neither party really enjoyed this. And... <laughs> I enjoyed it. <laughs> I thought this shit was fun as fuck. I love calling out dumbasses. I love calling out dumbasses. It's so good. Plenty of people have their opinion, but the outcome will always be this. But at least this Chad enjoyed be the it worst too. It. They were waking up right? pumped to get the next part, man. It was good. Yes, Mr. Loki made a very easy to follow video on the depths of the drama, and Box 2 created a decent summary. If you want deeper details on the whole gangbang, go check out their videos. Yep. But we still gotta ask what the fuck happened. Some say it was the great ratioing of 2023 that caused Genshin cuck packing celebrites to spurg out about the rewards being shit. It did. Others, the duality of man tweet, dropped by certified soy boy, Zyox himself. It's crazy how people claim I started this drama when we know that's just not the truth. It was either Zyox or it was Dr. Ratio. It was, it just pick your poison, man. Others, the slap to the nuts known as the Three Wishes debacle. Wait, you made that image by hand? Wait, the Zyox soy, I didn't realize you just called Zyox a certified soy boy. That's actually crazy. That is fucking crazy. The man who won't even say my name. And then we'll probably get a clip of someone going into his chat of him going, oh, you won't even say his name. And then him going, Tectone, Tectone, Tectone. Oh, dude. Actually insane. Fucking wild, bro. But really, none of those could have happened. None of it changes the actual start of the drama, being Braxophone himself posting a document spanning the length of a Five Nights at Freddy's fanfic. Yep. In this document, Brax calls out another creator that is preferred by Hoyoverse, a familiar face to all of us already, Atsu. Atsu was accused of several things, such as foiling a sponsorship Brax was offered. But I had this opportunity and I had no idea what to do. And I felt like the only person that might that I might know that also has a similar opportunity would be him. Uh, yes, because when he DM'd me about that contract stuff, yeah. I was intrigued. Can you elaborate on that? Is your stream only this type of shit? Yeah. Yeah, what do you think? It's pretty good, right? It's cool, right? Hey, I see that you got a Twitch Prime crown. You should use that real quick. You should press uh you should press subscribe. If you press the purple button, you'll have it'll say free fr it's I right. oh, I appreciate that, man. Yeah, you uh press the free subscription with Prime button, Flub Oil. I use it on a booby streamer. Hey, that's all right, bro. Hey, that's based. Hey, good shit, homie. Hey, welcome to the stream, man. On the intro, I just, I was just, I was just curious about what it was about. And so you, at, so what you're implying here is that after Brax messaged you asking about advice for this contract, then yeah. you messaged somebody at Hoyoverse. I messaged someone at Hoyoverse, yeah. And and what did you ask them? Oh, what 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 is this about? What's it about? Okay. Excluding him from speaking with others within the You know what happens when I message tell your verse? They don't respond. I wonder why they respond to Atsu so quickly. But we can't prove nothing. We can't prove nothing. Ah well. In the content creation circle, putting Brax in a catch twenty two where he can't speak out or his point is proven, telling others that Brax doesn't vibe with him. You know, the horticulture Yeah, that wasn't saying. 
But Atsu was like, if you talk against me, you're fake. And if you don't talk, then you're still fake. And it's like, okay, so then what do I do? You just couldn't do anything. I'm sure we grew out of when we left high school, except Atsu so brought it with him. Circumstantial evidence that the community at large widely considered true, or to a lesser degree, fucked if true. Now, yep. what does this have to do with Tectone? Well, Atsu fucked up Tectone's life earlier, causing a ton of personal issues that spanned to affect years of his life. Time, relationships, friends, prospects, all of them he will never recover. Yeah. And I still have damage from that till today. But you know what's crazy? You know what's crazy? Ah, you know we're doing all right. You know, I mean... Hey, we're doing okay. We're doing okay over here, to be honest. So, it, it wasn't really that crazy. You know, it wasn't really that crazy. So we're we're chilling low key. I, it is what it is. You know, it, it is what it is. All because Atsu involved himself. During this drama, Tecton sides heavily with Brax, noticing a lot of parallels between his issues with Atsu and Brax's accusations against him. While the entirety of this drama could be summarized as just high school click drama, ultimately, if you just boil this shit down to its core, it's one content creator having bad feelings about another, and either inadvertently or deliberately souring their reputation among other content creators within the gotcha space. Upwards of 69 pages were made for this. 14 from Brax, Insane. the other 55 from Atsu. Vilification by association is dangerous, and nobody has the whole idea and are just left with pure assumptions on everyone's character which, of itself, is dangerous. Assuming, of course, you understand that. Fucking Tecton nuts. was deeply affected by everything over the past three years, but the information is scattered among dozens of videos. Yep. This is not the conclusion. There's a lot of information I left out deliberately, as you might have either noticed or figured. From the beginning to the end, I'm going to reveal every single outcome, show every single conclusion in all seven of these chapters. So, without further ado, the end game. I have a feeling for his end game, for when he's revealing the conclusion with everything, I'm assuming this guy's probably going to have my back for the majority of them. He probably won't have my back for the Jin Jinx and Tuner, because it's very hard to get context for that. But we'll see, because that's kind of the one where people are still a little bit iffy about. But I'm hoping with the context that I provided, it makes a little bit more sense. But it's all As good. Of recently, a lot of information came to light from multiple people, and yeah. the story can be pieced together. Because it is, you gotta understand, this is from the perspective of someone who found out about me less than a year ago, who intended to do his own research on everything. So I, I am curious what he thinks, and and what Chad thinks as well. What we can do, uh, you guys can vote with one or twos. Gathered. If I was the evil guy or if I was the good guy, you can vote. Find the truth. So. Yo, chat, type one if I'm more so a good guy, type two if I'm more so a bad guy. What do you think? Jesus. That is so mixed. That is so mixed. Jesus Christ. Eesh. 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 Well, I, I eat your family one time, bro. You call me a bad guy. What's this? Another CC I know Akashad is dealing with Hoyo not responding to him, maybe being blacklisted. Am I blacklisted? Hoyo has never responded to my emails for the past few years. Have my roles in Discord removed? Their partners giving me an expired contract to sign. Would appreciate them telling me I'm not wanted so they don't have me playing this guessing game. Ah, well. It is what it is. We start with Tectone's first drama, Dreamy. Body. A while ago, Dreamy accused... In the most recent, fuck, that Dreamy never even knew what gaslighting meant. And it caused a lot <laughs> hey, of issues. For first editing fuck up. Hey, still good. Still good for a one hour, four minute video. You had one little fuck up. That's wholesome. I'm glad you kept that in. <laughs> Insane. Tecton due to ignorance. Whether or not this story still holds with the current bullshit is for you to decide. Right before the drama on Twitter yep. hit, Dreamy was fucking exposed by Mr. Pokey for posting cringe in general, yep. outright shit-talking every creator near them, and enviously whining about not getting their fair share of views on YouTube. Their solution to being called out on their bullshit? A community post that a fraction of the people will see. Change the name to Lasara Scarlet Dream. Insane. 
rebranded their whole channel after getting outed as a fucking snake. From stating falsehoods out of ignorance to toting them as facts. Because here's the thing, man. When I call somebody out, people can still kind of worm around. They can still kind of worm around. But here's the thing people don't get now, bro. I got guard dogs. And if one of my guard dogs goes after somebody, after I put the signal flare on, I'm saying, hey, this guy's a piece of shit. People won't listen to me directly because I'm white. It is what it is. If I get one of my homies to go out there and get him, they'll listen to somebody else. Hey, Shinya, get his ass. To get him. Spotlighted as envious. To I am, I ain't no dog. I am the fucking eagle that hunts for the hair. I want to make one thing very clear. I'm not calling you a dog. It was, it was, it was symbolic. You know what I mean? Like, I put the signal flare on somebody, and then, you know, you can be a velociraptor if you want. You can be a velociraptor. You can be a Tyrannosaurus Rex. And fuck, you can be King Kong. You can be King Kong for all I care. I'm just a, a symbolic. Two-faced egotist of a content creator within the yeah. gotcha space. And in a separate community post, yep. they apologize to Vulcan YouTube and gotcha smack for their toxic behavior. Where's my apology, pussy? Hey. W. W mans. Hey. Winner. Two, Next. Enviosity. Enviosity, as we know already, is a free-to-play Genshin Impact content creator and holds this title with pride. Getting angry with... <laughs> pride, you say. Pride, you say. People add premium currency to their account as it diminishes his legitimacy. Okay, dude. What the fuck? You're kidding me. People can just give others a welkin off of the fucking Coda shop now? This is a strand. Bro sounds like he's about to cry. End of the woven fabric of shit that Envy has put out there. But we're going to focus exclusively on the interactions between Envy and Tectone. Okay. In the most recent explosion of drama where everyone had to get their word out, Envy was no exception. This with a shit is so weird. Long Twitter post highlighting their PTSD. This shit, this shit was the weirdest shit ever saying I gave him PTSD. This shit was so fucking weird. With Tectone a term that is considered grave to those who actually have it. Envy does not. Enviosity attempts to levy their outburst on stream being caused by Tectone, when the outburst was not even caused by Tectone in the first place. I know. Some fucking- He blames everything on me? We all know who it was caused. His own fucking brain, brother man. Idiots on Twitter. Or idiots on Twitter. Some actual- Dumbasses on Twitter. Oh my god. And I scroll down and I see this one motherfucker yeah. who's following me, so I'm a little disappointed. And they're like, Envy, how long are you gonna remain as the only content creator not addressing the Genshin situation? Two guys. You know what's even more disappointing? Yeah, go ahead. We got other people who are still following me. Minimin says, I don't think he will. He actively stays out of any negativity, coward or what, that's for everyone to think. Me kind of disappointed though. So it's not one guy being a dumbass, it's two being a dumbass. Bro gets two guide on Twitter. Blames me for it. I'm in bro's head so much. He blames me for every unfortunate action in his whole life. Copy pasta aside. Two guide like his mom gets every night. I should be the only- <laughs> Oh my god, I can't! This clip is too funny to me! A dumbass. Copy pasta aside. I should be the only motherfucker getting praise in the Genshin community because <clears throat> I don't spend money on Genshin Impact. This is but a fraction of how Envy treats anyone he views as inferior to him. A question from someone who follows him about current events. It wasn't even harmful. It was merely a question, and Envy berates, belittles, and demonizes the one person who asked the question and the other who replied. Imagine that. Envy's supposed emotional trauma was weaponized and directed at Tectone, going so yep. far as to bring up his previous marriage as a reason for how Envy was being treated. Imagine that. This was the massive point of contention, as Envy went from making it about Tectone to his love life. This post, garnering a massive viewing and even being ridiculed on stream by Tectone, Brought nothing. Bro, I love how I just called him a bitch. Frame one, he posts that. I frame one, bitch him out, and that post ratios his trauma post. This post garnering a massive viewing and even being ridiculed. Envy, you have a history of getting one guide on Twitter and one guide on Twitch and making small things into enormous issues that anyone else could move forward from. You're incredibly sensitive to anything. 
I offered you money for beating Spyro Abyss. You threw a tamper tantrum on the stream and said you're hurting my free-to-play pride. Bro, I bodied him. He sat there for nights, weeks, typing that up to cancel me. I cancel him with a off-rip frame one improv post. You can't, you can't compete. You, you wonder why? Because the truth is on my side. And brothers and sisters, the truth will set you free. Killed on stream by Tectone, brought nothing but shame to Envy, and granted Tectone the reason to respond with his own post. 3. Jinjinx and Tuner. Jinjinx. Another W. The Tuner drama. The only one I could definitely say that Tectone went off the rails on. I looked. Why? Deep enough and talked to the right people about it. The only thing I can definitely say for certain is I know he apologized to Tuner. Yep. I apologized to him, he apologized to me, we were good, and then he also later in the Twitter thread, he did, Tudor did slightly have my back for the whole Atsu thing because he weighed in with some information that did assist me and says it wasn't one guy who made uh, Jin Jinx quit, it was two, and a reference to Atsu. Yeah. Right, like, yeah, sometimes he's in the right, sometimes he's in the wrong. Like, um, like, when I wasn't there for the Jin Jinx and Tuna drama, yeah, but apparently no. he was in the wrong for that, you know. I, I, I wasn't, I wasn't there for that, but apparently he was in the wrong for that. Oh, I wasn't there, but apparently he was wrong. God, bro, I'm so tired of hearing that. Yeah, I wasn't there, and I don't know, but that's what I heard. Yeah, I don't know, I don't know, and I didn't hear, or I don't know, but I heard. I have no information. I have no story, but that's what I heard. I mean, I didn't see nothing, but that's what I read online. And so, apparently, even though Tecton was actually there trying to help Jin Jinx and Tuna. True. And they took it poorly. True oh, with the comment. So that was him trying to cause an issue. It definitely wasn't just Jin Jinx and Tuna releasing the worst Zhang Li video on earth so i gave uh tuner a platform to defend his video and because the reception to that wasn't good then they said that i planned to make them look like idiots like come on bro like come i mean the vod's there like you can go watch the vod it's literally been there we're i stand by everything i said right here so i am curious where we're going with this the homie b mao man it's just what they said to the homie, b -mow. Just making shit up for fun. Well, yeah. here we fucking go. Here we go. So this video, uploaded April 9th, 2024, three years after the events between Tuner and Tectone, yep. was brought up by Tao and b -mow in a yep. video Tectone reacted to. True. In it, at two hours and 40 minutes in, Tectone ends up stating basically the same shit he did years ago. Right. Despite being, quote, good with Tuner, unquote. I am good with Tuner. We talked on stream and hashed it out. Now, this yep. is a problem, as everything he stated is in fact an outright lie. Not gonna beat around the bush. Which is what? What did I lie about? But he states that we should go watch the VOD. Yep. I'm gonna comb the VOD in question, and I will okay. show you exactly what happened without too much abridging, so okay. I can make this clear. Tectone stated several years ago that he... Like when Jin Jinx and Tuner came on my channel, bro, I fucking dismantled him in seconds. Yep. And he had to spend 40 minutes trying to justify his cause. Yep. I have able, been able True. to spend every single one of my opinions. True. On a shadow of doubt. True. Literally in-game data and logic. Tectone, in fact, did not. He simply asked questions regarding both Jin Jinx and Tuner's thought process about why they thought Zhongli was underpowered. Right, and I did that because the community was going after them for saying that a unit was bad. And the first question Tectone asked. Uh -huh. Alright, cool. So yesterday I was on my stream. People keep on fucking coming into me and linking me y'all's video. Yep. <laughs> and I just wanted them to leave me alone. Yep. Uh, um, well, we always we we're actually putting together a video right now, but we have said several times, definitely don't go into other people's stream and harass them. Or you know, everybody has their own truth as far as how characters are played. Um, you've got obviously their own truth is the craziest thing to say for gotcha game metagame a lot of investment you've got a lot of money and you play the game that you want to play um 
you know, but it's like your way of playing is not everybody else's way of playing. We don't, uh, True. we don't, we don't criticize people for playing how they want to play. What we try to do with our videos is say, all right, from a free to play perspective, say you only have limited amount of resources. So you also have to understand that when I invite a smaller content creator onto my channel, and then rather than talking about the issue that I brought up with, instead, when the person just talks about the content that they can provide people from their channel, why do you think they're doing that? Okay, like you got to understand from a content creating perspective how it could seem at least like, hey guys, time to check out my channel, right? It's a plug, you know, and that shit did piss me off. I ain't gonna lie. You're not going to, you know, mm. have this. Jump. Once again, I'm not saying that they're cloud chasers. I don't believe they are, but that's how it seemed to me in the time where I'm just like, hey, bro, why don't we talk about this issue? Rather than ranting about how dope your channel is and how good of a guy you are. Giant pool of things that you can just buy a character, get him level 99. You've got a perfect bolide set for him. You got a perfect, you know, DPS set for him, or like you got a perfect shield set for him, or whatever. With all these great artifacts, we're trying yep. to show people what a realistic setup is. Okay, you're gonna get him to A4. You know, maybe maybe you'll get him up to 70, 80. You know, maybe if it's a carry. Uh, you got a semi decent half piece maybe set up you know you but you i think this is also a giga cat like a giga cope take because no guide maker ever was like okay so when you're level 40 you use them like this when you're level 50 you use them like this when you're level 60 you use them like this when you're level 70 you use them like this when you're level 80 you use them like this i feel like that's just fucking cap and what they meant to say was yeah we fucked up on our testing we didn't test them at 80 with a proper build so we're going to say we test them at every single level nobody's done that they never did that and that take also pissed me off because all i said was at level 80 with an hp percent build he's fucking broken and he was you drop the shield you cannot take damage anymore at that time in genshin effect you still need to farm so you know you're spending a week to get him up to a4 you're spending another week to get his uh his um artifacts up you know this is not a perfect set. And uh, this is what this character is going to do for your average player. Yep. Especially when you yep. consider most people who are free to play, who have played since day one, maybe are getting to world level six about now. As you can clearly see, there was no dismantling of any argument in seconds. Tuner clearly explains how their video process works and is meant for the casual player of Genshin. So what I meant by that statement was, is I listed all of the counterpoints to their thought process very quickly. And if you check the VOD, even for that clip, that is 1% me talking, 99% him talking. And that's what I mean. Like I dismantled his argument in seconds and he spent 40, 50 minutes just yapping. Even in that clip, that is exactly what I said. There is no caught. That is exactly what I said. There is no blurred line here. The rest of the video, which is only 33 minutes long, goes on like this. There is zero hostility, and Tuner hints that Textone's chat is being sort of toxic. He's not OP before the buff. There was never an argument that he was OP. The argument was that he was fine the way that he was. And also, I, I hope you're not getting the, like, the consensus or the feeling whatsoever that I'm here just being like, Oh, I'm gonna bring this fucker on stream and I'm gonna shit on him. No, I'm, uh, not, doing I'm that. not getting Literally, the impression from to... you, but I will tell you that the chat definitely is getting that impression. Oh, um, uh, when you say the chat, I feel like that's such a pussy thing to say because, like, what do you want me to do to your chat? Like, oh, well, that's not what the chat thinks. That's not what my lovely community members think. I think that's also just a pussy take, bro. What do you want me to do? Control your chat? I was the most hated man in Genshin for years for shit that I didn't fucking do. Okay, well, tell the chat to shut the fuck up. <laughs> True. Uh, hey, hey, True. Uh, some some hey, people chat, from hey, your some people chat. from your chat have come in and say this is really cringe, but. Hey, hey yo. How does he know that they came in from my chat? Hey, so letting you know, like, the chat doesn't like you, and even your chat came into my stream and said that this is cringe. How does he know? Straight up. Like, people would overlook that comment, but, like, how the fuck would he know where they came from? Because the thing is, the moment anybody goes against... Tell me when I'm telling lies. The moment anybody goes up against me, 
their chat gets inflated by thousands. Case in point, Soul used to stream to 70 viewers, but when he get went against me, he had 1,300. Case in point, that's not my chat. Those are my aunties. Anybody who goes against me gets inflated viewership, and you can look into that yourself if you like. That's the truth. Because now, once the drama's over, they all leave, and their channel's fucked because they think, oh, if I keep beefing with this guy, I'll get more viewers. And so they pander to the aunties. They become delusional in their own fucking head. They think, all I got to do is kill Tecton, kill Tecton, kill Tecton, then I'll win. And then they realize I was fighting for a cause that I didn't believe in, was incorrect, and their channel is left in shambles. And it happens every fucking time. Oh, uh, Chad, if you're over on his stream, make sure to press follow on his stream and show support for Turner. Does that sound like a bad guy to you? Does that sound like a bad guy to you? All right. This right here, this entire video, is Tectone inserting himself and derailing a stream to get his word in, which is bad enough, but the cordial conversation. I disagree. That's not me derailing a stream. I literally asked him if he wanted to have the conversation. He said, yes, we had the conversation. We talked. I can't derail a stream. That was our collective idea, right? So that take doesn't make any sense. Station and the conclusion of it seemed purely informative and constructive for both of them, even with Tecton gifting him five subs by the end of it mm -hmm. and stating, I ain't no bitch in a positive manner for yep. how he went in and came out. Yep. I really want to yeah, say, sure. hold on. I really want to say, uh, assuming you're listening right now, um, I really do appreciate what? that you took the time to want to talk instead of, of just talk shit. Of course. Um, it really know, means bitch. a lot to me to know that yeah. there are other content creators and other people who care to have a conversation instead of just sitting How old is this clip? Three and a half years. Yeah, sitting behind their walls. Yeah. And just He also shit. thanked me for the conversation. Afterwards, it was proven that Tectone had malicious intentions initially when he came on a Tuner stream. Obviously, I wanted to clown him. This is a guy that Tuner did not even know before the interaction. I also did not know him before the interaction. I don't know why that's a point. I, I didn't know him either. Dude came into my stream. He apologized. Uh, he said, you know, what he did was... 100% ill intent. Once again, I feel like Riker's takes are very fair because he only has access to the information and he only has the context to what he has access to. And that's why, like, I'm in such a pickle for a lot of these situations because it's very hard to get the context for everything. I want to make this very clear. I think Riker's video, I feel like this video is amazing because, like, this is this is hitting the majority of the time. I want to make that very clear. I, mean, I feel like this guy's base as fuck. But because of this, and I did try to make sure I got everything I could. Oh, yeah, absolutely, Riker. Once again, no, dude, nothing but love for this video, man. I really appreciate you doing this. This video, because of this reaction Tectone had, it's clear the air is still fogged. What he said is false in its entirety. They uploaded the video, provided context, Tectone read it, and believed he was being villainized for it and reacted harshly. Now, I really don't think that's a belief that I was being villainized because even in Tuner's own I'm quitting YouTube video, he said that I bullied him onto that stream. So I believe this is a very obviously bullying post. Like this is a very, like, like once again, look at this. The fact that Tuner's invited a complete stranger into his workspace. And once again, I was a stranger to him as well. I had no idea who this guy was who was known to be boisterous, also calling me, like, saying, like, oh, it's common knowledge that he's a fucking dickhead, and had a proverbial gun pointed to his head. Like, I don't know how that paints any picture to anyone than this guy's an asshole and forced him into an uncomfortable position against his wants. I don't know how anybody else would interpret that. But out of curiosity, chat, type one if you think that that is a post clearly trying to paint me as a villain. Type two if you think I'm overanalyzing it. Because I don't know what other image proverbial gun to his head could possibly paint. I'm seeing a lot of ones and I'm seeing a couple twos. I mean, it's to each their own. But like, to me, I feel like anybody reading that shit would get the vibe that this guy bullied my friend and forced him into something that he didn't want to do. And I'm just like, that just sounds weird, man. Just sounds weird as fuck. Tectone's audience, as stated earlier, spread hate on JJ. And T for how Tectone interpreted the pinned comment left by Jin Jinx giving people context on the video. 
when we uploaded the VOD of mm. that discussion to our YouTube channel, we also put out a comment that explained the situation that happened and gave context to the entire discussion. I don't believe for a minute that Jin Jinx or Tuner or either of them had any ill intent. Um, I also believe that they didn't have any ill intent. I think they were just socially inept. They didn't know the actions or the power of the words that they were saying. And I think this ultimately comes down to people being in a poor mental state, saying things they shouldn't have said, as Tuner himself or Jin Jinx himself said that he needed to get like therapy and shit to kind of understand what goes around his own brain. I don't think they had ill intent. But I think they were fucked up in the head, and I think that I got the shit on the stick for that. This is the one. Thank you. This is exactly what I wanted to hear. Yeah, no, 100%. One situation. The one time I can say for certain that tech I think we were both just fucked up, and I think, you know, some shit that shouldn't have been said was said. Tone overstepped, and it seems he still believes it. And his words essentially nullify the apology he gave to Tuner in the first place. I believe the only course of action here is to publicly apologize to both the Jinjinx and Tuner, much like the Yunjin video and not speak on it again. These were two informative players only seeking to provide a before you buy to their audience. Nah, I'm good. <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. Uh, hey, but I thought about it. I did think about it for a little bit. They never intended on insulting anyone, let alone tech time. <laughs> Four. Because they did cause me a lot of shit. You know, I feel like we both caused each other a lot of shit. Yeah, it is what it is. And here's the thing. You know, they're already out the door. And in the rules of professional wrestling, you always got to win your last match. Or so you always lose your last match because you got to put over the younger talent. So you got to think, it's like, it's like they kind of put me over as the younger talent, the young lion trying to escape. And right, you know, I had to get, I had to get put over. That way I can compete for the WWE championship. You know how it goes, man. You know how it goes. It's it's the wrestler in me, man. Don't worry. They're they're both killing it. I also have some good news to share about Goose. I will admit, though, I will admit, I will say this. I do think it was a misunderstanding and not ill intent. One million percent. And the other thing is, I don't even talk about that shit anymore, right? Unless it's brought up by somebody else, you know. But yeah, I do. I do acknowledge it was a misunderstanding. One hundred percent. One million percent. Tectones racism and pedophile accusations. If you didn't notice anywhere else in this video about these accusations coming up again, it might be easy to infer that Tectone is in fact neither racist nor pedophilic. They were baseless accusations on him from people who just hated Tectone yep. and wanted a reason to see him fall. Absolutely. Of course, Tectone is no ordinary egg you can just crack. True. Five, soul of an artist. The drama between Tech. Now I will admit, I will admit, there has been two times in my life where I had suicidal thoughts due to content creation. I did. But that was over two years ago. And then I thought, this is my only thought. This is my only thought. I thought, yeah, but who's going to feed Eggy? So, <laughs> I was like, eh, who's going to feed Eggy, bro? I couldn't do that. That's my boy right there, man. That's my boy. Tone, flip, soul, and solo. And you're good now? Yeah, I'm great. Everybody who was kind of a negative impact on my life, I either don't do content with anymore or are completely out of my life in general. So uh, my life is incredible. And I'm getting my new house. It's looking good. My content, I love. Even though people say, oh, lazy reaction content. Why do you want me to work hard? Why do I got to work hard for content? Like, why can't I just have fun? You know what I'm saying? Like, this shit's supposed to be a hobby. What, why do I got, what do we want me to do? You want me to do push-ups while I react to make it harder? Who cares? The fuck? Plus, my roommates are amazing. LaRoe's a great dude. When he gets a job, that'll be even better. Pink is, like, the nicest person on human, in human history. Like, she's like a goddamn angel descending from the sky. And then I also got my motherfucking boy, Zizix. We don't live together. And then also, I'm having a new roommate move in with me which is Anna, who's also like, I shit you not, she's like the human embodiment of a gummy bear. Like when y'all meet Anna, maybe you've met her before. She's like, she is so fucking nice. She is so fucking sweet. Like, oh my God, bro. Like legit, legit angel on earth. Angel on earth. Fucking amazing, amazing human being. Yeah, Anna's such an amazing person. Oh, I know I love her so much. 
it's a bit of a doozy, but let me just say the biggest winner is Flip. The fucker got publicity, took the L gracefully, and is cordial with Tectone and even collabed with Soul. Okay, let me tell you why that's Cap. I won that shit in spades. And you want to know why? Because Asmongold reacted to that shit. Okay? His community had my back, which before they never did. And then they realized how stupid this fucking community is. And ever since then, my analytics have been up by 40%. So I'm going to just keep it a buck. I dominated that shit. Flip got a good rub. Flip got a good rub. Soul got bodied. Soul got, Soul got bodied, jobbed out, fired by the company. You know, but me, I mean, I'm like the number one contender for the belt at this point. Too faced or too smart, you decide. I just applaud the guy. Too smart. Tectone was oppressive in his talk with Flip, that's no lie, but whatever. It's over opinions and suggestions in the game's infancy. Soul, yeah. I was understanding to his desire to defend Flip. There's nobody saying you couldn't. However, you probably should have brought points that actually mattered and tried to simmer the conversation down more. True! Since it was ultimately not so serious to begin with anyway. Yo, yo, did you, did you see that debate, Riker? Did you see the whole debate? Because bro made rules that I had to abide by that he wasn't. And then I called him out on it. And he said, rules are made to be broken. <laughs> oh, it was the cringiest shit you'd ever see on the fucking platform, man. It was so bad. When he popped his ult, oh my god. Flip actually did not want to be defended. But I know he appreciated you doing it. And you're within your right to make whatever you wish on anyone you want. But you should know that people will disagree with your opinions on others. True. Atsu, number six and seven. Atsu stepped between Envy and Tectone. This outcome left Tectone believing he was always the problem. And even being pushed into therapy for it. But then we come to find out that he... I will admit, I don't regret talking to Dr. K at all. Because now and him, me and him are very good friends. Uh, we're very like we have very good rapport and we had some we had some very good content ideas uh, that we wanted to do. But then those were shut down and that made me very sad. But really hoping to do more content with Dr. K in the future. because He's a great fucking guy. He apparently didn't even need the therapy and that someone, quote, manipulated him into it. Yeah. Unquote. The man even tricked me into thinking that I needed therapy that I had to do live on stream. Very uncomfortable. It was. That was, that was rough. Now, that being said. That being said, Dr. K and I are now quite close. Yep. And you know what Dr. K thinks? He thinks I never needed that therapy to begin with. Yep. And that I was tricked by a very conniving individual. Not a good image to have. Yeah, we were in the uh, the restaurant Soto Sushi. And I remember he said, like, you did it. You won. Like, you proved all these people fucking wrong. And he felt so bad for me after having to share the fucking secrets that I shared to him on that fucking live stream because he doesn't think that I need to talk to him about that shit at all. But I don't regret it because in the process of that, I made a friend. You won therapy? No, I was like, like <laughs> I won the battle against all the people who were trying to like go after me. Have being a manipulator. But after everything you accused of Tectone and his friends, now the consequences of your overstepping shows after admitting you didn't really know anything about the two. Let me just... Correct myself there. Yep. Sorry, I'm not sure that. Makes oh, rewatching this is gonna piss me off, man. Oh man. I remember there was this Twitter comment where people told me they had like a full body reaction whenever they see an image of a person. Bro, I always thought they were trolling, dude. Seeing this guy actually makes me want to puke. It actually makes me fucking nauseous, bro. And then the combo with his voice, holy fuck better but you and goose egg publicly went after me <laughs> that's so cap it's so cap bro subtweets us so many fucking times a guy calls him out for it you went after me it's so fucking cap I, i'm i'm sorry apologies Sorry if I said you manipulated Goose Egg. I should have just said you and Goose Egg just went after me. Does that make things better? No. What in the f*** are you talking about? You said that I manipulated Goose Egg into making a video about you. You're confusing the timeline. What the f*** are you on about? Does, Actually insane. Does that insane. make things better? We went after him. No, bro. 
You said I manipulated him into making a video that he posted. Then you responded. You made it about me and him when it was really about you and him because you wanted to beef with me. Because remember, boys, in the world of content creation, punching up will always get you more views. Why do you think smaller content creators make videos about bigger creators rather than smaller creators? Because that gets them more views. It's very easy to understand. Now, Gusek specifically made a video on me, all right? Yeah, no shit. I, he made a video on me. Atu, Atu, do you really not understand the repercussions of coming between him and I when we're in the same house and causing conflict between people in the same house? That's like me going after your wife, and I've never brought her up a single time. True. And I never will. True. What you did. I think Necro Pizza Sweetheart. Because how do you think that affected him and I? When you say, oh, you're controlling him, and then he knew that he caused me bad PR forever. How do you think that that made him feel when he went against my wishes, when it was just about him and you, and you made it about me controlling him? Do you know how disgusting that is? True. And truth be told, I thought you encouraged him to do so. I and imagine that, you fucking retard! I was pissed. I was pissed because that comment fucked my life for years. W Three years, you fucking admit it. And that's the fucking problem. True. Man, I was angry. And I rarely ever truly yell on stream. I rarely ever truly get pissed off. Man. I was so mad. I was so mad. And it was like the floodgates of emotions pouring out of me because I was accused for something that I didn't do. And then Homeboy admits that he just made it up and tried to gloss over it. Insane. Insane. Three years. Three years! After everything, after all this bullshit things come to a great close. Yeah. A good ending. And that ending finally reached Tectone after years of vilification. Some things are coming together to finally heal. I just got a DM from Goose. I haven't heard from him. This music is insane. This is so dramatic. This is awesome. Dude. Hey, been seeing everything going on, and I've been respecting you and your career for a while. I just want to say I'm glad Damn, you came man. out and said that on stream, and I have zero issues with ha with you now, and honestly, I'd also love to talk things out, as I do think I could have handled things better, and honestly, my mental health was absolutely destroyed due to Atsu bombarding me. I know we won't have what we ever did, but I still do value you as a piece of my life. When everything blows over right now, let's have a talk. Damn. I said that. Jesus. I forgot how, how fucking crazy shit has been for so long. Damn, bro. That's wild. But there's one last key to this drama that I have to point out. One very big factor that I left to the very end. You see, everyone knows Tectone. Everyone knows Atsu, Brax, or any other content creator. I will say this. 
Uh, regardless of everything that transpired, uh, Goose and I will, we will never be the same that we once were. Uh, the, the, the damage is caused by Atsu. It'll, it'll, it'll never heal. It'll never be the same. But the thing that I can say that I'm very happy about is that uh, I'm doing very well in life now. And Goose is doing incredible in life now. And he made some YouTube videos and they all popped off. He knows he can still make it as a content creator. But he's choosing to focus on his real job that he has now that's paying him very well. And uh, his life is great. So regardless of all of that, the only thing that matters to me is that he's happy. And uh, yeah, things will never be the same. But uh, I, I will always... I will always be happy for the chapter that we had. I'm not going to be upset about it because we're both doing great. It is what it is. But the real culprit of everything, the real reason for everything going the way it did, Community. is you. You yep. fucker. Why the fuck do you feel the need to go out of your way to attack other people just because your favorite content creator disagrees with them? Holy fucking shit. You guys are like messed up chimps in a fucking zoo. Hey, chat. If somebody fucks with me, get them. Get them. Hey, I'll say it, man. Don't be the bigger man, because you know they won't. Get them. Because I will eat them in real life. I will eat their corpse. <laughs> you can't fucking believe how many goddamn comments I've had to read that said, go kill yourself, X person, or you should be fucking hanged or lynched. Insane. Like, oh my fucking God. Stop fucking attacking other people just because your content creator disagrees. Dude, the amount of death threats that I've gotten in my life has to be like at least nearing, at least nearing records for people of my size. Because goddamn, bro, the visceral reaction I get from people by merely just existing is fucking nuts. With them, my god, you're all so fucking retarded. True. Let's hear it, man. What are your thoughts? So, there's uh, one more drama I gotta bring up. It's yep. about uh, Tectone being on stream uh -huh. and jerking off or some shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. There, give me a second. I gotta piss. What the fuck? We're talking about this shit? Yo, boys, if you're uh, if you're new here, go ahead and slam that follow button, man. Go ahead and slam that follow button. Yeah, um, we're we're like very close to hitting one mil followers on Twitch. So if you got a second, a follow would be crazy. Like would be fucking nuts. Uh, anyways, um, this is a thing like he does. It's an extreme example, and he. Fucking loves extreme examples. Yes, I do. The uh... You got this. Going on where a bunch of like girls were popping onto Twitch streams and just basically advertising their uh, other sites that they yep. sell their product, which was just their bodies and stuff. And it just kind of. Now, I could have just said, man, I don't like how they, these chicks are doing this. Or I could show people why it's a problem, right? And sure, it was an extreme thing to do, but I'm a fucking extreme wicked guy. And, uh, yeah, if you just kind of piece those things together, it's it's just a nothing burger, honestly. Like, True. It's not that big of a deal. And uh, I don't think that it's fair to call him, like, a pervert or a pedophile in that regard, just because, like, I mean, 
What are you going to do in that regard? He's just putting an extreme example up. Mm. Yeah, he could have talked about it, but whatever. Dude, um, dude, this video that is... clip popped my channel the fuck off. Like, dude, dude, dude. That shit got me so much respect, it was insane. Because I did the shit that nobody else would have done. And then I didn't even get banned. Twitch themselves confirmed they saw it, and they still said we weren't going to ban him because they thought it was funny. ...was supposed to uh, come out and a bunch of other projects right after it, but something else came up, and I had to uh, push it forward. So uh, the next video I'm going to be making is another long video, and it's going to be on Elden Ring. Now, in regards Fuck you, I'll to watch that shit. long-form videos and this kind of video, uh, one, I'll do videos however the hell I want to, because True. that's just what I do. Two, the uh, content in this video is not a thing I'm going to be doing probably ever again, because it was quite literally just a thing that was in my head and I had to get it out. Yep. So it only made sense to just, like, put it in a video and put it in a format where people could follow it and reference back to Tectone's past history, since I had a lot of people that I tried asking, and... All I got back was just look at your, look it up yourself, look it up yourself, look it up yourself. So True. I, got, I got frustrated and figured, fuck it, let's just make one condensed location where it can be given out and you can see it. Hey, good shit, um, King. If you want other people's opinions on tech tones and like behavior and shit, you've got people like Stiorg, uh, like Hex Juice, and all these other content creators that I'm showing on this little wherever the hell I put it. But um, yeah. Uh, I guess until next time, you'll either see me or you won't. Dude, bro single-handedly did the trial of Tectone himself. And uh, I think, I feel like he hit the nail on the head the majority of the video. Nobody can make 100% accuracy, but uh, I felt that video was fucking awesome, man. That video was fucking awesome. Yo, Riker, can't wait for your Elden Ring video. Boys, make sure to go like, comment, and subscribe to his channel. Uh, the guy's at 451 subs right now. If you want to go give him a sub, uh, it would be cool to get him up to 1,000 subs. That would be cool as fuck. So if you have a second, if you want to go give him a like, feel free to go there and do so. That was fucking dope, dope as fuck. And uh, yeah, you're Riker, thank you, man. It is very difficult because so many people say, well, you remember how this happened. You remember how that happened. And then they never saw anything. They never had any context. And they're just making shit up for fun. But uh, yeah, I mean, I've had a very difficult journey as a content creator. And I understand that anybody else in my shoes would have probably quit. But um, I love doing this. And so I'm not really going anywhere. Yo, Riker, appreciate the video. Boys, thank you for liking, commenting, subscribing to me and Homeboy, who I reacted to in the pinned comment and the, uh, pinned, uh, in the description. And I'll see you on the next one. Type one if you think I'm a piece of shit. Type two if I'm your piece of shit. Oh, look at that, dude. Oh, man. Oh, man. I'll right, see you on the next one. Peace. Ooh, five hours in the VOD, guys. Ooh. Well, boys. Ooh, we've been uh we've been at this for a bit, huh? Wait, what's the button? What's the button you can press to get a um to get a deleted tab back up? What's the what's the key code? I closed the tab accidentally. What is the what is the key code to get it back up? Isn't it like control oh yeah, control T? Control T. No, that's tab. Uh control shift T. Control shift T. Do you like hot men? Yes. That is not the tab. That was not the tab. I don't know what the fuck that was. I don't know what the fuck that was. That was, <laughs> bro, bro. Uh, that was not the tab. 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 What is this? Anyways, moving forward. I was, uh, I was wondering if, um, maybe I could, uh, Maybe I could have a widow. <laughs> Maybe I could have a widow kiss. Oh man, I look so bad back here.
Uh, anyways, I'm going to go ahead and move off of that before I fucking vomit. Yo, by the way, mods, can we pin this to the top of chat? Uh, we do have a Clips channel that we made recently. I have yet to tell YouTube about it. But uh, yeah, great fucking channel. If y'all want to go peep that shit, would love for you to do that shit. Would love for you to peep this shit. We'll be at five hour mark. Boys, it's been fun. Nah, we got more shit to do, man. We got more shit to do. We got to form more subs. Asmin editor. Yeah. I wonder, I wonder what he thinks. Asmin gold. Uh, Pom -pom's not Seven, okay, so 10% dislike ratio. Cursed. I was on for an hour. No idea what the gameplay is other than talking. No sound. Baldy actually went to play a game when he said he'll check it out again. Titles would have been, I tried Honkai Star Roll again. It changed my life. True. I wonder why there's so many dislikes. The video seems pretty good. What's this? Close the tab accidentally. What, yeah. is, the, what is the key code to get it back up? Is it like control? Oh, yeah. Control T. Control T. No, that's tab. Uh, control Shift T. Control Shift T. Do you like hot men? Yes. That is not the tab. <laughs> that looks so insane. That looks fucking psychotic, bro. If this was clipped for just that 18 seconds. Dude. Dude, if that was clipped for just that 18 seconds, that would be a perfect clip. Genuinely a per Dude, that would be like... What is this? A uh, control shift T. Control shift T. Do you like hot men? Yes. It needs the full context. It needs the full context. No, that's tab. Uh, control shift T. Control shift T. So many about the full context. Uh, control shift T. Control shift T needs more. Do needs you more like lore. close the tab accidentally? What is the What is the key code to get it back up? Is it like control? Oh yeah, control T. Control T. No, that's tab. Uh, control shift T. Control shift T. Do you like hot men? Yes. That is not the tab. <laughs> that is so good. That's a perfect clip, man. That's a perfect fucking clip. Not a good name, though. We'll call this one. Tectone gets exposed live. Wait, buddy, yet? He forgot. But yet, Tectone forgot this would pop up on stream. That's a good clip title. That's a good clip title. You could post that clip on LSF. People would laugh at it for 30 minutes. And then they would tell me how I need to swiftly go kill myself and tell you all why I'm a horrible person. And then they would say literally unwatchable. Anyways. Anyways. Uh, can you riz us up with the camera close to your face for a little bit? Nah, I'm good, bro. You trying to come or what? What's this? Hope Asman likes HSR. He still played his shit Hoyo game. What a loser. Game is trash. How can one game look so terrible? So this is what losers and incels play these days. <laughs> yes. Yes, we do. And we enjoy it every fucking second, bro. Uh, who's this? Am I Lorel, or as I like to call him, Lorel. Yeah, should we react to TikTok till it gets racist? Everybody, <laughs> yeah, rock your body. Uh, yo, boys, uh, place your bets in chat. How many TikToks can I go through until it gets racist? We're going to find out today. 
Do you need anything from me or are, or are we all good? Just checking in. Okay. Everybody, yeah, rock your body. Yeah. I'd say, what's this? Three Fortnite red versus blue prime bottles sold on eBay for listing over $163,000. Okay, that's great. All right, cool. Let's react. Six bitches on the check, took it to the bank. Commas up the commas, make it boil. Got a tan coming over, only need to thank. Get the chance to oil up anyone in the world. Who would it be? Like a human or an anime character? Uh, who would I want to oil up? Uh, shit, bro. I think Will Neff. Yeah, Will Neff would be good. I want to see that man shake his ass. This is my craziest prank of all time. Okay. The hello prank. Where I go up to people and I say hello to them. Hello. 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 That's actually insane content. I'm not going up those stairs, dude. Fine. Let's play rock, paper, scissors for it. Hmm. Hmm. Ah, oh, whatever. Pops. Yo, Pops. I found your mustache monthly. seen this shit is this shit good stop playing for a second when i went upstairs pops was getting out of the shower yeah so and he didn't have a towel Ew. i tried not to look and just give him the magazine but i saw his, his junk mail <laughs> Okay, I can't. Okay, class, remember you had two options for the midterm. Option one is a 15-second dance. Who chooses option one? Okay, come on up. word paper on the implications of AI for biomedical engineering. Who chooses option two? <laughs> oh my god. Bro, I danced for a fucking hour. On our scale from one to ten, what would you rate your video game knowledge? Let's Eight. Let's go owns a gaming chair. I have a gaming chair. Okay. I was gonna say seven as well. I, oh. I also own a gaming chair. Perfect. So what I'm gonna go. do, I'm gonna show you a screenshot from a video game. Eight. You just have to try to name the game. Okay, cool. Here's the first game. Oh, that's uh, well, it, it also says in the corner there, this is a uh, Tekken, yeah. Tekken 7. <laughs> I meant to take this one out. Just off the top of my head. No, that's, oh, good that's job. Fun. You got it. <laughs> I, no way. Okay, my bad. I meant to take no, that one out. No, no, that's you're helping us out here. Okay, here's the second one. Oh, uh, this is Pico Park. Yeah, Pico Park. P Pico Park? I yeah, think yeah. That's, the that's name. exactly the name. Is that yeah. the name I brought it up? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> cool. That's why you phone a friend. Here is the third one. Oh, 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 I know, uh, moon, Moonlighters? Yeah, moonlighters? yeah, yeah, you got it. You're, you're really good at this. <laughs> oh, yeah. Moonlighters. Yeah. I'll give you two bonus. I'll give you, like, an easier one, and then I'm gonna give you, like, a really hard okay. one. Okay. So here's the easier one. Spyro. 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 And, um, and then here's your hard one for the bonus. Oh. oh Mad World. Like Mad World. It does the art style. I have no clue. The art style guess. looks Persona, but it's not Persona. I, I don't know. I don't know this It's one. called Mad Worlds. Mad World. Yeah. Okay. Come on. 
Un video más para anunciarle que paren estos memes, por favor. Paren estos memes. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, you tired, Papa? I barely got any sleep last night. Oh. And he was still here on time. You guys hear that? Oh, you guys heard that? I barely got any sleep last what? night. No, no, no. Are you kidding me, dude? I really only got like two, two, three hours. No way. What the heck was keeping you up? We're gonna My ass every time I go live, bro. Oh, shit. That looks good. What the fuck? Is that legal to drink? Someone had a gun. Oh shit. Banger, 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 banger. Okay. What the fuck? Bro. What the fuck? I'm trying to get an ice cream cone. Hi, what can I get for you? Hey, what's up? Can I get an um, ice cream cone? Vanilla? What? Can I get an ice cream cone? Vanilla ice cream cone? Ice cream? Yeah. What flavor? Uh, vanilla. Okay. And what's a good name to call out? Um, Daddy. What? Uh, Daddy. Oh, okay. Yeah, just Daddy. Okay, we'll call uh, you when it's ready. Thank you. They're making the ice cream cone right now, guys, but wait until they call the name. Let's see if they call the name out. For Daddy? I can't watch that. That hurts my balls, bro. You watched Skibidi, and then you had nowhere to edge. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's oh actually God. so, so crazy. No, honestly, though, like, I literally fell, and I hit my chin off the ground, and it split open. There was blood everywhere. What day is it? Well, boys, you better have to get back at it. Type one, if tomorrow you got to go do something that your ass don't want to do. <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> no! Oh, man, that's rough, bro. Damn, bro. Damn. What happens to a child who isn't loved properly? They play Genshin Impact. All right, kids, this better be good. I was in the forest wrestling with a bear claw when we got the call. Oh! All right. <laughs> kids, this better be good. I was in the forest wrestling with a bear claw when we got the call. Oh! What is the context of that, bro? What is the context of that? All right, kids, this better be good. I was in the forest wrestling with a bear claw when we got the call. Oh! What is <laughs> happening, dude? What is happening? Do you guys like jelly or jam more? Wait, oh. Wait they're not the same thing? Bro, you are so acoustic, man. <laughs> wait, what? What? Wait, that doesn't make any sense. He's acoustic. Wait, 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 but he doesn't sing. He doesn't sing. Yeah, I've never heard Wait. you sing. Wait, you guys haven't heard that? No, 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 I've never sang before. Yeah, what? Oh. No, 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 I'm not saying he's like a singer. But but that doesn't make any sense. No, I know, I know, but he's acoustic. What does that say? I can't. Hey, boys, boys, it's been fun. I'll see y'all tomorrow. We got five hours stream out in the way. Y'all did good. Y'all did great today. Hey, y'all put in the work. Hey, out of curiosity, were, was I on the main monitor or second monitor today? Let me know. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and get the fuck out of here. I hope you all enjoyed the stream. I will be back live again tomorrow. Keep in mind, I have steak and eggs tomorrow, so it might be a shorter stream. It might be a shorter stream. I do have steak and eggs tomorrow. I believe tomorrow we're having on uh, Nick, NMP LOL. Uh, should be good. Yeah, should be good. Should be fun. But, uh, yeah. I hope you all enjoyed the stream. I hope you all had a great-ass time. And I will see you all early tomorrow morning. Love you.
Appreciate you. And uh, let's drop you off. Where do I drop your ass off? Uh, here's what we're going to do. Boys, Loro and Zizix are both live right now. If you want just chatting react content, go watch Zizix Prime. Go check out his stream. If you want gotcha content, go watch Loro. Okay? These two are my fucking boys. All right? These two are my fucking boys. Go watch these two. I want you guys to go over there naturally. I don't want to force you over there with a the raid because they're both trying to get partner and you'll help them get partner if you go over there by your own accord. Okay? So I would love for you guys to go peep that shit. Camilla's awake and I miss her ass, so I'm going to raid her. And uh, yeah, I'm going to eat and then I'm going to go chill in the Discord. Okay? Love you. Appreciate you. Hope you had a fun stream today. Hope you had fun. Appreciate the fuck out of all y'all. I will see you all bright and early in the morning. Uh, and yeah, go say hi to Kamimi for me. And I'll see y'all again real soon. Okay, take it easy, boys. Good fucking stream today. Hope y'all had fun. Five hours, I did my job. I'm gonna go get food. I'm gonna go chill on the Discord. If you guys wanna play League, TFT, Fall Guys, uh, Crab Game, Jackbox, go chill on the Discord. I'm gonna hop in there in a little bit. Uh, or if you just wanna chill and play some uh, Cookie Run. Good stream, good stream, good stream, good stream. Y'all were great. See y'all tomorrow. Good vibes, good looks. And uh, yeah, see y'all in like 24 hours.